lower than I normally would be. I readjusted the camera as I was sitting up straight. There we go. Oh. Um, that. That's what's missing. Uh, what do I what do I have input on? Oh, you asked something. Um Let me look at um I am sore, I'm tired, I'm tired and sore. Uh, my shoulders hurt. <laughs> My forearms, interesting enough, the, the tendonitis that kicked off for my forearms has cleared up pretty quickly, actually. I, I got that one. I nipped that in the bud. Um, but, <clears throat> oh, my shoulders. My shoulders are killing me. Um, machine like a Cybertronian with living parts like hearts and veins that move mechanical fluids and machine. Wait, what's better representation? Oh. Uh, or flesh connects and moves like machinery with circuitry. I always prefer the um, biological augmented by the cybernetic, not the cybernetic augmented by the biological. There's my input. Um, so, there's my input on the matter. All right, um, I don't know what we're going to do tonight. <laughs> Legit. Um, I was at my Dom's house, nothing to report. I mean, I, I could show you the marks on my ass. 
Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Twitch doesn't want me to do that. Um, I've got, um, uh, I've got some marks on my ass. Let's just put it that way. Um, hang on. Just trying to get my camera. What's up, Shadow? Yeah, we'll go with that. Anyway, uh, how was your stream? How was your stream? I'm literally just getting started and absolutely just sitting here bullshitting. Hey, Russell. Um, <clears throat> so, what'd y'all get up to? Oh, Jesus Christ. Fuck, I am sore. Um, oh, and I cut myself right before stream. My fucking ankle. Sliced my ankle open on a piece of plastic. Oh. Um. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the chair. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's sitting at the computer. Hey, Astro. Uh, thanks for the resub. So. I don't know. There's a few headlines I kind of wanted to mention and I kind of wanted to talk about, but. Um, you know what? Hang on. Let me drop you to zero. Yeah, whatever. Um, dude, the fucking, dude, I just, I'm, I'm worried about the shoulders more than anything else just from work uh from working out like i need to keep an eye on like rotator cuff stuff i need to make sure i stay ahead of any of that sort of stuff um because i can't be having like injuries take me out of the game right like that's that's something i can't afford is i can't afford to have like fucking two months worth of downtime um if i'm gonna make the marks that i want to make this coming year so I just have to stay ahead of everything, basically. Um, yeah. It's just a fucking thing. Either way, um, one of my favorite headlines from today. Um, 10,000 U.S. military members have sought religious waivers from the COVID vaccine. The DOD has approved none of them. <laughs> DOD's like, yeah, we own your ass. Like, didn't you notice when you signed the paper? We own you. Right, like you're you're our bitch. <laughs> right? like you don't. Ten thousand religious waiver exemptions have been filed. Not a single one approved. I would, dude. Imagine being that guy. Just fucking dunk, 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 dunk. I, I like. I'm sure it's electronic, but I just want it in my mind's eye, like old school fucking mechanical stamp with the spinning thing. Clunk. clunk clunk like just that's that dude's job now is just dunk 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 just 10,000 of that shit <laughs> oh hey's uh, let's see for me today's there you go now yeah crimson they don't they don't do that <laughs> Uh, I know, right? It'd be hilarious to be that guy. Um, I mean, it's, it's like, we're... Oh, yeah. Um, like, weren't, weren't they paying attention in boot camp? Right? Like, they literally shoot them up with, like, you don't even know. You don't even know when you go into boot camp. They just start shooting you up full of shit. And apparently, I talked to a guy um, in the service who's active today. He said they're still, in the, still doing the peanut butter vaccine, too. For those of you who aren't aware of the peanut, peanut butter vaccine, right? This thing is thick. It's thick, right? Like, if you get a really, really kind medic... um. They'll hand you the uh, the syringe ahead of time and tell you to warm it up as best you can, so it doesn't go in quite as thick. Um, but the peanut butter uh, vaccine is notorious. You can have a lump of this shit for two, three days after you get that vaccine. It's fucking thick as shit, man. And apparently they're still doing that one too. Like like eight uh, eight different vaccines, like 
boot camp plus the peanut butter plus like, oh yeah, it's like that. They just start shooting them the fuck up with stuff the minute they walk in. And it's, you know, it's like, oh, I, I, huh, you're gonna, you're gonna force the COVID vaccine on me. Do you know how much shit they shot you full of on like day one? Do you have any idea what they put in your body on day one? Did you ask? Right? At least this time you get to know what's going in you. <laughs> uh, fucking, I, I'm not entirely sure which one it is, Caboose. Um... So, yeah, I, I, you know, it's like, hey, um, sorry guys, maybe if you wanted like bodily autonomy, don't sign up for the military. <laughs> that's, that's sort of a, that's sort of a thing. If, if nobody had been paying attention, right? Like if, if you're all about the like uh, individual and bodily autonomy and you don't want to be told what to do and what to do with your body. The United States military, or really most militaries, um, probably not the place to be for you. I don't, I, just, just my opinion. Hey, Viva. Hey, Viva, I heard Germany went full-blown uh, 1984 fucking Heil Hitler up in that bitch. Um, even though the majority of German citizens, from what I see, approve. Yeah, yeah, the Americans are freaking out over that, actually, probably more than the Germans. <laughs> Germany went full lockdown for anybody who's not vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, feel free to explore society. If you're not vaccinated, well, congratulations, you're restricted to pharmacies and grocery stores. Yeah. Uh. <coughs> Mom keeps bringing up that big pharma is making bank on the vaccine like they don't make bank on literally every medical product. I know, right? Fucking m reminder about HIV medical treatments. Uh, Jack, I'm German and I support this step. Just FYI. See, from what I can from what I can tell, the German people are behind it. Um, I'm good for you guys. Um, I have mixed opinions, but fuck around and find out, right? Um, Wilhelm's behind it as well. Cool. <clears throat> Jet Viva says just jab those fuckers. Um, but military, good. We like the military. Military means freedom. Yep. I, I, you know, I, who am I to criticize the military? Fuck these hypocritical suckers. Um, <clears throat> yep, hundred percent. The bigger your military budget, the greater your freedom. That is that is a direct corollary. Mm -hmm. Um, caboose. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm pretty sure Germany has a standing army. Um, Holy shit, what is all this shit this latest fucking update installed? Yeah. Uh Bundeswehr? The the Bundeswehr? I think. Right? Is this is my pronunciation like at least in the ballpark? I'm never gonna nail it, but <clears throat> Air, uh, Army, Air Force, and Navy. Navy. No. So, there we go. Um, yeah, so whoever said that, just know you're wrong. You're just wrong. So, good luck with that one. Um... <clears throat> I wonder how many more people would take the vaccine if we rebranded it as bubonic plague vaccine. Uh, at this point, Crimson, probably less. I have no confidence. I have no confidence in these fuckers. It's it's gotten to a point. I, I, I dude, it's it's now a felony if you get an abortion after seven weeks in Texas, right? Like this this country, our country, mm, I. 
don't don't look for it. Sorry to doomer pill, but I don't have any hope. <laughs> That's not a thing I'm I'm holding out for anymore. Um I just joined the stream and I heard I have no confidence. I was like, yep, same. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Sham Glint. Uh, that, that was just in, in general. It was more targeted towards American, the American public, but people in general. You could probably apply that statement to. Um, but no, we were, we were just sort of talking about COVID and vaccination and people's various. Let's go with opinions, I suppose. Yeah, basically tech support. Basically. Yeah. Just full on realist. Um, y'all get it from Groundhogs, right? Zippy? Is that is that the typical sort uh, vector for uh for plague in New Mexico? It's typically groundhogs, right? Um I seem to recall that. They did, Viva. I've I've um, Wilhelm, they're, is it Armadillo, uh, Armadillos? Oh. Mice. It's mice. All right. So still fucking, still in the rodent territory. Got it. Uh, sham. Fair enough. <laughs> um... Well, I mean, Monocool, that's exactly how um, Qualified Immunity came to be. Prairie Dogs. Prairie Dogs. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for is Prairie Dogs. Um, not Groundhogs, but Prairie Dogs. Um, it's exactly how uh, Qualified Immunity came to be. It, you, I mean, this is this. I don't know how many people realize this, but qualified immunity in the U.S. is literally a creation of the Supreme Court. It's not. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's it's just ad hoc legislation created by a Supreme Court decision. Yeah. So it wouldn't be the first time that the Supreme Court vastly overstepped their mandate. So. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't have, I'm in pain, <laughs> I'm tired, right? Like, this isn't, this isn't a hopeful idealist cut version of me. Hi, my name's Kai, by the way, if you don't know, this isn't a hopeful idealist cut, a version of Kai tonight. Um, I did see a, a woman who stated, um, she said, I'm revoking my Oregon donor card, like my or Oregon donor status, like straight up. She's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not now. If, if the state and the people around me want to take away my bodily autonomy and order me to be a brood mayor for the state, then you don't get the benefit of like anything. I'm not helping you after death. You all can fuck off. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. I think I think every every fucking woman definitely should be revoking their uh, organ donor status, and I think any of the men who give a shit probably should too. Yeah, uh, Wilhelm. Yeah, I get idealist sometimes. I I go full blown. Yeah, I I I think it's fair. I I I hundred percent think it's fair. Um, Amorous Or you just go full blown We don't give a shit Texas style Oh I wanted to ask something I got a few uh, I got a few Germans In chat right now What the fuck is Saarland Or Saarland S-A-A-R-L-A-N-D um, it, it came up, it, okay, so it came up in a conversation on Reddit when somebody said, um, name your country's Alabama. 
and a whole bunch of fucking people from Germany all said Saarland. Right? Like, I fucking... Dude, this this place got name-checked a bunch. Yeah, right, Kaboos? Like, that shit... Saarland got fucking name-checked hard. Whatever they're doing, they're kind of notorious for it at this point. So, yeah, I kind of want to ask, what's the fucking deal with Saarland? Why are they, why are they Germany's Alabama? Since I got a bunch of Germans here. Um, thanks for the follow, Artemis. We usually tend to treat people in hospital instead of throwing them out, depending on their income. Mm. Fair enough. Biden just today offered free COVID tests retroactively. The guy's getting desperate to be reelected. Oh, come on. Fucking. I, do, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit, right? Like here's, here, here's, here's, here's the level at which I can, I can deal with shit. Like at this point, look, I don't give a shit who you fucking support, who you don't support. Look, uh, if you can't agree on basic funk, like objective reality, which most Americans can't do anymore, then I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. Bill Gates is not out to, to chip you with a 5D a G chip so Alex Jones' chemtrails can turn you gay or whatever the fuck these idiots think about this. I, 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 don't, I don't have time for this anymore. We need to just start calling out stupid when we see stupid. Did you know there's still fucking dumbass QAnon motherfuckers in fucking Dallas, Texas waiting for JFK Jr.'s return? They're still down there. They've been down there for like a month and a half. I'm not shitting you. They're still fucking down there. They're fucking doing weird ass cult shit. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just over it at this point. Carpe... Uh, <laughs> flag goes here. <laughs> hey, Carpe. Thanks for the resub, by the way. Um, I'm just on a fucking tear. Like, I'm, I'm, my patience is shot. It's fucking shot. Uh, yeah, they're, I mean, I'm, like, this is, this is why we need the Arsler back, folks. Is because we need to be able to yell at it people like that. I'm sorry. That's the truth. Open social mockery is the only weapon we have. It's the only weapon we have. We need to just ruthlessly make fun of these people. Right? Like, this is, that's insane. That's insane. They're fucking standing around for like a month and a half now in, in fucking Dallas, now in the winter, by the way, fucking waiting for JFK Jr.'s return. Because remember, he's not dead. He's actually gone undercover to dismantle the global pedophile deep state cabal at the behest of Donald Trump, who JFK Jr. is a lifelong fucking, you know, a Kennedy Democrat. Right, He would despise Donald Trump, but he's working for Donald Trump. But wait, there's more. There's all sorts of people that they're waiting for the return of. They're waiting for the return of Michael Jackson. I'm not fucking around here. They're down there waiting for the return of Michael Jackson because Michael Jackson's not dead either. See, what was happening is he was a target of the deep state pedophile cabal, and so they came after him, and so he faked his own death, and he's been working behind the scenes with Q this entire time to dismantle the cabal as well on behalf of Donald Trump. What the fuck, people? This is... This is Elvis lives in my basement. He was fed up with the fat chicks in the U.S. Got addicted to sauerkraut. I respect it. I mean, there are even more people waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, at least we don't have an autopsy of fucking Jesus Christ. Right? Like, that's... At least he's just a mythical savior on a stick. And yeah, I went there. Oh, go crimson, yeah. Oh, Keisha has actually said when F Trump advocated vaccines earlier this year, it was a deep fake, and of course that JFK would rise and assist Trump, apparently. You know, they're mostly evangelicals. It's like they traded one bullshit story for another. Hmm, who would have guessed? One addiction for another. That's not a common practice, is it? 
Uh, all we have is a Xerox burn of Jesus on a sheet. <laughs> uh, savior on a stick. I'm stealing that. Hey, it's yours. Take it. Uh, fucking. Yeah. No, I, I... I'm done. I'm fucking done, y'all. Right? Like, this is, this is my position at this point. Balkanize. Just balkanize. It's gonna destroy this country. It's gonna actually fucking... Just balkanize. I'm sorry. I, there's... There are conservatives in Virginia looking to burn books because they talk about LGBT issues. Right? The language that was used was, I want to see these burn... These books burned with my, my own eyes so that I can attest to my community that we are... Uh, we are eliminating these undesirable elements from our society. I'm sorry. Homie says, what? Are you talking about burning gay people? Because it, it looks like you're like one step from burning gay people. That's that's pretty much what you're, you're advocating for at this point. You're right. You're just, you just, we need to eliminate the undesirables. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got fucking conservatives in Virginia looking to burn gay people alive, basically. We got Florida just doing Florida, right? Do we even need to talk about Florida? Just Florida doing Florida, right? We got Texas. Fucking, we got a whole bunch of states leading the charge to dismantle bodily autonomy for women to turn them into brood mares for the state, despite the fact that, hey, maybe she's 13 and she was raped by her father or brother. Well, she needs to carry that child to full term because it's a life too, after all. Mm, and you need fucking kicked upside the head a couple of times and get you back on track, apparently, because if you're going to force rape victims, especially like 12 and 13 year old rape victims to carry a child of their rapist who may probably knowing your states, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Florida, Texas, looking at you guys, knowing you guys, it'll be their father or brother or brother father or whatever the fucked up weird incestual relationship y'all got going on down there. You're going to force them to carry their rapist baby to term because, you know, a uh, uh, fucking adoption exists after all. Then we got shit. We got shit like in my state, Nevada, our fucking governor wants to create company towns. He wants to turn over, if you can pony up $750 million, um, then you can get a certain area of like, a, of like a, basically a county for all intents and purposes. And with the promise that you'll spend, I'm sorry, no, it's $250 million with the promise of $750 million spent over like the next decade. You can be in charge of fire, police, the county board of commissioners for your area. Our fucking governor is literally trying to create auction off company towns in Nevada. Like, at what point? I, home, home, home. No, no. This shit is this shit is ass fucking backwards. Oh god! Thank you for the fucking sub. Um, let me scroll back a ways. Don't you know that Jesus is in Maxwell trials, the thing that will uncover all the secrets? Yeah, yeah the, the, the cabal, yes. Will be removed from power. Here's the issue. Most of our GDP comes from California. Without it, they fail. Uh, California, New York, basically, yeah. Blue states. Blue states contribute more to the GDP than any other, uh, than, than the red states. That's just solid. Um, historically, yeah, we burn the people once the books are burned. Yep. They want to ban and burn books that talk about racist criminal justice system, war on drugs, and mass incarceration, too. Um, balkanization might happen sooner than later. <laughs> Fucking, it'd be interesting. Um, it's cold at the moment. They just want to help keep people warm, right? I hear Florida man wrote an alligator. Uh, we love Florida man in Germany. Oh, Fucking, then come get him. Because we're fucking done with him. Um... Fucking hilariously, Florida of all places where Trump lives, access to abortion is guaranteed under the state's constitution. Imagine that. Uh, that pregnancy is ectopic. ectopic? Mom gonna die. Better try to uh, implant that egg. Life is sacred after all. Um, you're my favorite sister daughter, someone somewhere. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Uh, Jack, uh, common sense opinion. 
abortion should be legal. Fuck anybody who says otherwise. Right? You want... I... I Oh, Zippy, it's just, do it, I, just Florida, just Florida. I always just get catch-all, it's just, just Florida, right? Like, there's always, I don't even need to, like, there's nothing in particular. It's just, I mean, if we went looking, I'm sure there'd be something. It's Florida. You know, that's just the way it works, right? I'm sure Pasco County's doing something and, like, making some child's life miserable and, you know, something. It's Florida, after all. Um... Want less abortions? Make them legal. Yeah. Um, and the rich, powerful, and famous have always gotten abortions. They've always gotten abortions in this country. Back when they were illegal too, before Roe v. Wade, they always got abortions. Yeah, it's 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 poor people. It's poor people that this targets. Um, now, you can talk about the disparity of poverty affecting either people of color or regional differences or working class. Look, we can intersectionalize this to the nth degree, but I'm not going to get into it. At the end of the day, abortion, uh, 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 blacklisting and uh, illegal, uh, illegalizing abortion, it attacks poor people. It, it holds poor people down. It's a class action, right? This is classist behavior. So, um, Yeah. Oh, medical. Nobody does like the only try a third trimester abortions that have, like ever occur are for like life saving medical purposes. The vast majority of abortions are performed in the early stages. It's dude. It's <sighs> why? I mean, we know why, but I mean, why? Seriously, it's 2021. I'm having to argue with fucking evangelicals. Look, here's the deal. If you want to believe wacky shit, you can believe wacky shit. You cannot force me to believe wacky shit, nor can you force me to live my life by your wacky shit. That's how it works, right? I don't give a shit if you want to pray to a giant invisible penis in the sky that you think will vacuum up existence when judgment day comes. If you want to pray and fear the grand rec reclamation of the penis, I, I, I don't, you do you, uh, you do you boo. I don't, I don't give a shit. But if you come around and start telling me that I need to wear a rubber band around the tip of my dick at all times is as a sign of, of faith towards the, uh, the day of the reclamation of the grand penis, you can fucking kick rocks, bitch. All right? Caboose. Um... It's a great reference. It's a fucking. What's wrong with worshiping the giant penis in the sky? Nothing as long as you do it yourself and you don't force anybody else to do it. Um. I, I, I've just, I fucking had it up to here with all this bullshit. Oh. Oh. Um. And on that note, White Plains fucking white plains women's healthcare clinic had to stop basically had to go on full lockdown right because three men entered the healthcare clinic attempting to oh let's just put it this way stop providers for uh, uh, uh from performing abortions keep in mind a women's healthcare clinic does like one percent abortion and like 99 percent other shit but these dumb fucking evangelical raised on fucking Jesus drank the goddamn Kool-Aid morons think health women's health clinic equals abortion. Therefore, we should march our dumb fucking asses in there and threaten the place. I'm old enough. I'm old enough to remember all of the, hey, Yogi, um, I'm old enough to remember the pipe bombings and the shootings 
oh yes, I lived through the 90s, right? Like, I, I remember this shit. I remember the abortion doctor who fucking had his clinic bombed by Christian terrorists. Yeah, fuck these people. Yogi, how was your stream? What'd you guys get up to? And hey there, Squiddy. Um, that is, they're one of the baddest ass fucking groups. Yes, Sham. I'm, I'm, I've, I'm aware of them. The, uh, women, uh, women on waves. I didn't know they were Dutch though. They literally sail in international waters. They'll go ashore, pick women up, take them out to international waters, perform an abortion and return them. <laughs> uh, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Pook. I remember that too. Yes. Um, Christians are not terrorists. They're the fighters of God. Yeah, exactly. Amaris. George Tiller. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I just, open, I, same Z's, I lived through that, I remember it vividly, yeah, fucking, dude, we had a spate of that shit in this country, right, like we had a decade, decade and a half of Christian terror, domestic Christian terrorists shooting up women's healthcare providers, pipe bombing them, fucking ramming cars into them, fucking, oh yeah, yeah, and these fucking Christians are like, eh, we're persecuted, nobody fucking likes us, yeah, I wonder why, because a lot of us have lived through your bullshit, you fucking douchebags. Stop. Stop. Just stop. Fucking Jesus never said fucking the meek shall inherit the earth and oh, by the way, pipe bomb a fucking doctor's office. Right? I'm pretty sure that wasn't in the scripture. Fucking <laughs> turn the other cheek. And by turn the other cheek, I mean letter bombs. Right? Like, no. No. No, that's not... I'm pretty sure that wasn't Psalms. Fucking hey. Yeah, it is. It's fucking Karina for sure. I, I just... Dude, this shit's going to kick off again. This shit's going to kick off again. You know that, right? Like 26 states. 26 states. This shit gets overturned. Roe v. Wade gets overturned. 26 states are what you're looking at. Okay, just over half. And the Lord said, turn the other magazine and let loose. <coughs> yeah, save your on a stick wood. Um, <coughs> yeah, there's, there's 26 states that either will immediately overturn it, have laws on the books that are, that are trigger laws. So if Roe v. Wade does get overturned, they immediately have anti-abortion laws on the books. There's ones that never left the books that already contradict Roe v. Wade decisions. So if Roe v. Wade gets overturned, bam, laws right back into effect. There is 20, there are 26 states in the United States where abortion will become highly restricted or outright, outright illegal if Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Everyone knows hate this hate the sin, love the sinner means run a run impoverished women over with your car. Um Yeah, Tolstoyan uh influenced uh uh communes tend to be pretty chill places, Wilhelm. Huh? Yeah, Tolstoy was a pretty interesting dude. Um Tech support. I've been fucking saying that. I've been saying that. Like, it, the troubles. The, we're, the America's gonna have our own troubles. It's gonna be fucking insane. Right? Like, we're headed towards the troubles. Oh, here's a fucking take. Here's a take. I'll argue this. I will argue this. I don't think I need to, though. We were talking about this last night on a, a voice call. America's already in a civil war. We've been in a civil war for quite some years. This is, this is my opinion. We're already in a civil war. It's not like, oh, civil war is going to break out. No, it's already a thing. It's already here. It's been here for years. Yeah. Um, where is your art? Shared content, I presume? Nope. Where? 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 
Ray, that's the problem. Illegal fucking abortions tend to kill people. The only benefit we can say that now we have like pharmaceutical uh, avenues, which are a lot less dangerous than coat hangers up the hoo-ha in a back alley. So like at least our illegal abortions these days probably will kill less people, but there's still going to be deaths for sure. 2020 fucking one. Oh, it's in chaos, uh, chaotic mass. All right. Um, looks bony. Looks looks bony plus mechanical. Yeah, I I. No, see, drugs are illegal and nobody does drugs other than criminals. So if you want to make, if you make abortion illegal, people will not have abortions, only criminals and criminals are not people. See, Amaris gets it. Amaris gets it. For a Swiss dude, Amaris, you'd make a good American. Oh, medical for sure. Uh, medical for sure. Yeah. People will die. 100%. Uh, Karina, I think the line got drawn years ago. Years. Years. Um, I, I would argue that we've been, and whoever called it, it was, um, yeah, yeah it, was, it was Beast. But I think Beast may have been on the call with me. Yeah, it's a cold civil war, but it's getting warmer. There's incidents over time. It's heating up. The, the cold civil war is heating up. And there have been sparks. Little flames. And then, yeah, one of these days... You're saying that like uh, here people don't reason the exact same way. Dude, Switzerland's fucked up. Uh, Motocult. So, so, you know, Amaris is like m memeing. Amaris is taking a piss. Um, but he knows how to do it so well that it seems like he's being serious. Yeah. He's, he's, he's. He's uh, characterizing, uh, as he's, he's uh, exhibiting a stereotype of a caricature of a human being. Ambrus, I'm always serious. Yes, as the Swiss are known to be. Uh, oh, Ray, yeah. Infanticide rates are going to go up too. That's that's another thing. Um, Because I like people. Because I want, I, I want the best for people because I believe in the enlightenment because I understand and uh, understand why egalitarian principles make for a better society because I'm not a ruthless sociopath. You mean the system of coercion and oppression that creates slave labor the globe over and leaves people destitute and, uh, and uh, without health care or food in the streets if they don't meet the metrics or rubrics of society? That system? Yeah. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Jack, you like people? I'm disgusted. I'm not a communist. And in fact, as an anarchist, I have just as many critiques of the USSR and centralizing authoritarian communists as anybody else, probably more so because I'm well-educated on the topic. But USSR, lulls. Please elaborate. What are the meta-ethical and let's just say, you know, what are the philosophical and economic ramifications of a centralizing authoritarian structure? Notice I didn't have to say communist because capitalism, especially that in the U.S. and USSR and Maoist China, all share the same authoritarian traits, as well as the centralization of power. Oh, you're a, you're a potential ban evader. Oh, interesting. That's hilarious. The system's working. We've, the, for those of you who don't know, Twitch has implemented a ban evasion detection system. Machine learning ban evasion system. Yeah, and there is a person in here who's getting grabbed. It's working. I wondered.
Uh, here, you'll love their name. You'll love their name. Roblox4525. Yep, Caboose. That's why they're not appearing in chat. Come on air then. Oh, of course. Carpe. <sighs> Come on air. Get in the Discord. Come on air. Have the conversation. You're not afraid to afraid to engage in the dialectical exercise, right? Use your rhetorical device with me. Own me. Own me like the fucking badass big dick capitalist you are. Come on, daddy. Come on. You can do it. You're not some fucking cowardly keyboard warrior, are you? I'll get all greased up. I got some silicone lube. We could do this, baby. Uh, Caboose, right now, not saying anything. Anyways, anyways, back to your stupid critiques of capitalism. One, all best countries are capitalist. Two, if you actually were moral, you'd be capitalist since it creates moderate societies based on democracy and wealth, a uh, wealth accumulation instead of tyrannies based on ideological extremes. Three, most modern tech came out of capitalism. Oh, do we need to do the tech is... The majority of modern technology is born of open source technologies which operates along communistic or communalistic lines. Lecture again. Do we really need to do that again? Jesus Christ. How many fucking times have we done that lecture? Um, and you're going to implement moralism from a capitalist perspective? Oh, please. Pookie. Boo-boo. Sweetheart. Banana republics. Right? Toppling regimes halfway across the globe for the benefit of your industry. Right? Capitalism isn't moral. It's not even amoral. It is actively immoral. Psychologists and uh, those who have studied this topic actively talk about how corporations exhibit the behavior of psycho and sociopaths by and large. Pookie, don't even try. All the best countries are capitalist. Please, how do we define best countries? I'd love to know. I'd love to know how we're defining the best countries. Uh, is it America? Is America the best country? Oh, and yes, capitalism does accumulate wealth for a minority, not a majority. It's a wealth transfer mechanism from the proletariat or the lowest uh, lowest class structure in its society, and it flows upwardly towards an oligarchical class. And if you don't think the U.S. isn't an oligarchy and hasn't always been an oligarchy, then Pookie, go back to history class and start studying. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm just going to copy and paste this so all of you people in chat can see this message for yourselves. Here is his message. Enjoy. One, highest standard of living materially and economically. Two, lowest amount of tyranny. And three, lowest amount of crime. How dumb do you have to be? That is amazing. Tech support. I love how literally none of their list is true.
<laughs> Moxie, I legitimately, literally laughed out loud. Yeah. I, I, not a single one on that list is true. And not even like not true by a small amount, demonstrably by a margin. Holy shit, man. Prove it. Prove it. Just so you know, what, it, what, by the way, what's the definition of tyranny? Just, just out of curiosity, um, big galaxy brain Roblox. <clears throat> what's the definition of tyranny? Do you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not susceptible to sea lioning. See, that's the thing. If you're going to make the claim, you have, you have to prove it. So prove it. Show America's number one. Prove it. So we have the lowest crime in cities in blue states or lawless murder hells. <laughs> uh, tyranny is when you have real Tyrannosaurus Rex bones in your museums. Mosh. No, that's not what that means at all, Jack. <clears throat> you have no concept of what anarchism is. Congratulations. <clears throat> yeah, that's... Congratulations. <clears throat> I mean, it's not surprising. Most people don't have a political science understanding of these topics. They don't, they've never been taught them. So your ignorance is probably not your own fault, but that's not even close to accurate. Um, Anarchistic Republic of Kospia lasted for 375 years up against the, uh, up uh, uh, in the face of the papal states trying to squash them out. Longer than the U.S. Last, has lasted. And we're facing down balkanization as we speak. <clears throat> Oh, Pookie, just because I know things you don't know doesn't mean anything to me. Your ignorance is not my downfall, right? Just because you're dumb doesn't mean I have to be, right? Just because I know things from history and that I have a decent understanding of political science doesn't mean your ignorance is my handicap. So, Pookie, Boo Boo, Sweetheart, Roblox, Here's my last invitation, and then you're going to be, well, let's just say escorted out. Come on air and actually have a conversation like a big boy. Come on, you can do it. Put, up, put on those diapers, and put, just in case you go wee-wee on yourself, and pull up those shorts and fucking get on air and actually have the conversation with me, or otherwise, we're done here. No? No? No, you're not going to? No? Not going to get on air, are you? Okay. Cool. Good to know. Oh, hang on. First, I have to report you for ban evasion, don't I? Um, let's see. In chat. Um, Site-wide, probably. see there's that and there's that all right bye pookie
Anyway. Well, that was a fun distraction with an idiot. I'm sorry y'all didn't get to see like his um, mass spamming. He really was spamming there quite heavily. Yeah. <laughs> Motko. <laughs> Motko. I'm not sorry. Thanks, bot. Um, you know, it's interesting. The ban evasion bot works. Or the ban evasion technology works. Anyway. Yeah, and Almec, so far, I mean, I've only seen one iteration of it. Um, that's what Roblox does to our kids. <laughs> oh, fucking A. Uh, where was I? Oh, did you see the fucking dude, uh, the Chinese dude who fu uh, who recorded one of the uh, Uyghur camps? And then he's apparently in the U.S. right now. He he like got the fuck out of China. Um, he recorded a video of him like, I mean, the balls on this dude. That's a school, by the way. I'm I'm sure that's the the CCP fucking roll on that one. <laughs> um, he's apparently already. It, it, it's very Auschwitz looking. Uh, he's apparently already in the U.S. Um, his latest like profile update like he he did that and then got the fuck out of the country uh you just don't like the architecture uh does does that remind you of home <laughs> amrus um remind you of the good old days some some photos of of grandpa back where he used to work uh <laughs> very nostalgic yeah <laughs> oh fuck me Oh, I love the Swiss. You guys are fun. Uh, oh, I need to... Sh <laughs> Does it doesn't look like Auschwitz. There's no train tracks. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, um... Well, there's a few of these. Um, the anti-vax Republican who refused to certify uh, Detroit's election. Well, don't worry about it. He won't be uh, refusing to certify any um, <clears throat> elections from here on out. Um, whoopsie. There was a bunch of them. Uh, anti-vax pastor who fucking was, you know, preaching the gospel of Jesus healing and God protecting. Whoopsie. He's dead too. Just another few of them died within the last couple of days. Yep. More Herman Cain awards. More Herman Cain awards. Um... Brought to you by Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> this week's HCA is brought to you by Jesus. Um, well, somebody pointed out 
Isn't it ironic that the people being killed by this are the same people that preach a gospel that says God sends plagues to earth to kill non-believers and like non-conformists, right? Like the ones who are good and have faith in God are the ones protected from the plague. Isn't it interesting that the ones preaching that are the ones dying from a plague? I don't know. There might be something to that. I mean, Karina, the heat may help. You may want to take a cold bath, actually. Yep, same people who say God created everything for a purpose, but also hate gays. Well, that's... Oh, fucking, I lived through that gener uh, generation of... God created HIV is God's cure for uh, for gays. Yeah, I still haven't quite that let that one go. That one still brings me to the edge of <clears throat> saying and doing. Yeah. Well. Looks like COVID is God's cure for Christians. It's their rapture. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's really what they fucking said. They, I, I don't, I got nothing but fucking spite for those people um <laughs> Karina just God just shows up on the, every single one of their deathbeds and just <laughs> um my favorite is still that the uh, is still that the bring back the plague tour by cattle uh, cattle decapitation had to be canceled and they were funny about it. They made a new music video with tons of toilet paper in it. Nice. Um, The actual non-heretical Christians of Europe, a.k.a. the Catholic Church, which is hilarious because in the Deep South here in the U.S., they don't consider Catholics Christians. Catholics aren't considered Christians in a good portion of the U.S., about, about half. About half of the U.S. Christians don't consider, well, I mean, given that it's the Deep South and they have the majority, that's probably over half. Probably over half of the Christians in the U.S. actually don't consider Catholics Christian. Yeah, interesting. Just a little fun fact. <laughs> if I ever make a video game where wiping out an enemy is a goal, I'm going to name the achievement Christianity. Um, I, Karina, I, I got, I mean, I got nothing. Got to love that Christian infighting. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All my. That is a standard talking point in the Deep South. Um, that like, are you are you Christian? Oh, yes, I'm Catholic. Ooh, I said Christian. Yeah, Catholics aren't Christians. They believe that, by the way. That's a real fucking thing. Catholics aren't Christians in. A good portion of the Christians' eyes in the U.S., yeah. Of course, they're not Christians in my eyes. So, funny how that works. As far as I'm concerned, there's like three Christians probably roaming around on this planet, right? How many of them are living up to the ideals and tenets put forth by Jesus Christ? Not many. Not fucking many. My condolences and you sound so thoughtful. Uh, 
Orthodox only, as in Greek Catholics. Beastical? Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers would be one. Yeah, I, I would accept Mr. Rogers as an answer. 100%. Um, hey, Tidley. All who believed were together and had all things in. Oh, this is yeah. I know this. I know this one. Okay. All uh, all the uh, those who believed were uh, together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute their proceeds to all as any had need. How many people are standing around in Dallas for a guy too Catholic to be Christian? Uh, I think it was like 45 or 65, something in that territory. Tech support? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Still kicking. Uh, I'll make, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the like Southern Christ, like Christians, um, they definitely don't think the Mormons are Christian. Tidley. Egalitarian principles born of the enlightenment, communalist aspects, social safety nets, con a consensus decision making, caring about equality and equity throughout society, dismantling oppressive and coercive hierarchy such as capitalism. How, how far right does that sound to you? I'm advocating for the total abolition of capitalism. Sounds like a right winger, right? Yeah. To no. To somebody who doesn't know the difference, potentially, communism and its uh, as Marxian form is we have the same goals. We just achieve them by different ends. We um, we believe in a ground up, grassroots, hi uh, hierarchical organizational structure. Communism, generally in the Marxian sense, refers to a centralizing authoritarian statist mechanism utilized to achieve their goals, which it never achieves their goals because you can't beat somebody well with a wellness stick. So that's not how that works. But in the words of Bakunin, we want what he wants, but we want to achieve it by different means. Uh, multiple places, but if you want an answer, like if you want like an answer, the anarchistic Republic of Kospia lasted for three, seven, 375 years without any lawyers, without any doc, uh, without any, <laughs> sorry, doctors, without any uh, lawyers, without any judges, without any police, without any military. And they, um, flew in the face of the, uh, papal states at the time. Small example, but significant example. Uh, the Whitehall colony in, um, in Britain and Zomia across uh, Asia into Southeast Asia is a loose collective of 100 million people. You could call um, the Zapatistas, even though they borrow anarchistic organizing principles and combine them with other non-anarchistic techniques. Zapatistas definitely are uh, in the ranks. You could talk about microcosmic examples existing within a superstructure and interfacing correctly, such as the uh, uh, Trumbleplex outside of Detroit, Michigan. You could talk about the, um, the Spanish Civil War in which 50% of agriculture and industry was being produced by anarchistically organized communes. You could talk about Machnoist Ukraine, in which the Black Army went up against the Red Army successfully for a number of years until Lenin violated two treaties and they basically did him and stabbed him in the back. You could talk about uh, during the Korean separatist movement and uh, during the split in the middle of the Korean War, how anarchistic communes provided for the Korean people when the um, the southern uh, the southern U.S. forces and the northern um, China Russia backed forces would uh, not provide for the people because they were too busy doing you know the war thing. 
You could talk about, you know, Freetown Christian uh, in the Netherlands, which is organized and operated via uh, anarchistic, uh, right around, along anarchistic uh, means uh, and like modalities of operation. Or you could go all the way out to an abstract such as cybernetic theory and talk about distributed network topologies and how things like Tor and especially I2P are some of the most resilient network topologies that you can build as far as, uh, as, far as a, a resiliency within a network goes. So, yeah. Anarchy is solely the turf of left wing. It's just not. And you have a very poor political science or civics understanding of politics at this point if you just think right wing equals less government. That's not the axes as they are applied. Up down is authoritarian versus libertarian. Libertarian meaning... Libertas, French, not libertarian as in North American or U.S. libertarianism, right? Like this is, you, you quite literally don't understand these topics. And that's okay. Everybody starts ignorant. But you got to learn. You got to learn. A bunch of them that I talked about, Jack, exist at the moment. Yeah, a whole bunch of them exist at the moment. Also, Food Not Bombs is an anarchistic organization that operates anarchistically, that feeds people in like 125 countries right now as we speak. Right? Like, a bunch of anarchists. Organized anarchistically have a multinational global organization that feeds people in well over 100 countries. What's your group doing? So. Carpe, uh, bombing? Usually. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Wow. It's amazing. Machnoist uh, Ukraine actually managed to organize the Black Army anarchistically. Right? Militias organized anarchistically that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fucking Red Army multiple times over many years. Right? Kospaya, 375 years. Oh, but that's a power vacuum. Somebody would have stepped in. Coming soon. Because no empire has ever risen or fallen, right? Where's the British? Y'all, Britain is a fail is a failure. The British Empire rose and fell. Hey, uh, just so you know, Rome, complete failure. They didn't do anything. Count, discount everything Rome did because the Roman Empire doesn't exist today. Everything must exist for all time for anything to count. So, so everybody knows. Bye, cupcake. Love you, Cupcake. The USA will pass, too. Dude, we're, we're speedrunning this shit, by the way. We're speedrunning this. Yeah. Oh, who did a... Who... who I'm sorry. Amaris. Okay. Thank you, Amaris. Done. I mean, it's it feels like we're headed towards balkanization, doesn't it?
Viva! Viva, 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 Viva. Did it go okay? Did did everything turn out okay? Are we are we thumbs up? Commune of California win. Dude, California will pwn this shit if they split off. Yes. Oh, good. Viva, I'm so glad. I'm glad. That's, that's, yeah. Glad that went well. Caboose, just get, just, just fucking give it another, give it a few years. <sighs> but that's, I'm, I'm so happy that it went okay, Viva. That's, that's stress no one needs, especially right now. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh. Yeah, this is a fun one. Everyone want to get their um, anti-cop hard-ons going? You want to get get your uh, fucking A-cab ragers going? This happened in my state. We just got this footage. This happened in February. Taking money out of my kid's mouth. Sorry, we were taking food out of my kid's mouth. Like I, like I said, we we believe right now that this is drug proceeds versus currency. Well, I'm gonna prove to you that it's not perfect. <laughs> Tech support. clip shows a retired U.S. Marine being robbed of his life savings on the side of a highway. He was not arrested for, charged with, or convicted of any crime. He wasn't even ticketed. This is a rare glimpse into an abuse of power that thousands of innocent Americans experience. Oh, no, he hasn't. He doesn't have his money back yet. They have agreed to return it, but they gave him they didn't actually return the money itself yet. Oh, yeah. That's that's the fucking catch is mm. each year through a public records request. The Institute for Justice was able to acquire body and dash cam footage of an entire roadside. Seizure. Yeah, the quote direct quote is the government has since agreed to return Lara's money. And on Tuesday, a fucking public interest law firm released the, uh, the body cam footage. From the initial traffic stop to the seized money being deposited at the bank. This is the most complete- They haven't have returned the money. On February 19, 2021, our client, Steve and Lara, was pulled over outside of Reno by the Nevada- And that's as of two days ago. to visit his daughters in a small California town just west of Reno. Yeah, we talked about that one yesterday. Uh, beast. Eight shots, pause, ninth shot. And then they handcuff the dude. Yeah, you know, initially I, I thought I was getting pulled over uh, because maybe I had expired tags. I had a rental car. Unfortunately, I had uh, some car trouble, and uh, that was necessary to get a rental car for a uh, short duration um, for that weekend. I'm doing great. Hey, the reason I'm stopping you, we have a special enforcement campaign going on. We're trying to educate. Yeah, the idea is everybody Kai's about to do an ableism. Fucking get you, get, okay? Are we all, we all ready? The idea, Jack, is retarded. The idea is that the money is guilty. In the U.S., that's the deal. Is the money is being charged with a crime. 
That idea is stupid beyond belief. All right? That is the dumbest fucking idea ever. Your house is guilty of a crime. Your car is guilty of a crime. Your money is guilty of a crime. Therefore, we confiscated it. It's literal federal robbery. And you get a cut of it. 70%. 70%. Yeah, we are, GL. 70% is what the fucking Nevada Highway uh, Nevada Highway Patrol would have gotten from the federal confiscation. There's literal incentive to take the money from people. It's a stupid idea. Drivers got violations they may not realize they're committing, but we're seeing a big increase in crashes out here. First, apply John, you're driving. You drive great. You're driving really slow. Appears that you're driving, trying to drive safely under the speed limit. I appreciate that. I just want to talk about your following distance, especially around commercial vehicles. The highway patrol officer seems friendly and reasonable at first. Yeah, Even they always do. Stephen's driving. He orders Stephen to exit his vehicle and starts. Asking Don't ever him talk a to cops. Questions unrelated. To Don't ever consent to searches. Police often ask questions like this to see if a suspect's story lines up. You a fighter? I'm a fighter? Yeah, you got a tap out shirt on. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of training. I'm a retired marine. What do your daughters do, man? Ever been in trouble law enforcement before? Don't did ever you did you answer what questions. What part of you buying a house in? What were you doing for work up there? The officer then explains the real reason he pulled Stephen over. Hey, while I'm working on this, let me ask you something, man. This is going to sound kind of weird. Um, part of my job out here is I do what's called highway interdiction. I look for people that are smuggling contraband through our state, across the country. Uh, weapons, humans, drugs, illicit currency, things like that. Anything in the vehicle I should be aware of? Okay. No no firearms? No explosives? Okay. Um, is there any drugs in the vehicle? Cocaine? I don't do drugs. Yeah, I got to ask all these silly questions, right? Okay. Um, any large amounts of United States currency in the vehicle? Okay. What's a large amount of U.S. currency to you? Okay. So there's over 10,000 in there? Okay. How much money you got in there? Right there. Right there. No, his department is, Jack. His department is. If your workplace, right? You work in a small shop, right? You got like 15 fucking coworkers. If your workplace could walk away with 15, $70,000, Right? Yeah, there might be incentive there, especially seeing as the workplace gets the money and bonuses get handed out on top of that. Stop fucking bootlicking. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, would you give me permission to search your vehicle today? It's a lot of copays. Okay, Okay, perfect. Although it's Stephen's right to refuse, he gives the officer permission to search his car. I didn't want to come across as being um, and non-cooperative. And to whoever said that, oh, it was Viva. It's Friday. You know what that means. And Beast got it. Shut the fuck up. Or it's shut the fuck up Friday. If, so shut the fuck I did up. What I felt was right, and I was very uh, honest, very forthcoming. I was also very respectful, and I just wanted to make their job as easy as possible so that I could be on my way to spend time with my children. Schmuck. Hey Shane, how are you? Good, hey, can you head out to a traffic stop? Are you busy on that other stuff? Is it the video? It's the video. (laughs) Jay, love it. Uh, So far, I'm still searching a car, but a big bundle of money says probably a Preach. Carpe. That interaction shows what's at the heart of the officer's interest in Steven. He knows that even though Steven did nothing wrong, the DEA will adopt the seizure of his cash and return a portion of the money to the highway patrol for the favor of giving them the case. Here's how an adoption works. When state or local police seize cash, cars, or other property, federal law enforcement takes over the forfeiture. The federal agency does all the work and kicks back up to 80% of the proceeds to the state agency that seized the property. 
In Stephen's case, that would mean the DEA would take control of the cash and seek to forfeit it through federal law, ignoring the important limitations that Nevada law places on seizures and forfeitures. In 2019 alone, federal agencies made $334 million in equitable sharing payments to state and local law enforcement agencies. In this case, the Nevada Highway Patrol stands to gain nearly $70,000 by taking Stephen's money. I think you're a good guy. Oh. I'm a good guy. <laughs> how, so how much cash is that? About 100 grand. 100 grand. Yeah. So. Neo-feudalists can fuck off. Just go somewhere else. No one gives a shit about your your bullshit uh, cunt of a fucking uh, ideologue, right? Ayn Rand was a fucking hypocrite. Go f just fuck off already. Nobody cares. Anyway, back to this. As you know, right, I, I'm a vet. He's a vet. You're a vet. It's not illegal to carry currency. Cunty cunt, cunt, cunt. She was a cunt. There. It does go make us ask some questions on... Why someone has 100000 I can understand why you don't trust banks, especially in this day and age right now. Stephen keeps his savings in cash. Maybe that's uncommon, but as the officer acknowledges, it's not illegal. I have nothing to hide from you. I appreciate that. Um, give me a few seconds. Can I make a couple phone calls, right? Um, the officer first calls his superior. <laughs> she was indeed. He interrupts that call to speak again with the DEA agent. Did you get tech support? I consented okay. to search I'm once when I was honestly too high to say no. When my back seat was literally mounded over with loose garbage like a trash goblin. Imagine three shivering pigs swimming in discarded food wrappers. I even hinted at a hitchhiker apologizing for dropping some non-existent weed since they were so aggressive about it. There's nothing for them to find, but hey, three cops tied up for hours. Tech support? Tech support. Tech support. I love you, man. I love you. That was, that's amazing, right? Like, that's, that's amazing. Then <laughs> fuck it. Yeah, fuck them. Let them, let them, I'll tie up these three cops and let them dig through trash for three, a few hours. Based as shit, man. Love it. Out here, this is a, um, it's a strange one, but not a strange one. Um, consented to a search, said there was money up there. We located what he says is $100,000. It's in a, uh, uh, Ziploc sandwich baggie. Um, there's also, I haven't gone into it a bunch, I'm waiting to get back to the chamber, there's a bunch of bank receipts and stuff in there as well um, to show the, the currency. Yeah, this might be Shane, hold on a second. Yeah, this is Shane, let me tell you about it. Around 20 minutes later, the officer's superior, a highway patrol sergeant, is recorded on his body cam chatting with the same DEA agent who apologizes for not being able to make it. Uh, no issues. It's too easy to do an adoption. You know, we contacted you, so I think everything's going to be okay. Um, and I'll, I'll text you the, the money count after we get it. It'll probably be a couple hours. Why does it sadly have to be done? I'm saying large amounts of undocumented money seized for drug enforcement purposes is something that sadly has to be done. One, fuck your drug war. Let's start the argument where it starts. The drug war is unconstitutional and a uh, prosecution of individuals for, a pri uh, for something that is personal and private. Fuck off. Fuck off. Like, just fuck off. Yeah. Like, that's, oh, sadly, it must be done. No, it must not. It's an unnecessary byproduct of the black marketization of a, uh, of a process that should be allowed in the open. The only reason those large amounts of cash are being moved around the way they are is because of that federal illegalization of the consumption of compounds that we should be allowed to consume anyway. Remember, there's still no probable cause to seize Stephen's money. All the officers have is a large amount of cash, and cash is not a crime. But the sergeant isn't giving out. So why, why the distrust for the bank system? I just don't trust them. Thank you, AJ. Yeah. That's just that's just my it's my reasoning. It's my personal thing. Oh, I'm not and, I'm trying uh, to convince you one or the other. It's just it's it's not usual. After questioning Stephen, the sergeant speaks privately with the officer who pulled him over. What are your thoughts, Chris? I I kind of leaning more towards um, it, it's odd, but. 
It's odd, but it's not packed it's like not, normal. No, and, and he's answering the questions. There's there's receipts here, and it. it I would like knows. to put. I would like to put um, the dog on the currency man. Okay. The two office. Catch all. Catch all. How many know? How many here know? All U.S. currency will test positive for drugs. Yes. Fucking zag right there with it. All U.S. currency has trace amounts of drugs. Catch all. It's a universal holding clause. Oh, the dog issue? Nevada State Patrol itself. So the same fucking assholes doing this had five or six former officers, former patrol officers, literally take Nevada State Patrol to court to prove that the dogs were unreliable. Their own former cops have taken this very organization to court to show that, in fact, the drug dogs are completely unreliable. Officers agree that Stephen has been forthcoming and has years worth of bank receipts showing that he has withdrawn his savings from his bank accounts. But the sergeant orders the junior officer to put the dog on the currency. The sergeant puts Stephen's money in an open Ziploc bag and throws the open package to the ground on the side of the road less than 40 yards from Stephen's car. positive alert appears to have given the sergeant what he thinks he needs to take Stephen's life savings. Remember, both officers have planned all along to hand the money to the DEA. They are looking for a legal justification. But numerous studies have shown anywhere between 67 <laughs> and 100 percent of U.S. currency has trace amounts of drugs. For that reason, a dog alert to currency on its own does not show the currency was used in an illegal drug transaction. What we're going to do, I believe there's drug proceeds, dog alerted to it. Drug proceeds? Yeah, well, <sighs> very common, sir. We get people that are trafficking marijuana, large quantities of marijuana from Northern California to all states east, even from Reno. Sir, I, I can tell you so, right now, there's... So, so we're, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen, okay? We're going to seize it today, but that doesn't mean we're the final judgment on it. It's going to go through the DEA, okay? So the DEA will contact you. And the DEA will, will uh, provide you with a means to, um, to fight it. You're going to have to provide your, your pay stubs. You're going to have to provide, provide your other receipts and stuff like that. Okay? Stephen now has nothing. He had to convince his brother to wire him $1,000 to continue his trip to see his daughters. I just want to let you know, I, I know you're just doing your job. That money I worked really hard for. I would go for a fucking low blow at that point. I'd be like, I know you're just doing your job, but so are the guards at Auschwitz. And as far as I'm concerned, you're a fucking Nazi. Moda, no, oh no, no, Modi Cole. No, he's, the government has agreed to give him his money back but hasn't given his money back and they um they they are suing his he has got he has retained counsel and they are going to sue the DEA and they are going to sue the Nevada Highway Patrol uh, Nevada State Patrol uh, State Police but the probability of him getting a settlement out of it very low very low um also as i pointed out hasn't gotten his money back yet They've agreed to give him his money back. Hasn't gotten the money yet. 
After nearly an hour and a half on the side of a highway, Stephen was given a receipt for U.S. currency with a number to call the DEA agent. This is all I get here? That's what you get, yes sir. You're going to get noticed in the mail as well at that address, okay? I find it even more so concerning that if this could happen to me as a combat veteran who served overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> You're adorable. You think they care about This that. could happen to anybody. <laughs> After six months without his nearly $87,000, Stephen sued the DEA in federal court to get it back. Only then, after the Institute for Justice filed a lawsuit on his behalf and the Washington Post called the agency for a comment, did they agree to return Stephen's cash? It wasn't the lawsuit, by the way. It wasn't the law lawsuit. It was, it was the media, honestly. When the Washington Post called them for comment, hey, we're running a story that you stole $87,000 from a, a Marine vet would you care to comment? All of the sudden, they released his funds. All of the sudden, they were on board. Hey, Deirdre. Yeah. It was, it was the press coverage. Stephen may have gotten back his money, but his case goes on. Stephen and the Institute for Justice are also suing the Nevada Highway Patrol in state court to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Steven's situation isn't unique, but he is one of the lucky ones. He will get his money back. Most victims of forfeiture don't have a public interest law firm like IJ to take their case. Anybody know Sam Pattern? cannot afford an attorney and cannot figure out how to navigate convoluted forfeiture processes on their own, the government walks away with their property without ever having to prove any crime. This highway robbery must end. It is time to abolish civil forfeiture. Lots of people of color, exactly. And the white man was an elderly person who can't put up much of a fight, can he, Deirdre? Um, tech support the pattern says I'd be just fine. Yep. Yeah. No wealthy white people. No wealthy white people. Um, so, you know, doing a necessary job. Sadly, it's, 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 it's sad, but it's true. It's necessary that they do that. Yeah, <laughs> like we ought to celebrate with Asset Forfeiture Simulator. Um, but remember, they're the thin blue line that stands between society and chaos. Without them, that man might have made it to Texas to visit his kids. The humanity. Thank God for them. I, for one, am going to donate to my local police benevolence foundation for sure. God bless America. Later, Mosh. Take care of yourself. Ducky, I'd, I would, yeah. 100%. Um, oh, and Jack, fuck you too. Um, because the U.S. doesn't have a pattern of, uh, aggressive, proactive, predatory policing people of color or poor people or the elderly, right? Like that's, that's definitely not a thing that happens in the U.S., right? We definitely don't have a multitude of studies and decades of media coverage demonstrating that beyond a shadow of a doubt, the U.S. police force at the federal, state, and local levels don't perniciously prosecute 
people of color and poor people. That's definitely not a thing that happens here at all, right? It's I'm sure there have been no riots over this at all. Oh, oh, all the way back to the 60s. Oh, there's an unbroken thread that can be traced to the very iteration, the very foundation of our nation that proves that we've always been this way and that this isn't a new phenomenon and that in fact it is an element of the system that's designed to be there and that it's functioning as intended. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yes, but 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 I get I'm playing the race card. Should we, AJ, spot on, feature not bug. Should I read the origins of and problems with modern policing? Right, like do I need to go through the essay? Right, like this is, this is how it is. This is how it works. Fuck it. Schmuck. You're, you're the white moderate that Martin Luther King warned us about. Yeah, while you're reading, try reading Letter from a Birmingham j uh, Jail as well. Why don't we do, uh, why don't we do that actually? You know what? Here we go. Let's do a quick recording. <clears throat> the thread. One of the characteristics of modern policing is what I shall refer to as the unbroken thread. The perceived problems exhibited today are far from new, nor are they necessarily best described as symptoms or problems, as they are inbuilt features, set, uh, inbuilt feature sets that date back to the very origins of the existence of modern policing. Power. The underlying problem. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, said the 19th century British historian Lord Acton. In a study published in the Journal of Applied Psychology, Catherine A. DeSellis and several co-authors found that participants primed to think of themselves as to feel powerful would take on a higher amount of gain points when allowed. <clears throat> in Understanding Ethical Failures in Leadership, Terry Price refers to exception-making in leadership roles, believing that the rules that govern what is right and wrong actually no longer apply to the leaders themselves. The general consensus is that ultimately the power doesn't innately corrupt people. What it does is cause the underlying ethical tendencies to reveal themselves. Power causes people to show you who they are. Hold this in your mind as we proceed through this essay. First, the first corruption. First, let's start our journey through history with a possible, though likely not apocryphal, tale surrounding Sir Robert Peel. Peel was considered a rising star of the Tory party, first entering the cabinet in 1822 as Home Secretary. As Home Secretary, he introduced quite a few important reforms of British criminal law. He reduced the number of crimes punishable by death and simplified the law by repealing many criminal statutes and consolidating them into what are known as the Peel's Acts. In 1829, Peel established the Metropolitan Police Force of London with a thousand constables employed that were affectionately nicknamed Bobbies, after Robert Peel. Admittedly unpopular at first, the venture proved successful in lower rates of crime in London, and by 1857, all cities in Britain were obliged to form their own police forces. In 1829, when setting forth the principles of policing and democracy, Sir Robert Peel declared, quote, the police are the public and the public are the police. Besides being one of the gentrified upper crust of London's finer circles, Peel had another passion of the porcine variety. You see, Sir Robert bred and raised, or, well, rather, his staff did and he oversaw it, Tamworth pigs. I'm sure you can see where this is headed, but just go along for the ride, as it were. At the time, Smithfield Market, the largest and central market of the city of London, was located in the city center proper. It had become illegal to drive 
aka walk animals through the city because of the havoc, filth, and disease they spread. But as anyone who's ever shopped for fresh produce can tell you, the fresher the product, the higher the price it commands. As the story goes, Sir Robert had his bobbies drive this line of soon-to-be-departed porcine product through the vendor stalls, overturning them and destroying slash eating various farmers and merchants' uh, products as they went. I mean, what are you going to do about it after all? The bobbies were at the ready to cave your skull in with their nightsticks if you attempted to do anything about it, and the man who owned the pigs was one of the most powerful men in the country. Quickly becoming accustomed to this practice, the various vendors and stall workers would see the bobbies and parade of pigs coming and start shouting warnings to each other. Here comes Peel's pigs! Well, it doesn't take long before nicknames and slang catch on. And the nickname transferred from the pork destined to the market to the individuals engaging in the drive itself, the constables. Now, admittedly, this may be an apocryphal tale, or it may not. There aren't many competing theories on the whys and hows of the origins of the pejorative slang for police, but in either case, this one fits nicely as we choose to tell uh, a story to tell ourselves. This is why we call police pigs. Now, in the United States, the development of policing closely followed the development of policing in England. In the early colonies, policing took two forms. It was both informal and communal, which is referred to as the watch, or private for-profit policing, which is called the big stick. The watch system was uh, composed of community volunteers whose primary duty was to warn of impending dangers. Boston created a night watch in 1636, New York in 1658, and Philadelphia in 1700. Augmenting the watch system was uh, watch system was a system of constables. Official law enforcement officers usually paid the fee uh, through a fee system for warrants that they served. Constables had a variety of non-law enforcement functions as well. This com- continued well after the American Revolution. It's not until the 1830s that the idea of a centralized municipal police fo- department first emerged in the United States. In 1838, the city of Boston established the first American police force, followed by New York in 1845, Albany, New York, and Chicago in 1851, New Orleans and Cincinnati in 1853, Philadelphia in 1855, Newark and Baltimore in 1858, and by the 1880s, all major U.S. cities had municipal police forces in place. The southern states found a different path to follow in the development of uh, of, uh, policing efforts. The genesis of the modern police organization in the South is the Slave Patrol. The first formal Slave Patrol was created in the Carolina colonies in 1704. Slave Patrols had three essential functions. One, chase down, apprehend, and return to their owners runaway slaves. Two, to provide active deterrence to those slaves who might revolt in the form of localized terror squads. And three, as a form of summary punishment for slave workers outside the law if they violated any plantation rules. Following the Civil War, these groups evolved into modern Southern police departments, primarily as a means of controlling freed slaves who were now laboring in essentially an agricultural caste system and enforcing Jim Crow segregation laws. And in the North, the big stick took the place of in controlling, uh, controlling union efforts. The Big Stick was paid for, was a for-profit organization. They derived their income from the merchant, uh, the merchant and industrial class. They would call the Big Stick in to break up labor disputes, to break up strikers, and to engage in extrajudicial assassinations if necessary. The businessmen of the large cities would pay for the uniforms, they would buy the land, they would construct, uh, they would construct the buildings, and they would pay for the salaries. They were an ad hoc, paid-for, strike-breaking force. Now, The 13th. As we continue to follow the original unbroken thread from the initial corruption of Sir Robert Peel through the development of the Big Stick and slave patrols, we find ourselves having to mention the 13th Amendment. The constitutional amendment that people claim abolished slavery in the United States, but the truth of the matter is that it did no such thing. In fact, it did quite the opposite. It codified it into constitutional law. Quote, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. And with those words, slavery and involuntary servitude were institutionalized into Americans' prison system. The literal nature of this slavery 
can even be found within Supreme Court rulings such as in Rufin versus the Commonwealth, in which the court held that, quote, he is for the time being a slave of the state. Again, the thread continues unbroken. Corruption, labor abuses, and slavery, all leading into one of the biggest travesties and overall miscarriages of so-called justice in the U.S., the war on drugs. Look, drugs are bad, okay? We could spend the next five years going over the heinous and prolific details of just how bad the drug war has been and how much of an intentional crime against people of color and the working class it has been. But let's just settle for a quote from John Ehrlichman, a domestic affairs advisor from President Nixon who even spent time in prison for his role in the Watergate scandal. In a piece by Dan Baum for Harper's Magazine on the topic of the war on drugs entitled Legalize It All, Baum recalled a 1994 interview with Ehrlichman in which he quoted Ehrlichman as saying, quote, the Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. While his beloved children have attempted to refute their father's alleged quote, most people see through this attempt and also understand it. No one really wants to be the children of someone associated with such horrific acts and the cognitive bias that would arise in that situation or even bad faith argumentation is perfectly understandable. Despite this, that quote pretty much sums up the nature and character of the entirety of the war on drugs. It was an intentional effort by the United States government in order to disable, disarm, and undermine the working class, people of color, anti-war, and anti-institutional elements within society. Just another maneuver by the system and its associated entities to maintain the status quo. The thread continues unbroken. The rise of the warrior cop. So, just quick question. Who gets to be a cop in America? Well, basically anyone, as so long as you're not too smart, ask too many questions and don't rock the boat. Yes, in fact, there, have been, there has been a case even in this country of a police department being sued by, for, uh, by a candidate who was being discriminated against because he didn't score low enough on their intelligence test. Police training starts in the academy where the concept of officer safety is insanely overemphasized. Rookies are taught what is sometimes known as the first rule of law enforcement. An officer's or a overriding goal every day is to go home at the end of their shift. They drill into their brains to always be alert around civilians. As you can never know which one of us might be the enemy. They repeat phrases over and over, such as complacency kills. And they aren't just being told about the risks they, get, uh, they, uh, they have, but shown in full color, soul-crushing dash cam and body cam footage of officers, rarely see my piece on officer fatality statistics, being punched, kicked, and shot after what is usually explained away as a split second of hesitation. Listening to that officer's final desperate calls for help, almost all the rookies in attendance will be having similar thoughts. I won't let that be me. That's the crux of the problem with modern policing. They're too afraid, plus they're the foot soldiers of a system looking to maintain its status quo. When you combine this David Grossman, look, we won't even get into Mr. Grossman in this piece, but feel free to look him up, level st and style of training with two other important factors to consider, qualified immunity and the 1033 program. The 1033 program. The U.S. has been arming its police for war since the 1990s. Facing down a swollen military and what it characterizes as an ever-worsening drug crisis, the 101st Congress in 1990 passed the National Defense Authorization Act. Born of Section 1208 of the NDAA allowed the Secretary of Defense to, quote, transfer to federal and state agencies personal property of the Department of Defense, including arms, ammunition, and that the Secretary determines is A, suitable for, such, uh, for use by such agencies in counter-drug activities, and B, access to the needs of the Department of Defense. It became known as the 1208 program, but in 1996, Congress replaced Section 1208 with Section 1033 and created now what is widely known as the 1033 program. The argument was that if the U.S. wanted its police to behave as drug warriors, it should gear them up like warriors. 
which they most assuredly have, to the tune of over $7 billion in equipment by 2020, according to a 2004 report by the White House under former Barack Obama. At the time, the U.S. federal government had provided 460,000 pieces of military equipment to local police, including 92,442 small arms, 44,275 night vision devices, 5,235 Humvees, 617 mine-resistant vehicles, a.k.a. MRAPs, and 616 aircraft. 1033 procurements are not a matter of public record, of course, and the Defense Logistics Agency, which coordinates distribution of military surplus, refuses to reveal the names of agencies requesting tactical items such as rifles and MRAPs, you know, armored assault personnel carriers. So, the poorly trained, frightened, undereducated maintainers of the classist, racist, oppressive status quo are now armed to the teeth with military-grade gear. Yay! Qualified immunity, qualified immunity or why we can't hold any of these assholes accountable. In 1967, the Supreme Court effectively gutted the Civil Rights Act of 1870 by inventing qualified immunity, describing it as a modest exception for public officials who had acted in good faith and believed that their conduct was authorized. Fifteen years later, the court drastically expanded the defense in Harlow v. Fitzgerald. Instead of protection being afforded to public officials hinging upon whether the official even acted in good faith, the qualifier was now whether the victim could show that their right was clearly established, despite whether an official acted maliciously or not. Since that decision, the court has made it exceedingly difficult for victims to satisfy the new standard. To show that the law is clearly established, the court has said a victim must point to a previously decided case that involves the same specific context and particular conduct. Unless the, unless the victim can point to a judicial decision that happened to involve the same context and conduct, the officer will be shielded from liability, and the thread makes it all the way to today unbroken. You see, the origins of modern policing were born of corruption, power abuses, attempts to maintain the status quo by the rich and powerful, and, well, nothing has changed. Ever. Oh, and if we want to talk about police officers' fatality and, and danger statistics, I've got that too. I've written on that one as well. They're not in danger. They don't need any of this gear. So take your bootlicking cop, fucking, uh, cop apologist bullshit elsewhere. It doesn't fly. I've got the fucking receipts and the numbers and the history and the statistics to back up my fucking argument. Love you too, Deirdre. <clears throat> well, GL. Big stick and sleigh patrols. Remember, don't don't ever like that's my issue, is it's it didn't just evolve out of the sleigh patrol, it evolved out of the big stick, which was big business breaking up labor efforts plus slave patrols. Yeah, which is worse, which is way worse in my opinion, right? It, it would be horrific enough if they evolved out of just the slave patrols. But in fact, it's a, a bastard amalgamation childlike thing. Like it's just a demon spawn from hell of the northern father, basically, of big business and the southern mother of we want to own people gave birth to this. It is, it's an absolute nightmare. And that thread is unbroken through the whole thing. Never has there been a, a, a defining moment of reformation for our police system. There's never been a, a, a mark where we say, all right, we need to start over. We need to reboot this. We've never done it. There's never even been significant reformation, right? Let alone a clean slate, a clean start like a break and a start. It has literally never even been reformed. The police we have now are the direct descendants of those that assassinated labor union organizers and 
chopped off the hands and feet of runaway slaves. Cops are class traders, a linchpin of the system, the wealthy and powerful built to protect their wealth and power from the working class and poor. They are. They're the third tent pole. They're the third tent pole. I, I love my tent poles. If you've never read my tent poles essay, honestly, I think it's one of my best pieces um, and where I elaborate the three tent poles of oppression in America. And it is uh, poverty of philosophy, a financial hamster wheel, and the police state. It's the third tent pole, and it's the most critical one. Um, hundred percent. The cops are the biggest problem we face in our society. I truly, truly believe that. And it's not just because of the immediate like danger that they put, you know, in poor communities, people of color, basically anybody who looks at them funny. I mean, that's the thing is I get white privilege until they know I'm an anarchist, right? Like that's, that's the hilarity of it is like, I I've seen my white privilege go out the fucking window before. Right. It's like, oh, you've got you've got white privilege. Wait until the cops learn I'm an anarchist. Right. Like that shit goes out the window immediately. They don't give two shits what I look like as soon as they learn that little juicy piece of uh, information. Um, Carpe, I'd fucking do a lot of stuff with it. Dude, did you see how many billions we spend uh, just in localities like the NYPD, LAPD? Fucking dude. Yeah, they don't. Like, yeah. Yeah, the three, uh, the three temples. I love that. Oh, Pookie, sweetheart, boo boo. Are you mad that I get, uh, I get laid more than you? <laughs> Just, you got a little pent up. Yeah. In fact, I work in the clear. I haven't had to do black block in a long time. Viva, here they do. They're one of them goddamn commies. Some of those who work forces. Oops. It's not what I... There we go. Most of those that work for us is truth. Um, and in case anybody's wondering, just so you know, because we've had to cover this a few times, um, 2019 statistics, because these statistics don't hold for 2020 and 2021, because the number one cause of death now for police, the, the death rate for cops skyrocketed, statistically speaking. Um, and the number one cause of death is COVID. Because they refuse to get vaccinated and they refuse to wear masks because they're big, tough alpha men and they don't need that sort of pansy ass leftist bullshit, right? So COVID's just murdering the shit out of cops. Um, that's that's 100% a thing that's happening now. Um, fucking 0.0058% of officers were violently killed in 2019. And I got the fucking receipts and statistics to back this up from the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. The most generous with these numbers. Oh, yeah. Cops don't have a dangerous job. They don't have a dangerous job. In fact, if you look up Advisor Smith, who's an insurance analyst group, and look at uh, workplace state safety statistics, basically everyone has a more dangerous job than cops. Cops are some of the least endangered people in the workplace. It's a fucking myth. It's a myth perpetuated by a system that is looking to maintain its status quo through a monopolization of force. That's it. That's it. It's that simple. They are the jackbooted thugs of your rulers. Always have been, by the way, too. 
Yeah, thank you, whoever didn't want to be known. But thank you for the gift sub. How are your violence statistics? This is the lo lovely one I always like to do with the British, uh, uh, British populace. Um, we, you don't have any, we have no, sh we have basically no shootings compared to you. Yeah. It's because you have no guns. What's your violence statistics look like? How about stabbings and acid attacks? Deirdre. Fuck. Thank you. Burger man. I don't know if burgers here right now, but Wilhelm, Wilhelm's here. I think, um, Wilhelm, congratulations. Um, uh, and drivers 999. I don't know drivers. I love this. So here's 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 the differential um, from Nation Master, right? Um, crime levels, the differential between crime levels, violent crime levels for um, for U.S. versus uh, the United uh, United Kingdom, sixteen percent. We have more guns than people, and the only difference is a sixteen percent differential per capita. It's almost like, now follow me on this. I know, this is crazy. This is crazy. People are people. <laughs> crazy, I know. It's, it's like batshit insane. Just people are gonna people wow zip <laughs> zippy thank you for the gifts of zippy go, go, go chase what you gotta chase zippy and guess what Yeah, we are. We'll take it. We don't mind it. And here's here's a crazy one. Viva. Damn, I always forget as a German I don't have free speech. <laughs> it's almost like humans are humans. Uh, wacky. And, and you have like several hundred percent more acid attacks than we have. Just, just out of just, just to point out that the U, that the UK has like orders of magnitude more acid attacks than the U.S. has. 
Just, just saying. Uh, oh, fucking dear. <laughs> oh, please. They're Europe and you know it. They're Europe and you know it. Whether whether you guys want to fucking get along or have your little, like, we're not best friends anymore, break up over Brexit. Let's face it. You guys are all fucking... Just because you're on continent and they're not. There's no shared culture or history there whatsoever. You definitely couldn't find any unifying force between the, uh, between the continent and Britain, right? Like, there's definitely no shared culture or history there. Uh, Deirdre, thank you for the 13, 1,312 biddies. Britain and France need to make up and fuck already? They do. Fucking Germany will just be sitting there in the corner rubbing one out fucking while, like, uh, watching scat porn or something. Good old fucking Germany. <laughs> They'll ask if they can eat the body. You Anglo-Saxons have always been a mad breed of people. I'm sorry. Is, 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 is the German proposing that they're of a superior race? I think I've seen this one before. Stop me if, stop me. I, I, this seems familiar. <laughs> Rerun time. Um, Zippy again. Thank you. We call it a reboot nowadays. You're right. You're right, Amorous. Fucking got to get with the ki the kid's terminology. Oh, is this the fucking... I remember this. Yeah. It, uh, the fucking... What was it? The German... Uh, what, what group was that? Um, I know. Oh, and I love the fucking, um, I'm pretty sure. Hang on. Let me just check. It's a Peter Hitchens thing. I fucking knew it. Um, and let me guess. They're going to fucking invoke Carnegie, I bet. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Um. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> Bush. I fucking I get it. Well, by default, all righties are limp dick fucking uptight Puritans. So, low bar to set. Like, I mean, come on. Holy, holy fucking straw man slash ad hom fucking Batman. Hippo stuffing his face. Fair enough. You had Nazis on one of your, like, cop special forces unit. That's it. That's it. Look, look, look. A unit within the, or, or, was under investigation. And, you know, guilty parties have been fired. You had Nazis in, like, a SWAT team. In Germany. Like, homie. Stop trying to fucking defend it. It wasn't that bad. You had Nazis on a SWAT team. I mean... <laughs> there's no... There's no minimizing that. And not just one, multiple. Right? Like, that's an issue. Che, so I reiterate, European cops aren't any better than U.S. cops. You're just less heavily armed. That's it. I mean, just see when some, when like protesters come out against the G20 or the G8 meetings. See what the cops do. Do they crack skulls just as quickly? They fucking come out and bust fucking heads. They disrupt protests. They fucking get in the streets. Right? The fucking French cops will fight firefighters for fuck's sake. They'll literally get in fist fights with firefighters. If you gave those same jackasses guns, they'd use them. Yeah. Viva, you're telling me cops are cops? Mm. Oh, is this, um, yeah, this is separate. Um, do that one. Oh, please. Lefties can't pass a drug test. Dude, we've been passing drug tests for fucking years. Are you, are you, are you that naive? You don't. Are you really that, are you that fucking naive that you don't think? <laughs> Dude. It's simple to pass a drug test. It's fucking simple. Uh, Nemesis, nice.
Uh, the psych test, the answers are available for $175 online with explanations of how you have to answer and why you have to answer that way in case you get asked about it. I've investigated this. Pookie, you're out of your depth. In fact, a good proportion of the cops today you um, purchased the primers for the psych exam for the police academy. Yeah. It's almost like I come from a firearms training family and I have a judge as a stepfather, an FBI agent as a fucking uncle, and various other law enforcement entities that I've been either surrounded by or peripherally associated with throughout my life. I have firsthand knowledge of these things. Pookie. Most of the cops who do the entrance exam for the academy buy the primers uh, online so they know how to answer the psyche eval to, uh, questions. That's a thing. You can just go online and buy the answers to psych evals for the police academy. What do you think these, how do you think these psychopaths are getting through? Oh! Thank you for outing yourself on that one. Cool. Thanks for using the racist 4chan language. Yep. Love it. Love it when they do that. Oh, look, more groups of German police officers having to be suspended for sharing neo-Nazi content. Oh, uh, Deirdre, do you really need the explanation? It's um, Terry Davis was a genius programmer who had schizophrenia, probably um, bipolar as well. Um, and so basically he was convinced that CIA agents would glow in the dark. Um, and 4chan loves him because he had a, uh, let's just say liberal usage of the, of the N word. And he would refer to CIA agents as glow in the dark N words oftentimes. And so it became shorthanded to glowy. So it's sort of a 4chaners dual purpose word. They can use, use it as like you work for the government or N word. Yes. That's the or that's that's where glowy comes from. It comes from Terry Davis. Yeah. So it's it's like I said, it's it's sort of CIA agent slash N word. That's that's what glowy is. So. Yes, I love it when they out themselves. Oh, and here's an academic report on, let's see, this a systemic issue of far-right uh, extremism in German cops and the army from, the West, uh, from West Point, from the com Combating Terrorism Center. Uh, a series of extreme far-right cases uh, amongst, uh, among members of Germany's military and police highlight the threat of the enemy within, radicalized extremists within security services with access to weapons training and confidential information. Such individuals, and especially those who are part of groups and networks, pose a new challenge to Germany's intelligence community, which is struggling to assess the true dimension of the threat. From police chat groups where racist, nationalist, and anti-Semitic content is being shared, to Nazi sympathizers within special forces storing weapons and explosives, to a police employee looking to help far-right terrorists plunge the country into civil war. It's clear, quote, the threat is significant. Fun. 
But don't worry, everybody. It's only a few bad apples. <sighs> Keep licking that boot. Keep licking that boot, man. Keep licking that boot. Eventually, eventually the leather will stop tasting like leather, I promise. Che, I kind of want you to. It's kind of hilarious, Che. <laughs> che coming with those fucking receipts, just one after another. Like, and here's another, and another, and another. Oh, that's why you have to believe it. You have to believe it, or or pop pop is actually a tool of the oppressors. Oh, I get it now. You literally have to believe it. Oh, my entire family is police slash military. Oh, I get it now. You literally have a cognitive bias. You have to believe this or else you would have to come to the terms with the fact that your family are oppressors. I got it. I got it. I got it. Something, something, Stockholm Syndrome. Garbe, it really does, right? Like, it totally makes sense now. Like, yeah, okay. I get it. You're literally protecting yourself. Psychologically. Oh, God. Karina, that's rough. That's rough, Karina. I mean, you just, I, I don't, honestly, I hate that they're doing this to you. That, like, you're not allowed to do, like, a, a hormonal replacement. That's, that's so fucking evil. I mean, let me look. Hang on. What are you, Karina? Which 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 drug do they have you on? Carpe, that is true. I Yeah, I wanna look at look at something, Karina. Give me a give me a name. Um Carpe, think about pigs and piglets is that they eventually have to start uh, they uh, start having to pair the boot leather with stronger and stronger alcohol. It is true. They tend to uh, start needing coping mechanisms. Forty percent. Forty percent too. Okay, thank you, Karina. Um The Nazi uniforms were absolutely a manifestation of how dumb they were, slash are. All about appearances. Thank you, Hugo Boss. Um all about appearances, all posturing and preening, and absolutely fucking useless for doing what they were supposed to do. Nazis were packing their uniforms with newspaper for insulation in the Russian winters uh, just to not freeze to death. Um, all right.
What? Holy shit, he can even... Dude, I don't like this drug they've got you on, fucking Karina. And I definitely don't like the fact that they're fucking um, not supplementing you with estrogen on top of it. We're going to have a chat. We're going to have a chat, Karina. I'm not going to do it on uh, do it on air. But there's some there's some stuff I want you to be aware of ahead of time. Um, oh shit! Did he just say a fucking wish? Hope we got uh, we get hurt. Well, yeah, he did in a chat message. Next threats of harm. Hope you get. Written housed. Cool. I, they're not confusing Karina. It's not, it's not confusing me. It's fucking concerning me, frankly. I'm going to want to know dosages and stuff like that. Uh, there's there's some stuff I I, I want to know about. Uh, maybe Karina, maybe this is this is a little concerning. <laughs> what is dipshit? The term is Zimmermond. Um, Viva, your education system is concerning me, dude. Viva, welcome to the fucking club. My educational system is concerning. It's been concerning us for a while. Here's the issue, Viva is that it's built upon the Prussian regimentation system. So the same system that the Prussians used to create good, unthinking, unflinching soldiers who would march to their demise while not questioning anything is literally the foundations of our educational system. So, like, yeah. Uh, Amaris, our friend did just commit a TOS. Yes. Yeah, the boot, the bootlicker number one. A leftist indoctrination camp. That's hilarious. Leftists are big fans of putting you in the United States military. Yes. We also. Um, are big fans of teaching you about capitalism. We're big fans of liberal apologetics. We're big fans of glossing over uh, genocide of the native peoples. Definite, definitely fucking leftist indoctrination centers. For sure. Holy shit, man. The guy from a cop family couldn't leave without a threat of violence. Imagine that. 40%. Wait, did you leave school at age 12? Is that what you're telling us? Uh, Karina, I'll do it if you want me to. You tell me, tell me what level I need to be on. To talk to him like I'll give him both barrels if you want but like you know like math and science you just ignored that too didn't you AJ, basically, yeah. It's rough, but it's true. All right. <sighs> Can we keep him? He's like a puppy that eats his own waste. Um...
Karina, I just mostly just want to talk to him about, like, do you have any comprehension of, like, the... Yeah, either way, we'll talk about it, Karina. By all means, we'll talk about it. Um, GL, as Carlin said, good workers that are just smart enough to pull the lever and push the button, but too stupid to ask the question. Um... All right. I still love that. I still love the fucking 10,000 military members applied for religious exemptions and not a single one got approved. It still cracks me up. Fuck it. You, you signed the paper for the DOD. You sold your soul to the United States government. Uh, I'm sorry. The notoriously left-leaning leftist liberal organization that is the Department of Defense. Let me just placate our our non-learned friend amongst us, you know, the liberals have, who liberals are definitely left-wing. Um, the liberals have have infected and invaded all of the spaces. So that notoriously left left-leaning organization that is the DOD. Um Turn down ten thousand fucking religious exemption appeal uh, uh, appeals. Um, please uh, enlighten me as to <laughs> enlighten me as to your Overton window. What is a leftist to you? Is Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, uh, Dianne Feinstein, are these leftists? Is, is, is this... Just out of curiosity. I'm just trying to calibrate your, your Overton window. Aw, nice Karina. Uh, okay. All right. So then, yeah, your Overton window is shifted so far right that you can't see which direction you're actually facing anymore. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, I don't need to have any further conversation. Then. Got it. Um. Oh, in Germany, the end of Angela Merkel. Right? Like that dude. She's been with us for 16 fucking years. Um... No more, no more Angela Merkel. That's, look, I mean, by European standards, she's right-leaning, for sure. She's conservative by European standards, but f as an American, right? Like, dude, I'd take her in a heartbeat, right? You, you understand, like, yeah, she'd be Bernie in the U.S., right? Like, I would take her in a heartbeat. Like, is she looking for a new job? Like, did she, did she fucking, she in the, is she in the market for a new gig? Like, I, I, we'll take her. We'll fucking take her. Dude, she has been respected. She is calm. She's, can we trade her for Pelosi? Yeah, y'all want Nancy Pelosi? We'll trade you. Um, she's intelligent. She's thoughtful. She's insightful. She's respected. I'll, I would take Angela Merkel 10 times out of 10 compared to the bullshit we have. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a fucking power vacuum if there ever was. <laughs> Political draft picks. <laughs> oh, I want the uh, former president of Uruguay. He's my first round draft pick. Um, Jose Mujica Jose Mujica I want first round draft pick Jose Mujica um, For those of you who don't know who Jose Mujica, uh, Mujica is um, this is Jose Mojica. He was president of Uruguay. All right. This is him in his car, right? He was known as the world's poorest president. 
All right, this is here. Check out, check out his fucking crib. Yeah, this dude, he is one of the get best fucking fuck, uh, uh, presidents. Straight up. Here. Here's him. Here's him with his beat up old fucking tractor working his land. Yeah, 100%. First round draft pick. I'm taking him 10 times out of 10. He, he actually was a man of the people. Like, legitimately. Yeah. Progressive politics, too. Progressive politics. Like, legalize weed at the federal level. Fucking stop this drug war bullshit. Fucking social safety net programs. Uh, tax the fucking wealthy to pay for anything you need to pay for. Right? Like, legit. Like, I... Jose Mojica for U.S. President 2024. AJ, nobody. He made it out alive. Nah, he fucking... God, you're a fucking cliche. He may still be, like... When... Oh, fuck you, Woo. What was he? Just out of... Oh, um... <clears throat> just, just for those of you on the actual left, if you're wondering about Jose Mojica and his credentials, um, he was a gorilla. Good night, Puka. He, he was, he was a gorilla. Like, for real. Oh, um, fucking, um, it's, it's escaping me too. Godwin, Godwin's law. It's Godwin's law. Um, Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, Jose Mojica was a guerrilla. Like for reals. He 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 got it. He he got in the trenches back in he when he was a kid. He he got the shit done. Um, so. Um, Godwin's law is a, uh, an adage that asserts that as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Adolf Hitler approaches one. In less mathematical term, the longer the discussion, the more likely a Nazi comparison becomes. There you go. Um, are you literally responding to a bot? That's how fucking dumb you are. You're literally responding to a bot. 
I mean, what should I expect from somebody who literally openly advocates for support of Nazis, right? Like, what, what, what should I expect? Somebody who literally can't, can actually not tell the difference between a human being and a fucking bot when the bot is labeled bot. Genius. Absolutely genius. Yeah, Karina, basically. <laughs> Doc. One of us. Aw. Crixus Kitty in Discord. I know, right? Like, dude. Oh, shit. You know what I didn't do? Mm, fuck. Well, you know what? I guess it's tuna salad tonight. Che, but you know they're bots. That's the difference. You understand they're bots, and you're you're not... Um, it, cricks, no. That's fucking... Dude. <laughs> um... Dude, meeting macros is hard, Crix. Meeting macros is hard. 1.3 to 1.8 times your body weight in grams of protein. Do that math for yourself, right? Take your weight, multiply it times 1.3 starting, and that's where it takes to build muscle, right? If you're going to put muscle on, you need 1.3 times your weight in grams of protein per day. Not an easy thing. And 1.3 is the starting position. If you really are working at it and you're really building and you're really like, after a hard workout day, you do a whole body and you hit the weights, 1.8. 1.8 is where you need to be. It's, it's not easy. Amorous, I agree. I think you're all just manifestations of my own divine creation. I do, Amorous. Some of the best conversation I get. Um, you know what? Fuck it. Oh, let's see. Is that not? Interesting. There we go. All right, who wants to join me on air? Oh. Let's uh, let's make. Who wants to join me on air? And let's make fun of some of these fuckers. Uh, Chew toy. We're, we're, I'm just gonna make fun of some of these fuckers that we've had tonight. Holy shit! Have we had some fucking bootlicking dummies? This has been an interesting like. Yeah, this is, this has been a fucking run so far. It's been impressive actually. Yeah, sure, True Toy. Jump on. Who cares? Anybody else want to join me? Fucking jump in voice chat. <laughs> the Chud Harvest was fruitful this night. Uh, this night, it was. It was in fact fruitful. Um, great spelling of Descartes. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck this, this per, who was it that said that? 
Oh, it was, it was sip. Fucking Paul Cockshot would obliterate you on the topic. What? What topic? Cockshot was a fu- uh, was is he's still alive, right? He's a fucking Scottish computer scientist who's a fucking Marxist who uh, advocates for a planned moneyless economy. Like, who? What? What? Like, apropos of what was that? Like, I mean, he's a communist. Descartes versus Plato. <laughs> Oh, we should, um, you know what? We're going to do some Proudhon one of these days. I've got, I've got what is property. Um, just chew toy. Just jump on voice chat. No, I know who, I know who the fuck William Cockshot is. Fucking his, his name is William, by the way, but I know who Cockshot is. Like literally like. I don't, he's, he's, he's a socialist who specialized in, uh, who specialized in, uh, image field compression, who again, advocates for a moneyless centralized, uh, planned economy utilizing, I believe it was, um, some sort of, um, oh God, what was it? Um, uh, labor time, labor time. Yeah. Um, he felt that um, the, the was it the calculation problem, the economic calculation problem could be um, solved um, via allocation uh, based on labor time um, and slash computerization. Um, y yeah, he's, well, no, he's a Marxist. He's not a Leninist. He's not an ML. He's a Marxist. Um, you probably should know the difference if you're going to talk about him. What's up, Chutoy? I don't hear you. Just FYI. Um. Yeah, he's 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 a Marxist, not an ML. So. Fair enough, Chutoy. Fair enough. You do you, homie. You do you. Yeah, like, you, you literally don't even know the difference between an ML and, an, uh, and a Marxist at this point. Like, I... But, yeah. Also, he advocates for a new form of socialism, by the way. Um, yeah. Was he, was he Cybersyn? He was Project Cybersyn, wasn't he? Holy shit, he may have been Project Cybersyn. Oh, hang on. I'm betting fucking Cockshot was Cybersyn. Um. No, but he loved Cybersyn. Okay, so he was a fan of Cybersyn. He just didn't, he wasn't, uh, Cybersyn was beer. Okay, Stafford beer was uh, Cybersyn. Cockshot just based new socialism off of Project Cybersyn. Okay, got it. I, do I hear you now, Chutoy? Uh, AJ, dude, Manifesto is fine to read. Das Kapital is fucking miserable to read. I'll tell you that right now. 
Um, it's it's rough reading Das Kapital. All right, uh, Chutoy, we'll, we'll see here. Oh, hang on. I see why. Give me a second. Give me a second. Discord's doing a thing. Quit Discord. There we go. All right. Try again. Yep, longest 42 hours of audiobook ever, says Carpe. Dude, just volume one. Yeah, no, it's an, it's a nightmare. I'm sorry. Fucking Dust Capital is a nightmare to listen to or read or pff, consume in any way, shape, or form. All right, I see you. you hear me now? Yep, I hear you now. Excellent. Hopefully my volume's all right. Oh, I, I adjust you. Don't worry about it. Just... Excellent. That's cool. How's it going? <laughs> uh, dude, it's been an interesting night. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know how you do it. How do you attract so many Nazis and fuck ups into your chat? I don't understand. It's incredible. You're like a magnet for it. Um, because I don't run um that godforsaken fucking bot, um Posada bot. Oh yeah. So basically, most other leftist streamers run Posada bot, and so it purges them outright because they've caught bans on all of the other channels usually, right? Like they've they've been. They run around and fucking spout off their Heil Hitler bullshit, right? Yep. And they <laughs> they catch the bands, and so they stack up like thirteen or eighteen fucking bands, and people run Posada bot. So they walk into the fucking channel, and immediately they're known who they are, what, who, where all they got banned, and they're just like blacklisted immediately, right? Yeah. So, I think it takes a special kind of stupid fucking hopeless loser to do that because like they've been banned how many times and they still they still try like I mean you got to admire their determination but not much else pretty low quality people <laughs> ambivalent I'm pretty Australia right New Zealand New, New Zealand. Zealand it's always uh, so difficult for us it's always so difficult for us to peel those two accents apart. Yeah, but it's like you guys and Canadians. I can actually tell the difference now. It took me years of listening, but, but so, finally I managed it. There you go, ambivalent Kiwi. Um, I mean, which is just a fucking fake anyway. Your island doesn't exist. We all know you're some sort of conspiracy constructed by the deep state. So I, I want to encourage that because then we don't get all the dumb fucks trying to come here thinking we're some kind of... Uh, <laughs> escaping paradise from all the problems of the world because we're not um, we all have our own problems aka chinese real estate investors uh we've already got those no no we've got plenty of those belt and road yep no we already had uh, we actually had two members of parliament like think of them like senators or, or whatever um we actually had two mps one in each of the major parties that had ties to the chinese communist party and they got quietly dismissed about a year ago but they've been ha hanging around for quite a while so jesus uh, christ <laughs> That's that's that that's a fucking issue, right? Like that's... Yeah, yeah. I think people are. It's it's really weird because we're all cozied up with China because we are a major agricultural exporter. We export like a ton of food, and China buys it up, and we're all got like trade deals with them and stuff like that. So um, politicians are pretty quiet on on the China front. They kind of quietly try and maneuver around them rather than directly <laughs> confronting them, but it, it adds up to problems. My um uh, my new mattress that's arriving tomorrow is um the wool in it. There's three ingredients: natural latex, uh, cotton, and wool. Um, all organically grown, of course. But the wool, of course, comes from New Zealand. Yeah, well, you know the you know sheep are pretty beautiful, so we like we like having quite a few of them hanging around. We yeah. don't actually have as many as we used to. We're more dairy these days than sheep like it kind of had a switch Interesting. Um, but uh, thankfully our uh, dairy is much much worse for the environment and uh all uh, all our uh, environmental protections seem to have an exemption for agriculture and nobody will admit it it's really really fun to live in a place like that funny how that works mm, we mm, do quite quite funny clean green new zealand it's bullshit uh, our country's beautiful in some places but we're also uh we also ignore a lot of our problems, so uh, we're not as... I think every time I talk to Americans, they're like, oh man, I'd love to come to New Zealand. It seems great over there. <laughs> You're like, one, you know, please kinda... don't, and two... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. No, it is It is great to live here, but like, the, you know, you don't see the problems until you're living in the place, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I think 
people people get a kind of a misapprehension of what New Zealand is. So, ah, uh, oh, so sorry. We were going to rag on the idiots who were in chat before, right? So I mean, should we segue, segue back to that? <laughs> I'm just looking at one of the idiots in chat. Fucking oh, which which one is it at the moment? New Zealand, Siparuski or whatever the fuck. Um, New Zealand and Australia has one of the highest homeless populations in the OECD. Actually, not not necessarily true. But if you want to pick on New Zealand, mate, come on, I'll give you some actual fucking ammunition. Um, New Zealand has uh, what was it? One of the highest gang member populations per in capita? the world. Uh, our gang numbers outnumber our armed forces interesting yeah so if you want to actually criticize new zealand maybe do some research and then you can you know oh my god a whinge about it they're fucking <laughs> they doubled in five years yeah it's so current it you- current as of yesterday holy shit um yeah yeah so big problems with that um it's, it's actually interesting it's really kind of complex and oh keep coping nz is shit i'm sorry uh, do you want to do some per capita bragging, mate? What country are you from? Do you want to start it up or? Oh, um, fucking like this is fucking guaranteed. They live in some godforsaken shithole, probably the U.S. Um, but <laughs> Dude, a dinghy in a parachute. Fuck, man, I'd love to have that. No, no, we just got Steve. He's out back. He he doesn't even have a parachute. <laughs> he just kind of he just kind of tells people off. Just sends him a strongly worded letter. Sorry, I was just replying to your oh, chat. No, it's fine. Fucking Zipperski's fucking triggered as shit right now. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's the highest homeless in the, in the OECD. Um, I don't know. I haven't checked that fact. It might actually be true. Um, not a hundred percent sure. It also depends on how you define homeless as well. Um. Well, well, lame name here. You see, New Zealand's got this thing called um, a reasonable outlook on trade-offs between freedoms and public good. And sometimes those two clash, and we didn't actually uh, uh, give lose all the gun rights. People can still own guns; they just can't own certain automatic guns and uh, other with other spe- specifications as well. Um, so, for instance, if you're a, on a farm and you're a farmer, you can typically you can still own a gun to do you know hunting and things like that to to get rid of pest species you, and things like that. So you you again do, you do have to, you do have the largest you per capita in the OECD. Um, you do have the highest rate of homelessness at 086 percent. Well, there you go. Okay, well I'm prepared to accept that fact if it's a fact. Yep, makes sense. I'm sorry, am I supposed to get, like, triggered or upset from chat by this? I, I, you know. I'd rather, yeah. no, I'd, um, I'd rather actually learn the truth. <laughs> whereas the U.S. rate is, is probably miserable. Um, let's see. Let's go looking. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. These are some depressing statistics, if there ever were. Yeah, Lufa Poopa, I've never actually heard Flight of the Concords. Um, they just sort of sprung out of nowhere and people are like, you heard Flight of the Concords? I'm like, no. Actually, no, people ask me things like, because they think there's like five people in New Zealand. So I've actually had somebody from the US ask me if I knew Dave. I'm like, yeah, I know Dave. Like literally, <laughs> Dave. That was Gary. Gary. Did I know Gary? And I said, yeah, bloody know Gary. I knew him from ages back. And Fuck yeah. And I had them on. Dude, everybody, them on a bit. everybody, everybody in New Zealand knows Gary. Yeah, fuck yeah. Everyone, everyone knows everyone else. Yep. <laughs> though, though it's actually kind of true that with our political system, we don't... It's really weird. You look in the US, you guys like have that weird fucking pledge of allegiance where you stand up. Do you guys actually do that? Do you actually like stand up in class? And I'm have not to- shitting you. They fucking make the kids stand up in class and put your hand on your fucking heart and face the flag and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Jesus. Oh Christ. That's fucking creepy. That's like, that's like creepy movie stuff. You know, if you look at it from the outside, it's just, it's just fucking creepy. That's just weird. I, I could, I couldn't even imagine doing that. Eh? Like there's, we have a really informal relationship. Like the big news, uh, the biggest assault <laughs> on a politician I can remember was somebody literally threw a dildo at a politician. It was really fucking uh, funny. I'm going to show you a picture news. of the Bellamy salute, which is what we used to do to the flag. I'm not kidding you. This is, I'll get you a picture. Um, it's going like the Nazi salute. It's on screen right now. So it'll be up in a second or two for you. Okay. Hang on. Let me just, start. oh, yep. Yep. That looks about, yep. That's about <laughs> right. I guess that lost, that lost popularity after world war two for, for unknown reasons. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Hi, Hitler. 
<laughs> oh my god! Actually, you know, you know, the sad part is that like the old didn't they have like an old motto or something for the United States that didn't even mention God or anything? It was just like one nation for all. It was actually almost admirable. Um, oh been, well, like, the, the, yeah, the the pledge the pledge used to be um, uh, fucking non-religious. Um, it, it we added the on it, like in God bullshit um, to it all during the McCarthy esque communism scares. Yep, makes sense. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Oh, this is scary, man. It's um, scary. Here's 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 this. I like this picture. This is a good fucking picture. Um. Just a courtyard of them. <laughs> oh, because you could actually, what you should do is Photoshop the flag and change it to a swastika and then just share it with people and just be like, wow, look at what the Nazis were doing to the kids. And when they get all upset about it, just literally show them the original image and be like, well, actually, actually, uh, this, this happens here, right, 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 in, right under our noses. I don't, we just know, don't give a shit. Um, Yep, there it is, Exel. In in totality, the creepy cult shit that it is. Uh, I mean, though, I, I just didn't finish it because, I, dude, I haven't said the pledge since I stopped saying the pledge in, I think, ninth grade. I think eighth grade would have been the last time I said the pledge. By, by high school, it was, you know, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, and it's like, no, I'm not. And it's like, well, stand to show respect for the flag, but you, I'm not going to make you say it. It's like, yeah, you know what? I, I'm still new in this school, so I'm going to go ninth grade. By 10th, by the time I was a sophomore, I had stopped standing, too. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm good. Um, There's no way you're going to enforce this shit. So, like, let's just get on with our lives. If you want to do the pledge, do the pledge. But, homie, it ain't happening. Um, but yes, it is. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible with Liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing problematic about that statement at all. Right. <laughs> Open GL. You're, you're saying that in the chat, um, I often post those pictures next to the Nazi Germany schools and challenge people to tell the difference. The sad part is that I think well, well, obviously they're not synonymous. The Nazi schools were absolute indoctrination factories. What you'll immediately say is that American schools are also partly indoctrination factories as well, especially in terms of history and in terms of learning about the social history of, of the United States. Like I said, I, I mentioned in chat earlier, I often feel like I know more about American history than a lot of Americans I meet. And while I'm a bit of a history nerd, I don't consider myself knowledgeable about American history. But like people don't know about things like the Lily White movement and stuff like that. I'm like, isn't it really, really important to understanding how America works? <laughs> You're adorable. They don't want us to understand how America works. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. No. Um yeah, let me see if I can still like all right, pull that. What? Wait, what? There we go. All right. Um Okay, so yes, um AJ, yes, it is it is burned in. Also, I can do the Boys and Girls Clubs uh, mission statement because my first job um 18 um was a regional director for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Um and so that was to um to enable all young people, especially those from disadvantaged circumstances, to realize their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. Yeah. So, that shit so gets burned in. <laughs> um, it reminds me of the uh, Starship Troopers. What's the difference between a citizen and a civilian? And you're like, well, that's... It, I, like, I like that, actually. Starship Troopers is entirely a, a Nazi propaganda film, and all the dumb shit alt writers think it's like a really great gung-ho movie and i'm like these people are vapid killing machines that turned into monsters yeah oh yeah and, it's and it's a classic case of are we the baddies yeah <laughs> like homie we, yeah we've got skulls on it <laughs> <laughs> service guarantee citizenship yep dude mobile in infantry made me the man i am today and he turns around and he's missing both legs and an arm and 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 these dipshits watch it and go yeah it's super cool man i want to be part of mobile like how do you get through to people like that oh well i mean have you ever seen the fucking twitter army uh, the u.s army twitter thing it's fucking hilarious oh, fuck. oh yeah the u.s army 
um, fucking Twitter account reached out one day and fucking they tweeted out, um, tweet tweet how the U.S. Army changed your life. Oh jeez! Oh, oh that's, that, that that kind of open questions just just bad oh, strategy. Oh, oh, so many, terrible. so many, so many. A uh, gay dude who came out in the '90s and fucking lost his GI Bill and had like still is paying back the money for college to the United States to the Department of Defense. One guy said, you know. Um, I got my, uh, I, uh, oh, uh, my wife banged, tw- uh, my wife banged 12 dudes while I was in Afghanistan and I'm afraid of fireworks now. Um, nice. <laughs> like, oh, just, just a litany of just like, yep, yep. Hey, like, name, name here. Guess what? We're actually still under the British Commonwealth. Okay. So if you're going to, you're going to say these things again, hey, well, I mean, not, there is no British empire, but technically we're still part of the Commonwealth. So, you know, come on, man, come on. Try harder. You can, yeah, try harder. I mean, uh, it was also it's like a monarchy in name only, really. Th- at this point, we're we're, a- which makes it worse. That makes it worse. You've yeah. got like a golden gilded tick on the ass of society. <laughs> it's like you yeah. know, c- could you get rid of that? It's like, well, they don't do anything. Yeah, that's that's worse actually. <laughs> yeah, they're a vestigial organ, but like they're a vestigial organ that was once a lump of cancer. So like, shouldn't we just? you know, kind of just cut it out because it doesn't represent anything we should be all that proud of. Um, <laughs> that would, that would be, that's my perspective, but it's not a very popular perspective where I live. I, I live in the conservative heartland of New Zealand, but remember that the conservative heartland of New Zealand is like Democrat country in the United States. Um, the Republican party is absolutely fucking nuts. They are completely, absolutely loopy, neo, almost neo-fascist, just about tiptoeing towards fascism. Scary. Tiptoe through the fascists. Um, yeah, yeah, GL, that is pretty much a solid take. Um, <laughs> the sun never sets on the British Neo Empire. Um, yeah, somebody did. Who's separated from the crown this week? Oh, Barbados or something or not? Yeah, it was an island. It was an island. I forget who it was, though. Barbados. Che is saying it's Barbados. Yeah, so... Yep, and Deirdre, consensus has been achieved. It's Barbados. Um, so, zip is. I can remember I was talking to somebody who actually uh, is a higher ranker in the local government here, and he was going on about how he's he really likes the monarchy. Um, and he actually used, I think it was the monarchy of Thailand as an example of a really good. Uh, uh, counterbalancing force to the excesses of politics. Like, do you realize that political monarchy. scientists consider that place to be the coup capital of the entire fucking planet? And he's like, oh, no, no, and just started crawling up his own ass, obviously, as you do when somebody's contradicted and given facts. Um, but it's kind of scary, even in a place like New Zealand, there's people who work in government who are really gung-ho for authoritarianism. Um... I think it was Thailand. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Where is... Where's the photo? Yeah, I'll find it eventually. Um, yes. Yes, this. Here's a good example. <laughs> more... Reasonable. More of this. More of this. That's completely, completely fucking reasonable. Um, is it just me? Is it just me or is like, I, I, yeah, as I said, I'm a kind of a history nerd. I really like looking it up. I don't know too much about it, but I'm interested in it. But is it just uh-huh. me or is it like any country that actually has a representative government doesn't obsess itself with how it looks? Uh, like you look at Kim Jong and stuff, they're like well, monument Well, see, here's the thing. Is hey ambivalent? Thanks for the follow. Here's here's him in his downtime. And he's not ripped enough to be Xerxes. Yeah, see, no, no, we're close. He's one of his Xerxes. Okay, this this is how he likes to actually get around. This, that, that is such like the weirdest fucking picture in the planet. Yeah. Like, imagine saluting that, right? Like that's. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had to salute Trump, didn't they? I know, right? Jesus Christ. He was sort of fairly elected, sort of, 
Yes, these photos are illegal in Thailand. That is a truth, a true statement. And um, I have stated numerous times, Thailand is on my no-go list. Um, I I am unable to go to Thailand because you will catch twenty five years for insulting the crown in Thailand. And the yep. first fucking thing out of my mouth when the plane sets down would be "fuck your piece of shit white trash wannabe redneck looking motherfucking king." <laughs> like. I would, I just start going off. Like I can't, I know I can't control that shit. So like it I'm just, stinks. Thailand's off the list. Um, I know, you just can't control yourself. It's, I'd be scared of that too. Like running my mouth if I went to any place that, right? well, any, any place like that. And I'd just be like, I just know, I know because I'm just such a fucking loud mouth in real life. I just wouldn't be able to help myself. I'd just be like, they're making a fish face yep. trying not to just, insult everyone it's like sorry you know i fucking need to say something viva said uh that'd be more than 25 um so yeah uh thailand's off the list there's a few countries that i know i just can't go to because i get mouthy and um <laughs> they'll do some shit um hong kong's on the list now too I can't. Yeah, oh, that's that's a huge shame, Hong Kong. I mean, like, look, the, they were they were taken over by the Brits. Not the best situation, but still a better situation than being in China's, you know, sway. Uh, they could only be worse. Um, I think people underestimate how much of a danger China is to the world stage, especially around the Pacific, and that was kind of scary. Five to eight is stepping on a fucking coin, says Viva. Jesus Christ, because his face is on the coin, right? So if I step on the coin, it's five to eight years. Jesus goddamn Christ. You know, you, you know you're a fucking snowflake and a half, right? Like, you know you're, you're a fucking pussy. If, if, like, you've criminalized things to the extent of somebody stepping on a coin that has your likeness on it is a crime punishable with multiple years in prison, you're a bitch. I guess. Yeah. What what is it with authoritarians and being whiny bitches? They're so fucking fragile. Like anything you say about them, they'll just like they'll say anything about anyone else. But the second you say call them out on anything, they just like crawl into themselves and start whinging. Narcissism. I mean, it's a cl yeah. it's classic defining trait of narcissism. You know, they'll deal it out, but they do not take it. Any insult or any perceived slight to their ego is the end of the world. Um, fucking a, yep. Stepping up with your dirty feet on the face of the King. So how many, so is it like instant death? If I manage to like do some like Ryu flying kick to his face, <laughs> like fucking here's a dirty foot on your face. Fuck you. Maybe if you like whip it out and like pose, they'll all start worshiping you instead or something. I think that's, that's how it works. You yeah. Know? You know. How many, how many, is it, is it like instant execution if I dick slap the Thai King? <laughs> okay. It Just, might be worth it. I know, right? Dude, you're going down in history. <laughs> <laughs> You, fuck, you just made a fucking name for yourself for sure. You Dude, it'll be the best history book. You just turn a page and there's there's you Whack. just stark as just like cock smacking this this guy in a pimp suit. That'll be just like, I gotta, perfect. Dude, perfect. I could I could do you become king. Yeah, that's how, that's how the line of secession actually works in Thailand. Um I got dude, mine's pierced. Like mine could be they'll classify it as a deadly weapon or some shit because it's a fucking <laughs> You'll, you'll graduate from Prince Albert to King Albert, right? Easy. Hey, look at you. You uh, keep Carpe, you keep what you kill. <laughs> uh, pointing with your feet at his caravan is instant imprisonment. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, like that'd be great. That'd be great. If I could get like a running, like just a fucking hop too, like a run, just a running fucking sideways hop and fucking whack. <laughs> like, like a, like a flying one. See like a blur on the camera. Yeah. Blur. The only thing, uh, the only thing uh, that was stationary when the shot was taken would be the dick against his face. <laughs> Is it like like the real like the saliva coming out of the mouth, just like just absolutely just hammering him. It's good. But you need to do exercises first to make sure it's properly turgid, so you can really give him a good clout. Yeah. Gotta make it count. Oh my um, god. 
Let's see, this, this, this is the insightful theoretical analysis that you come to this channel for. Yeah. <laughs> Dick slapping right. the Thai king is a, a method what, to usurp. It's what we usurping. can unite over. It's what it's what anarchists and and filthy filthy social democrats like me can actually unite over is cock slapping. Cock slapping royalty. King. Yeah. Yep. Fucking you, you show me a monarch, I'll show you somebody who needs cock slapped. <laughs> Uh, I think ambivalent cat. You, you put a really interesting comment. You said the most recent, most published case of narcissism, Trump, which is true. He's been like so. He was so swarmed on by the media, and that only fed him. But but here's a great thing. Like here's the silver lining, right? They tried to overthrow the United States at the beginning of this year. Like literally, it was an attempt to overthrow the most powerful country in the world, and they failed so fucking badly. They were that incompetent. The, the reassuring thing to me is that the Republicans are that incompetent. They are that useless at what they do, that they fail every time. Everything they do, they seem to fail. The only victory they had was electing Trump, and the rest was downhill from there. Uh, you know what, Karina? I will, read you, uh, I will read your rant at this person, just so it doesn't go to waste. Um, hey, lame name. Any logic you bring to the table will be as dense as a used condom, mate. Don't even pretend like this chat isn't completely ahead of your bullshit. Want to bring some Germanic economics to the table? Want to diddle the made-up idea that monopolies would allow competition? Or how about we start where it actually deserves to begin? Capitalism is simply feudalism of the oligarchs using the wage hamster wheel in police state. And holding those businesses less accountable will only lead to mass human suffering. Jog off, cunt. There you go, Karina. Nice. Um, and I mean, let's face it, the fucking free market isn't free. That's a, that's an adorable concept, but anybody who thinks the free market is free hasn't read, oh, I don't know, Smith at the very least, um, let alone somebody who advocates for a truly un, like un, uh, uncapped market, like, um, Hayek or Von, uh, Von Mises, Right, like there's fucking free market, my ass. That's hilarious, and the concept of actual, actually existing laissez-faire capitalism is a nightmare. It's a nightmare, which we've covered at length. Because as of today, like I have approximately just short of ten hours of video on YouTube talking about Austrian economics, right-wing libertarian theory, and ANCAP bullshit. And literally dissecting piece by piece all of that bullshit. Like, just pedal it somewhere else. My chat has already been informed on this crap. Yeah, uh, it, it, that, that stuff is bullshit, man. I, I don't know. Even even as a filthy capitalist myself, or a very tentative one, not a, not a very strongly advocating one, but seriously, um, free market uh, economics and, and especially the right wing libertarian version seems just self contradictory. It's just fucking stupid. It's divorced from reality. As um, as yeah. Noam Chomsky said, anybody who tried to actually implement this system would see it implode within the first three minutes. Yep. About right. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a nightmare concept. Che, you're three hours into the playlist. Fuck yeah. Good on you, Che. Um Dude, it's it's a very it's very well done. It's a very well done document and it needs iterating. People need to know these things about these people. And the fact that like all of the advocates for like untapped capitalism uh, and just laissez-faire or uncapped uh, capitalism, uh, laissez-faire style economics, dude, they're all racist night psychopaths, right? Like they're all racist psychopaths. Um, fucking all the way up to the current, like Hoppe. Hop is a fucking uh, professor, professor emeritus of economics at UNLV. He's literally in my town, right? I can fucking walk over to UNLV and dick slap this idiot, right? Um, he fucking, he literally advocates for a fascist ethno state. He's an ANCAP. Murray Rothbard, fucking racist, anti-Semitic nut job, right libertarian slash creator of ANCAP. Right? Like, this is, they're all fucking just racist nut jobs. And I can't imagine why a system that allows you to own people would be attractive to people who see other people as their inferiors. Hmm. Might be something it, it, to that. It seems kind of bullshit, doesn't it? Like, I, I don't know. I'm just looking at, it like, 
if I'm thinking in a capitalist framework, like let's say let's say theoretically capitalism, not like the bullshit capitalism that actually happens, um, wouldn't it be the case that you'd want to like maximize upward social mobility and not trust corporations and businesses? Because because if you if you want the maximally productive market, um, you know surely you're going to understand game theoretically businesses will have a self interest in forming monopolies and suppressing competition. Oh, it's like that, that, yeah, no, it's an entire section of fucking one of uh, it's an entire section of like my playlist that is dedicated to you do realize how, how this works, right? Like, you know, they, they have to have an agreed upon basis for libertarian code of a uh, code of conduct or laws that they're going to work. That means they're going to have to coordinate and collaborate. And that means they're going to have incentive to be uh, uh, anti-competitive towards one another at at least some basic level. And anybody who comes in and attempts to undercut them, the, the cartel, because they will form a cartel. Right. It's, yep. you know, anybody who attempts yep. to undercut that is going to be met with violence or market manipulation. Yep. That's that's pretty much. I mean, there's real world examples of that. So in New Zealand, I'll give another example because, I mean, it's 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 local to me. We have two supermarket chains, Foodstuffs and Woolworths, uh, and they are a duopoly and they hike prices and they do all this other backroom shit they kind of cooperate with each other to make the the market as expensive and horrible as possible and they monopolize suppliers and bully them into selling for for smaller rates and stuff like that to me that's like if i'm a capitalist i actually want them to not have a duopoly i want them to be maximal amounts of competition so if you have any agent of intervention that would actually be better because it stops them being those corporate pigs that just make life shit for everybody else I think it makes perfect sense to get rid of that kind of shit, like to actually maximize competition. You cannot have laissez-faire capitalism. It just doesn't work. No. Yeah, it it really doesn't. And I mean, in the case of something like um, Karina, uh, yeah, in Karina, by the way, yeah, fucking whoever, whatever. Oh, it's Siparuski, whatever fucking idiot. Russia doesn't purge gays, you dumb bitch. Fucking Siparuski's in Karina's DMs, fucking just absolutely mauling. Um, but you know, never mind the fact that the Russian, uh, Russian paratroopers put on a, a homophobic performance of a gay man being crushed to death under a concrete block at a public event, right? Like f- fuck Russia. All right. Fuck Russia. Um, there like it, not only do you have the, um, the, the anti, like anti-competitive nature and the, the, I mean, let's face it under those systems, workhouses, all right, totally, totally viable. Um, Rothbard system has been shown to advocate for, um, actual like brood houses where you just breed the kids and then sell them. Like it, it's completely like ideologically consistent within, within his, uh, within his philosophical space. And yep. not only that, like they have logical inconsistencies at the base level because how do you define property? Because the entire libertarian capitalist modality is founded upon privatization of the commons, right? It's, it's about owning shit. And it's like, how do you define ownership? Well, it's for ANCAPs and right libertarians, it's transformational labor plus, prop, uh, plus good right? Like plus an item. So you take some land and you put transformational labor into it. And it's like, oh, you've just created like a fucking hornet's nest of problems here. So the only way you can own land is by transformationally, transformationally engaging with it. Does that mean that I can enclose your property with a fence? Because me post putting up fence posts and putting up fencing is transformational usage of land that you are not utilizing. And per your own rhetoric, the, uh, the owner of private property has absolute regard as to the rules, regulations, and laws of that space. So do I get to put up a fence around your property overnight and then charge you your life savings plus the house to cross that line. And if, if you won't pay me and you attempt to cross that fence, you're violating my inherent property light, rights and I can then enact violence against you. Uh, but the invisible hand will solve all that, obviously. Okay. Invisible hand. Any yeah. problems? It's invisible hand. Okay. Yeah. Which, which we goes into in that fucking series as well, that the invisible hand has always been the state. 
sexual frustration, invisible hand. I yeah. Mean, just the, 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 the invisible hand of the market is the state, actually. That's, that's who created capitalism, is the state. Yeah. There is no oh, capitalism absolutely. without the state. And yeah. so, like, minarchist fucking wannabe and cap bullshit morons that are like, down with the state, up with capitalism. It's like, yeah, okay, so, one, your bullshit requires the state to function. Two, um, how are you going to enforce these property rights? Private defense contractors. Okay, so you just privatized the police, right? All right, cool. Um, how are you going to adjudicate any of these things? Right, private, uh, pri- private adjudicators. Right, so you've just you you've just privatized the the court system too. Right, yeah, okay. So how are you going to ensure that anybody it actually is liable for any of this? Private insurance to go with the private contracts. Okay, so this is just the state with extra steps. You've you've recreated the military, the police force, the ju- uh, the justice system, and uh, the the like legal structure, right? Like you've literally recreated the state, just with extra steps. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, you were talking about the history of policing before, especially in the United States, and how it had ties to the Ku Klux Klan and slave uh, slave chases and things like slave that, patrols. which it did. Yeah, um, and still kind of does in some ways, um, but. M- my uh, thought on that was I actually read up on the uh, origins of it in Britain and in, in England. Yes. Um, and uh, actually, it's interesting because what they did originally is that laws were enforced by just people in the community. They were just allowed to enforce laws. They'd all do it together. Mm-hmm. And then like one person who was like deputized or whatever would just enact it and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually it became that the, the government was putting up bounties on criminals and people would go become private private companies formed around chasing down these bounties. And the big problem was that they'd actually stage um, they'd actually collaborate or collude yeah. with the people actually breaking the law or that extort the people breaking the law and the people complaining about breaking the law to make the maximum amount of profit. So so putting a profit motive behind things like that is is Again, to me, it comes down to game theory. Yeah. You've got to consider the game theory. What is the most adaptive strategy for an agent working in that system? Well, it's to make the most money because it's privatized, which is great in some situations, but it definitely ain't with policing, that's for sure. OG Wild West corruption, for sure. And there's a classic example of Britain like getting in, involved in that is the, the Indian snake catching. Right. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that did that actually happen? Or yeah, was it actually. Ha- no, it actually happened. Um, not yeah. to the extent that a lot of people think it did, but it actually did happen. Um, and for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, basically India put a bounty on catching cobras and venomous snakes in India, and they started. Pay- they paid. They paid. So people started breeding them. <laughs> And they just breed the snakes and turn them in, and eventually the British caught wind. And so they ended the program. So the breeders just released the snakes. <laughs> Fucking dumb. Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's such a. It's an also an object lesson in like shitty, shitty government policy. Um, it reminds me of like in the, in the United States. Don't you have something called like food stamps or something like that? That that bizarre. So like you have what? What are they? How do they work? You get like a stamp that that you can only buy certain supermarket items for or something. Okay, so one, they're generally called SNAP these days or something else, um, but it isn't actually a stamp these days. It's a it's a debit card. It's like a credit card of sorts, right? Um, but there is there it is a very specific list of things you can and cannot purchase with food assistance, um, up to and including depending on the state. Right. It's usually controlled by states. So if you live in a state that doesn't hate poor people, then you probably have a pretty decent deal. If you live in a state that hates poor people, which is most of the U.S. states, to be perfectly honest, there are rules up to and including no heated food. That's a real rule. So if you go to like a a corner store and there's a sandwich or like a hot dog or something, and, or you know a hamburger you can't buy that it will not that's really fucking stupid oh yeah um holy shit so so they don't they don't account for things like food deserts I think this is just jumping straight into my head i haven't even researched this but i can already see the problems with it why don't you just give them cash 
Like, isn't that isn't that about isn't be, that what the United States want, is supposed to be what, about? Is well, about freedom? No, because like, because there's freedom. people like lame name here who goes so they can buy booze and drugs. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, there might be a good point to bring out of Lame's rhetoric here. So, like, like think of it this way: your value of your food stamp card is only going to be equivalent value to the black market that's around trading food stamp cards for other stuff that can be actual actually paid for other things. So there is a perverse incentive sitting in there, but I don't think it's a perverse incentive Lame is necessarily wanting to to point out. Um, but that's just so stupid. Like, why don't you just give them money and trust them to make good decisions? And if they're not making good decisions, find out what decisions those are and put programs into place to help them out with them. Communist. That seems like a you fucking communist. Oh, okay. That makes me a commie. Yes. Makes sense. Help, makes sense. Helping, helping poor people is communism. Okay. Yeah. New Zealand's got a pretty strong welfare state like that. Like we're just a liberal democracy. We're not like a revolutionary anything, but that's, it's just common sense to us. Like this is what's so weird about it. It's like, why do, why are there so many convolutions in your system that seem to actively hurt the causes that you're paying money for? It's so weird. Oh, really? Uh, interesting. Um, yeah. Um, Yeah, no, it's a matter of TOS lame. Um, also, until COVID increases was planned around three meals, uh, three meals a day, and you got something like twelve a dollar twenty five cents per meal per day worth of snap. Um, that's, that's fucked up. Yeah, no, it's 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 absolutely living. I gotta tell you, like. It would do a number on this country, but legitimately, I would love for this country to balkanize. Balkanize? Oh. What, 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 sorry, uh, it's Friday night. My brain's not uh, the, working. The, right. the, what does the, Balkans, the Balkans um, in Europe, basically a bunch of nation states that uh, that have were one and then split up, and it basically it's come to be shorthand for a country or a nation state that can't hold their shit together anymore and breaks up in splinters into a very uh, to a group of subsequent countries. Oh yeah, as, um, as uh, interesting as that would be, I'd actually be pretty scared of that because oh, it's a nightmare. China would have free reign in the Pacific, and it, it would scare the shit out. It's of a, it's a nightmare, but I'm I'm sorry, like. I'm sick of living in the same country as people like fucking lame name here, right? Who just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you fucking poor piece of shit. Who, why should we help you with a handout? You're just going to spend it on booze and drugs anyway. Which, by the way, alcohol's a fucking drug. Can we just cross? Oh, yeah. Jesus goddamn Christ. That fucking uh, drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol. You mean drugs? You fucking ignorant pricks. Um... They're just, I live in a country full of like self-righteous, angry fucking assholes who refuse to accept that we actually do live in a society and that like communalist practices actually benefit us all, right? Like you, go ahead. Could it be the case that I, I look again, this is looking from outwards in, so I could be ignorant on a lot of things, but it looks to me like there's a lot of things in your political system that are standing in the way of being an actually representative government. Is it the case maybe that there's a, a big majority of people in the states who genuinely want these sensible practices, perhaps not as radically as obviously, you know, an anarchist state or anything like or anarchist lack of state, I should say. But, you know, um, think sensible reforms, but they're blocked by things like gerrymandering, which is often controlled by Republicans, um, or the Electoral College, which strongly favors Republicans in smaller states. It seems to me like the popular vote has almost always, in modern times, gone the way of the Democratic Party. And while we don't, I know you guys aren't fans of the Democrats, and I'm not a huge fan either, they're still too far right wing for me. At least they're better than the fucking Republicans, for the most part. Uh, <laughs> So it's like, to me, it's like, is it, is it really that the people in the United States are all dickheads or is it that the, the dickheads are the ones who have a disproportionate amount of power? Yes, but with a proviso. The only reason they have that disproportionate power is because of what I would call the Martin Luther King letter from a Birmingham jail rule where he, that? he basically said, stated in this letter that 
my increasingly my problem is not with the clan member but with the white moderate who lets the clan member do what the clan member does through inaction right like that's increasingly my issue as well yeah the republicans are out there gerrymandering the shit out of this thing yeah the republic the conservatives are fucking stacking the courts yeah the fucking evangelicals are exerting uh, you know undue pressure from a tax-free status right like yeah yes 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 and yes but you motherfuckers over there are just sitting there letting it happen Right. Like that's at a certain point, like where does where do you become complicit in the crime? Right. A bit like a a bit like the residents of of, of the UK or England uh, using sugar that was grown on slave plantations. They go, well, I'm not a bad person. Where else am I going to get my sugar from? But, you know, they buy it anyway. And, you know, that didn't help. That didn't do anything to abolish the, the Atlantic slave trade. So. You know, you think, well, does that make them culpable? And I'd say, well, in an approximate sense, yes. I mean, it would have yeah. helped if they all boycotted it. The question is, how do you get people to get off their asses and do it? Um, uh, which is brings us back to my point of just balkanization, right? Like, at, at a certain point, like, look, how, how how is the person in California who believes in, like, a social welfare state or fucking, who, screw California, let's take Vermont, right, my home state, right? Strong, like, anarchist, tons of anarchists in Vermont, strong, like, lack of gun laws, right, but low crime rates across the board, violence, sexual, or otherwise, liberal policies, as we would classically define liberal, social welfare, safety nets, uh, is sort of an egalitarian communalist attitude spread across the st- uh, across the state right how the fuck are they going to ever get along with texas that's like literally like screw the pores fuck the women who is queers fucking i mean the reason that we have the 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 supreme court struck down sodomy laws in the us was because of texas Texas fucking, the long story short, like this is how Doug Stanhope tells the story basically, but a couple of butt fuckers were butt fucking and one of the other butt fuckers who used to be butt fucking one of the butt fuckers uh, got jealous that he wasn't the one doing the butt fucking anymore. And so he called the cops and reported a breaking and entering and you know, there kind of was. Um, and the cops, ki- uh, the fucking pig cops kick in the door and see, uh, and see that there's not a burglary going on, but some butt fucking. And they arrest the two butt fuckers under sodomy laws. And then it's upheld at the appeals court level in where else? Texas, right? Texas, right. the state that in my lifetime has had incidences of black people being drugged, chained to a truck and drugged down the road, straight up modern day lynching shit, right? That Texas, right? How, how do I square this? Where, in what world does the state that believes it's okay to lynch black people and throw gay people in jail and fucking remove the bodily autonomy of women get along with the state that goes, yeah, how about instead of doing all of that, we educate people, we take care of people, we institute a welfare state, and we let, like, I don't know, trans and gay people, like, do whatever they want to do as That's- far as living their life? Yep. Uh, it's, it's how, do you, how, do you even, how do you even approach something like that? Well, I, I will say at least... At least there's a small point of hope that even in those, like I would say maybe the uh, United States is almost like two countries, the American South and then the rest of it. Um, and I would say even in the American South, attitudes have been changing over time. They're just getting dragged, kicking and screaming by the rest. Um, so they're always X number of decades behind, but at least they're still moving forward gradually with hiccups along the way. Uh, you know, the graph is not straight upwards, but it seems to be a, a rough graph that eventually trends upwards it that's Uh, the problem is is it's trending downwards now because of like a lot of the a lot of what they've been doing the manipulations took time to do like the stacking of the federal court system the stacking of the supreme court the gerrymandering of the the uh, voting uh, the electoral maps that all took time but there's a tipping point right like there is a tipping point to that and it Mm. seems we might be approaching it and I yeah. uh, personally, I think the 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 um, 
the carry and call on this one, the, the, the marker, the signpost on the road is going to be what this Supreme Court's decision on Roe v. Wade is. If, yeah, that's worrying. <laughs> if they roll back Roe v. Wade protections, then as far as I'm concerned, yeah, there's your, there's your, there's your exit sign on the highway. It's right there. We just passed it. That yeah, way. yeah. Especially, I, I don't understand why you guys have a Supreme Court that's so politicized and then it's for life. That seems really fucked up. <laughs> it's just like it's it's both a political appointment and it's politics that will last for decades, yeah. depending on how old the judge is. And by the way, I think somebody called me a thought. Somebody told me to shut the fuck up. Thought. They're using that like it's an insult. Who cares? I'm like, did somebody like, just call me? You're calling me, you're, you're saying I'm fucking hot as shit, basically. That's like, uh, all right, all right. It got, it got pulled by a uh, Automon. I was like, no, allow, allow. <laughs> you're sexy. You shouldn't have an opinion. <laughs> um. It's I, I just, I, I find there's so many fucking non sequiturs, especially in the political space where people will just put out some random bullshit and it has nothing to do with the argument the person's making. Oh. It happens from, it happens everywhere. Uh, but, Par- but like, apparently they call me a hoe too. <laughs> yeah. But like, like you can think about it. Like if I was, if I was a guy chain smoking like 40 packs a day and I was telling you dead in the face, smoking will give you cancer. I'd still be right, even if I was the biggest hypocrite on the fucking planet. So what the hell are personal attacks supposed to prove in any case? I guess it's just because it makes them feel good, or I don't know. Oh, J. Rios Nunez. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the follow. Um, <laughs> Lucian fucking go for it. If they overturn Roe v. Wade, think about all the children of color that won't be murdered, and Lucian just comes in, oh, please, like, you guys give a shit about pe- people of color. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Uh, it's a there's a there's 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 I find there's like levels of not caring about people with a certain skin color. There's the Republican one where it's just they just don't give a fuck unless they're using you for something. Mm-hmm. Then they just don't give a fuck. They just they want to actively see you dead, um, or at least back in chattel slavery. Um, but then there's a the Democrat level, which is basically like okay. Let's pantomime caring about people, uh, caring about black people. And also, let's pretend that the only plight of black people is black people in the United States. Let's never take a global perspective. Sub-Saharan Africa, what's that? Lots of people dying of COVID in Sub-Saharan Africa? Economic destitution? Lack of education? Who gives a fuck? They're not in our country. That's... And they have dark skin, so why should we fucking care? Let's go bomb them some more. That... Who? That, well, I mean, we don't, we're not big into the bombing Africa so much these days as we're more into the, like, you know, jockeying for position on natural resources. Uh, not true. <laughs> we like to... We, oh, sorry, sorry. We, we like Bombing's to, for brown people. Yes, yes. I was, Salvation's for black people. Yes. I'm sorry, I got it completely wrong. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's a, com- it's a common mistake about the American culture. Right. We, we, we prefer, we prefer to, although at home we do bomb um, black people from time to time. See the move bombing in Philadelphia where we literally did drop a fucking block of explosives from a state police helicopter onto a headquarters of an organization and blew up an entire fucking block of houses. You, you can't make that shit up. I was actually reading up the other day on, on some of the initiatives like pre, pre-Civil pre War, like during the antebellum period, where there was a society, I can't remember the exact name of it, but they advocated deportation of black people to Africa. Yep. Um, and of course, it was wildly unpopular. Um, even Abe Lincoln advocated it for a brief period, I believe, before he changed his mind because he was a reasonable person. Um, re- well, in most ways. Um Jesus Christ, look there's, at that. There's That's the extent, crazy. so you can see the full, like, the full area, but the color, you know, let's really see, but that's the full extent of what was done. Dude, look, at, look up Mississippi in Africa, I think it's called. They actually had places named after places in the States, and they put them in Africa. It was like this really fucked up, weird, re- like, it was almost like the colonialists were like, oh, colonialism, maybe it's bad. Why don't we go and colonize somewhere else to solve colonialism it's the most bizarre thing i've read interesting it's a book yeah by alan huffman hang on let me check it um prospect hill plantation mississippi in africa i'll see if i can find the the actual source for you here we go mississippi in africa was a colony on the pepper coast founded in the 1830s there you go that's uh, from wiki um 
it's just they 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 had a whole bunch of little settlements where they just like called them American place names and then brought people over there. So it was like the it was like the Atlantic slave trade just reversed, but the same thing. Okay, so this literally is Liberia. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking the Liberian legacy is a hell of a joke. Um, Liberia's. Let's see. All right. Fast. Yeah. No, it's dude. And now we're exporting our stupid evangelical shit to Africa, right? Like, oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. that's where all this anti-gay rhetoric in Africa is coming from. It's literally traceable to a singular Baptist minister, a single Baptist pastor from the deep South who went over there like three decades ago, ago now and started spreading this shit. And now the missionary sense have reiterated and blah, 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 blah. But like the reason Africa is so rabidly anti-homosexual right now is because of Southern evangelicals from the U.S. That's, that's the sad part is the evangelicals have so much influence because they're, they're on the coattails of like the most powerful economic nation that's ever existed. So they can just go everywhere, do whatever the fuck they want and exert undue influence. Um, but I just, I find it super sad because like sub-Saharan Africa is just such a huge place of potential and nobody seems to give a fuck about them. Eh? Nobody seems to want to help them out and, you know, not, not like be saviors or some shit, but you know what I mean? Like stop, get your boot heel off their neck and actually just treat them as equals and see what happens. Because I reckon, I reckon uh, the, the potential for that would just be huge. Um, Penn, Penn State. Um, Nova, it's Penn State. Just, just if you were wondering. Nova said, I believe an Ivy League school got the skull of one of the victims of that police raid, the move bombing. Uh, it's sickening. Yeah, that's, that's Penn State that has the skull. <laughs> It's so fucking weird, man. It's crazy. Like New, New Zealand's got its own history of of oppression of, of the Māori who are uh, who were the native people, but um, uh, there were murders and stuff like that, but none so modern and none so blatant. Like, dude, like we didn't bomb a city fucking block. Like, it's just it's insane. We actually have um, here. Let me just not only um. Let's see if I can find the exact photo. There it is. Thank you. We have the exact moment they tossed the explosive out the helicopter door. It's like the most ratchet fucking out the wops thing. I should say out in the boonies thing I've ever seen. Like that's like that's like fucking I can imagine it's like some fucking hillbilly with like the, the wheat stalk hanging out his mouth, like, you know, just drop like i just that's just this so fucking ratchet man i can't believe it do you guys use the word ratchet it, it's it's known here but it's not a common use but we know it yeah, yeah. um fucking usually it comes born of like hip-hop and i think atlanta like crunk territory uh like they would say like a ratchet skank but ah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. about right yeah um and um the fun fact about the uh, the move bombing was that when they were doing the after action report, they stopped counting at 10,000 rounds of ammunition fired by the Philadelphia Police Department. Um, yeah, they just stopped counting. They're like, it's, it's over. It's like military engagement. It was. It legitimately was. Um, yeah, they stopped counting at a 10,000. They're like, it's over 10,000. We don't, we're not going to bother counting past that. Um, and so, yeah, they, they dropped a C4, a C4 slash Tyvex, I think, um, bomb, a TR2 slash Tyvex slash C4, something like that. Um, it was a composite explosive provided by the FBI to the state police and the Philadelphia police department. So the federal government was like, here's the explosives boys. Yeah. It's, it, it just blows my mind, man. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, we, we have a nice, we have a nice storied history of, um, you know, but you can't, you can't make that shit up. Like, you know, all the Hollywood writers and stuff just lack the creativity to make things like that up. Like, it's just, it's like a, a, a comedy, like a joke. You, you just like, it's so stupid that you just couldn't imagine it. And then it actually did happen. Oh, so, oh okay. Um, who provided me the James bird link? Oh, it was cu uh, cupcake. Um, the, well, it did. Oh, so you were tagging Deirdre with that one. Yeah. Um, James Bird Jr. was the guy, um, 
murdered by three white supremacists in Jasper, Texas, in, wait for it, the long ago era of 1998. Sean Barry Lawrence Brewer and John King dragged him for three miles behind a pickup truck along an asphalt road. He remained conscious for most of the ordeal. He was killed halfway through when his body hit the edge of a culvert, severing his right arm and head. His murderers then drove on for another one and a half miles before dumping his torso in front of a black church. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. They were the first, uh, Brewer and King were the first white men to ever, ever to be sentenced to death for killing a black person in the history of modern Texas. That is like the most dull silver lining I've ever heard of. Yes. Um, when was this exactly? Um, 1998. <clears throat> I, w I was worried this story was going to be like the first time in 2009. I mean, and like it's put that in a perspective. Like Nirvana was a fucking old band at that point. Yeah, it's twenty three years ago. <laughs> That's insane, right? There's there's Zoomers older than when this happened. Crazy. What? Yeah. No, there is millennial. Um, so you know that. The uh, the fucking Emmett Till accusing bitch is still alive. She is. The, the Emmett Till accusing bitch is still alive. <laughs> um, that, is, that is a hell of a fucking, I don't know if you know the Emmett Till story as a New Zealander, but it's, it's, Till, it rings a bell. He was um, a, he was a 14 year old, um, black kid who was literally lynched in Mississippi. Um, oh yeah. I did read about this a while ago. I don't remember yeah. the details of it though. His, his mom, badass bitch that she was. Um, posed with his with the with his body for a photo, so people could see what they did to her boy. Um, that is that is that, is, that requires some insane fortitude. That's crazy. No, she's 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 always been like she's she's gangster, like she is straight up like yeah she is tougher than all of us combined. Um, yeah, the the fucking uh, the Emmett Till accusing bitch is still alive. She accused him. Uh, she didn't look. The fact of the matter is, is uh, she probably she probably got un she probably looked at him and was turned on by him. And daddy caught her with a fucking sideways glance. But she straight up said that he had you know come on to her and he had accosted her, and so the lynch lynching party did what they do in 1950s Mississippi. They beat this 14 year old boy absolutely brutally from head to toe. And then they fucking lynched him. Oh, um, and you know, she lied and we know it. And so Carolyn Bryant is her name. <laughs> and Everyone should remember the name Carolyn Bryant until the end of time as the Emmett Till accusing bitch who, because she couldn't handle her fucking whatever, right? Like, yeah, fucking. <clears throat> God, she I couldn't handle the couldn't handle the pressure of, of feeling a kind of uh, secondhand shame from other people who, who are, total absolute fucking cunts can i can i say that on stream you just can fucking yeah cunt. yeah absolutely okay. yeah i just i just i just have only contempt for people like that just absolute fucking reprehensible knuckle dragging mouth breathers yeah oh no yeah viva's right she fucking that that bitch had a comfortable life she even told people she lied it's uh, terrible i mean all of those people should have been held accountable for that Fucking, are you really attempting to conflate Emmett Till and fucking Kyle Rittenhouse? Dude, I mean, like, you can talk about Rittenhouse all day, but that's nothing like it. There wasn't a an organized lynching attempt. I mean, even if you're convinced that the people approaching Kyle Rittenhouse were there to disarm his gun and try and kill him, that still wasn't a lynching. It wasn't to do with the color of his skin. It wasn't to do with his cultural background. I mean, even I know and, that, and I didn't even follow the thing. You're literally. I really don't want to get into why Kyle Rittenhouse 
shouldn't have fucking been there. But no, at this point, I like the precedent the judge has set. Yeah. Um, you can now completely cross borders of, you know, state lines and fully armed because you're protecting your community. And your community can be anyone that you feel a connection to. And defending their property, even unasked by the owners of said property. I, well, see, here's, here's my favorite, right? So this happened like right after. This is the precedent. This is what the precedent looks like. This is the new Black Panthers in front of a fucking courthouse right after the Rittenhouse verdict, right? Like this is, this is it. This is what it looks like. I am a hundred percent on board with the Rittenhouse verdict. I think it is the best thing to happen. I think when fucking Antifa shows up into your, it, it shows up in your town protesting the next time a cop extrajudicially assassinates a person of color and they show up armed with AR15s, I want you to remember Kyle Rittenhouse. Thanks Kyle. That's because that's that's the precedent that has been set. Somebody who does not live in that community can come into that community and defend it with a fucking AR-15 because reasons. I'm asked by the owner of said property specifically as well. Like, dude, I it's a be that the part of the problem is with the laws in place rather than, I mean, look, I'm not defending Rittenhouse at all. He, as you said, he shouldn't have been there and he's like a little, a sh little sh white supremacist shit bag. Most likely. Um, I think, I think, um, yeah, exactly. Like, like surely there's something, something wrong there with the way the laws are functioning that lets like, it seems to me like the court trial actually followed the law but whether the law is justified or not seems to be an open question. It seems really weird that you could get a situation like that where a guy just guns down two people and, and it comes, as you said, crosses the border, comes there with a gun. Like, how is a 17-year-old getting his hand on the gun and how is that okay when he's wielding it against people? All right. So I mean, let's... It let's... really comes down to two things. Um, the judge, while did everything in his legal rights to because i would like to make a note that judge never crossed a line in his power he just showed blatant favoritism at every corner and held an illicit bias from the get-go but that doesn't matter also i'd like to still push against the uh oh he got the room to stand and clap for the defense's council it's like literally he was the only dude in the room on remembrance day that had any service like it was just going to happen i i mean we have video one we have a video of uh kyle rittenhouse um punching oh punching a fucking chick in high school right he's not he's not fucking uh, uh against crossing a those fight lines between two sisters he decides to break up by beating the shit out of the i believe younger one um also we have a video of him watching um riot footage and saying bruh i wish i had my fucking ar i'd start shooting rounds at him Right. Like, so we, you, you know, it, this is, it's a definition of a bad shoot, but I don't really care about any of that because it sets a wonderful precedent. It sends a wonderful precedent. And I look at Brazil. What's up, Esky? Um, fucking, um, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Thanks, Kyle. I, I, you know, next time that you see some fucking armed Black Panthers in the street, like this sort of shit fucking marching down you're like what the fuck is going on kyle thank kyle um which by the way thank kyle sounds really close to sig heil just you know as an aside um anti-nazi anti-nazi whistle where you almost say sig heil just to say that i fucking hate nazis um so, hey, that's cute. Thanks for the sub. Fucking hope. I hope. I mean, it's fucking Brazil. Brazil's crazy as shit anyway, but I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Fuck you. If you happen to know somebody who can get them to knock the, the beef, uh, the cattle industry to like knock that, uh, knock that shit off with the indigenous tribes and like, you know, 
encroaching on uh, uncontacted tribe land. That'd be great, um, but there's probably not anything you can do about that, Eski. But, you know, just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> um, if the tribes start a war, though, you know what side to choose? Um, yes, yeah, exactly. Um, was it, um, was that recently? It seems recent The like, this is being brought up, but either way, we'll see, we'll see who's knowledge fucking pop quiz motherfuckers. Who is this? Oh shit. He was, uh, oh, I know the face. Don't know the name. Sorry. Well, he was well, a uh, lawyer or something. I can't remember. He's having a I'm, I'm going to get it wrong. I want to steal this picture. Tom Brown. There it is. Yep. But I have no Two, idea. Three. Fucking. Okay. Nova was right on the fucking beat. Carpe was quick, quick behind. Deirdre was not that much further behind. Yeah. This is, this is John Brown. Um, this is, um, one of the leaders in the, uh, American abolitionist movement. Um, and oh, yeah. he, he took action and he, he was executed for it. Um, he went in peacefully. Um, <laughs> the mom of lame name here, he wishes. Um, he went in peacefully. He attempted to expropriate slaves and, um, it had occurred a couple of times fine. And, but it led to a series of, well, shall we say riots, um, protests, uh, violent, violent, uh, broke out and some people died <laughs> and he ended up being tried for crimes against the union and, um, fucking property damage, I believe, because like a couple of the slaves died as well. So it was property damage crimes thrown at him as well. It was fucked beyond belief. Um, um, and so he was, he was executed, um, for fomenting and engaging in a violent uprising against slavery. That's at the end of the day, that's what happened is he, he tried peaceful means for decades. He tried peaceful means like legitimately for decades. He tried peaceful means. But he eventually decided that violence was necessary. And so he went in with force. Um, and, well, the rest is just sort of history at this point. Um, what an absolute Chad. Awesome. Yep. Uh, it's just Kez. I don't remember if I've uh, been in since the name change. No, you have not, Kez. Fucking, and I, I do not approve. I do not approve. I was not consulted. I was not consulted. Um, thank you for the resub, Let's though. Let's see that. Okay. Um, John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave, but his soul goes marching on. The stars above in heaven are looking kindly down on the grave of old John Brown. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His soul goes marching on. Um, <laughs> King Lexi bad. Fair enough. It'll, dude, well, at least I used to call you Kezi, and I'm the only one that could get away with it, apparently. So at least now this one is an, is an E sound at the end. So I can, I can run with Lexi. Um, so what's up, Lexi? But don't be surprised if I fuck up and call you Kez for a while. Uh, it's just the way it goes. Uh, but yeah. Oh, and a fucking, dude, weirdest fucking story. Um, a plumber was working on uh, Joel Osteen. Uh, so, uh, Chew Toy, do you know who Joel Osteen is? Again, name rings a bell, but I wouldn't be able to tell you who he's, he was. He's no. the pastor of the mega church. He's the dude that has like millions and millions of dollars because he preaches Is he the guy with a creepy monster face? Uh, no, no, different guy. We laugh at Joe Biden. Ha ha. Oh man. Jesus, that that was that was that was. Disturbing. Here's here's oh, here's Joel Osteen. I'll like, oh, know him when I see him. Oh, this guy. Yeah, yeah, I know him. Yep. Okay. So, um, he has a very punchable face. Yeah, that man has skeletons in his closet. 
that have skeletons in their closet. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, Well, Plummer was working on uh, his fucking Lakewood church, which, okay, so... Um, we'll, we'll, while we're doing it, cause this is super Jesus-y, right? Like this is, you know, um, this is definitely what Jesus had in mind. Here's the Lakewood church. Um, yeah, like that's, that's the Lakewood church. It's massive. Um, so lucky arena. what the fuck? Yes. Um, Lakewood cult center. Basically. Um, Why the fuck you take the ice away from the fucking kids there, bud? God damn it. <laughs> so so that's the Lakewood Church. A plumber was working that's in girl. the church, and he pulled a wall, right? He pulled a section of wall to work on the piping. And what does he find? $600,000 in mo- in cash. In cash, like oh. like Breaking Bad style in the fucking walls. In, in the fucking wall. And Osteen, <laughs> of course, goes, oh, uh, well, the, the, the church's official response was that that must have, that's some cash that went missing after a burglary years ago. Oh, oh, well, that's a uh, well, very, very uh, considerate burglar to leave it in the <laughs> fucking wall. Why was it in the walls? What the fuck? Oh, that's probably an actual like rainy day. Got to get it's out. A, it's um, a fucking to go fuck fund. Yeah, it's a fucking to go fund. It's for bugging out. Yeah. Like it's a to go. It's, it's to go money. It's, it's like Uncle Scrooge levels of hoarding. You know, like like do they, do they have like a room with like a pile of coins that they try and dive into or like that's dude that's that's some like no that's that's um, fraud. that's more a sign of guilt like the only people who have bug out bags are people who know they're breaking the lot any time at every corner and are expecting the police to be knocking there were okay so the cash was in 500 envelopes it was it was i was was like picturing actually stacked up in the wall like actual cash like bundles yeah no it was it was 500 individual uh, envelopes filled with cash to to the tune of six hundred thousand dollars yeah it's like that. I say, it's so weird that cult mindset. It's like it's it does, it's kind of irrelevant what the truth of it is because it's it's very obvious that like you know if someone's a creator of the universe, why why do people think the creator of the universe gives a shit about money or about wh- who's bumming who or doing whatever the fuck they're doing in their bed sheets? Why does a creator of the universe care about any of that shit? Uh, it doesn't. It makes no sense at all. But you know, I guess I guess when it gets to that level, it's not even religion anymore. It's just well, it's, fucked up. It's- any any commandment that controls your everyday life is like one step closer to having a brainwashed flock. It's it's really kind of like that level of shit. Um, where is it? There it is. Um, fucking here's. Um, there has to be a rule for everything in their mind. There it is. Religion has convinced people that there's an invisible man living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of the day. And the invisible man has a list of 10 specific things he doesn't want you to do. And if you do any of these things, he will send you to a special place of burning and fire and smoke and torture and anguish for you to live forever and suffer and suffer and burn and scream until the end of time. But he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And he needs money. It's uh, George Carlin, right? It is George Carlin. Beautiful, beautiful man. Um, oh, man, imagine the shit he'd be saying now with all the pandemic and dude. He died. He died. He died on the right. He died on the right. Right around the correct time, dude. He would have stroked out on stage if Trump were president, right? Oh like that. God. He as a New Yorker, like right. He knew who the fuck Trump was. Like he he as a New Yorker, Carlin would have stroked out on stage. We'd have just seen him get up for a performance after uh, f- fucking Trump won and be like, uh, and dead, right? Like, he just fucking burst a blood vessel. He tapped oh. at the right time. He was. He, maybe he knew. Maybe he had, a, had his sense, and he was just like, nah, fuck it, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Creator of the universe got to be compensated for the, all that universe-creating labor, after all. <laughs> Fucking GL, he God exists and he's a capitalist. <laughs> God exists and he fucking loves hydrogen, man. Hydrogen just, just, it's fucking everywhere. God loves hydrogen. 
that's what I was say when people are arguing that like you know um, the universe looks like it was created I'm like what with hydrogen in mind that's all there is it's like like it's the most common element why is that not the focus of the creator why aren't we just a byproduct here's you know, what if we're the accidental byproduct of all that well it's I it was it's a fucking, maybe Rogan actually the the human oh, beings I... um human beings are a, a a strategy by the earth to create plastic yeah. We're a complex multicellular organism designed to create plastic. Oh no, but Kai, that would be that would that would mean uh, there's a purpose. Yeah, that that would go in the direct mean of like the scientifically minded, and you would be chewed out for hours. Oh, um, there's there's a difference between function and purpose. Yeah. So here's so, here's a fun one. The, sorry. Um, Utah. It's so difficult to get welfare in Utah. Because the uh, Church of Latter Day Saints, um, Mormons, um, the Mormons have so intertwined the welfare system in Utah with the church that individual bishops in the church get to decide oftentimes who receives assistance from the state. So they put pressure on the poor in Utah to join the church in order to get welfare assistance from the state. Uh, just it's so, so morally pure, just real, real leaders in the field of ethics. Just absolutely in. Oh yeah, Utah's a theocracy, hundred percent, Jay, hundred percent. Um, yeah, no, Utah, Utah values. It's. Are religion. we done with him? We're done with him, right? We can just get rid of him. Who are we talking? Oh, okay, lame. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, no, he's getting old. He's just kind of d devolving. You know, Holy I like I like the ones shit. that kind of. No, he was. Go ahead. I like the ones who are kind of like, you can tell they have a mask on, but they're trying to talk around it. And I like the kind of game that they play. It's kind of interesting seeing how they do it. Um, but, but when it comes off, it's just boring because it's always the same shit. You know, it always dresses up differently, but it's the same fucking pantomime every single time. Every time they're always the same person at the base. They're a sewer into which all of the conspiracy theories and hate have just gathered into one person. That's usually what, what I find happens. Yeah, if you stay on that conspiracy theory pipeline, um, fucking you basically just end up at Jews control the world and slaves had it better, uh, blacks had it better under slavery. Like that's, um, I've seen it Lucian, happen. Sorry, my, my nerd, my nerd sense is kicking in here, Lucian. Um, panspermia is is a hypothesis, but it's unlikely. Um, if it has happened, um, usually they they often do find organic molecules in space. They've even detected them in other galaxies. But there's actually more to it. Like you need autocatalytic processes and stuff to to ascertain that it's actually life. But the building blocks of life, sure, yeah, they have found that. I'd just be very careful with sensational news like that because oftentimes the because because they've got the term organic and stuff in it, then you probably are going to see journalists latch onto that and pretend like it's bigger news than it is. Sorry, Viva, my puppy. No, why well, have to euthanize him? Viva, like, look, v is it Lucian or Lucian, because yeah. I cannot find an official denominator that actually separates the two. I, it's just pronunciation. Viva, I mean, if you want to petition chat to bring back your fucking puppy from the dead, I mean, we could resurrect it, but. What, Lane? Yeah. I feel you I might not get a whole lot of support on that one, Viva. Letting that horse keep being beat. Um. So, get a better Always. get a better puppy, Viva. <laughs> Every conspiracy theory ends at the Jews. Yeah, I don't know why. Why is that? Why are people obsessed with with the Jews? Here's the here's the weird fucking part. All those conspiracy theorists how, saying how bad and, and inferior Jews are, and yet every conspiracy theory shows how awesome they are. If those conspiracy theories are true, if half of them are true, Jews are like the most competent, incredible, <laughs> intelligent, brilliant people Lucian. ever to exist it's it lucian uh it's lucian um lucian oh okay. um so uh <laughs> zippy said he's in a better place in a farm upstate uh <laughs> i'll take it um god the puppy heaven fucking yeah 
there's even why are why are the Jews always persecuted and when did it start? <laughs> it actually it goes back a long time. It it goes back a very long time. Um, Wasn't it originally because there was a biblical thing against usury and uh, and and usury was counted as like you know giving loans and stuff with interest and things like that? And of course, because the Jews didn't have to follow that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, instruction then people got resentful of them because they'd actually make money because it was a smart way to make money their religion did not forbid them from collecting wealth in specific ways that at the time christianity so yes they actually weren't beholden to certain religious laws of the land and then they condemned them for doing what they forced them into doing (laughs) just I just, Stupid. oh God. Uh, yeah, I believe it wasn't until a strong enough uh, banking clan started somewhere up near Italy was it that they were able to like start funding the smaller ones and keep them out from being just butchered. Uh, Che typed it all out. Fuck it. <laughs> che was typing it all out too. <laughs> Christ- Thank you, Che. Christians were banned from lending with interest. So royalty employed Jewish people to collect money for the royalty. And then the royalty got everyone to blame Jewish people for the money the royalty was taking. <clears throat> um, yeah. It's fuck it. <laughs> you fuck. We don't trust you because you work with money. You made me work with money. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Oh, fucking fucking meme, man! It's crazy, dude. It's it's I I on this channel I always say that it's every they're always three questions away, right? Like it's they're always three questions away. You just get if I get them on air, I usually just do the bait questions. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, censorship's horrible. You big tech is the media like the media is in is censoring people, right? Like the media is controlling the narrative. Yep. And there you go. There's your first domino falling, right? It's it's not difficult to get them to. It's the Jews. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's pathetic and crazy. And it's always the same kind of person. Like, there's no creativity. If it was at all variable, it'd be kind of interesting, but it's not. It's always the same thing. What I want is, like, wacky ideas that are completely different and, and like, insane. Like, actually, like like, time cube stuff. If it was that, I'd be way more into it. Like, let's bring those into the chat and just have fun with them. I, I, that's why I kind of appreciate, like, I mean, yeah, it's always the fucking, it, it's always the Jew shit, but at least, like, the, the Q and honors come up with some wacky shit sometimes, right? Did I, they won't think JFK was coming back or something like that? JFK Jr. That's still happening. That's still happening. They're still waiting in Dallas. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no. Just, he's just a bit late. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, the, the, and Michael Jackson's coming back too. Um, and like, oh yeah, I, that's why I, I appreciate the Q and honors. Cause they bring that wacky and it's like, yeah, it, you know, yeah, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. Um, they, they found a scruffy John Lennon imposter and flipped the fuck out thinking he was JFK. Um, Q anon JFK jr. And fucking we'll get him. Uh, we're guy. There we go. Um, here we go. Here's the guy they think is JFK Jr. I think it's already formed, uh, Radio Yerevan. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your screen name right. So. Yep. Oh shit, it's John Lennon. Uh, <laughs> yes. They, and I mean, here's, here, here's an example of it. But wasn't JFK a Democrat anyway? Why do they want him to come back? He's literally what we call a a, a Kennedy Den- a Democrat, right? Like it's a specific form of like f- little further left Democrat, right? Like he's he's he would be the antithesis of what they would want. Um, oh, yeah, but so is Jesus. He still so, makes yeah. libertarians drool in a way, but they're not sure why. It's because he's actually good for them, and they don't know it. Fucking yeah. Uh, this article article ridicules the idea, but I'm 100% certain John F. Kennedy Jr. is still alive and has been in disguise as a Trump supporter, Vincent Fusca. If anyone wants to put some money on it, let me know. On the way back from France, Air Force One took a route around Boston airspace and flew right over the location JFK Jr.'s plane crashed. Um, 
Oh, but shouldn't they be using like the two the two little brackets or whatever? You know how they say the them, and then they'll put like five brackets around it or something. Isn't do they still do that, or is that out of fashion now? Uh, the, we uh, that's specifically a Nazi post kind of thing, actually. and and it, they're not doing it as much anymore. Mostly, we're all doing it. <laughs> like the, 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 yeah, echo posting is making fun of them. Yeah, the the leftists do it more. Like you know, we'll we'll the. Um, here, I'll put it in chat. Oh, oh, sorry. Fucking one, two, three, globalist, one, two, three. There we go. Like that's that. And we'll, we'll do that. Like somebody will come in and say globalists and you'll see somebody fucking globalists. Right. <laughs> we know it's their calling card. Yeah. So. So this is, this is a. No, object no, lesson, I think. no, sorry. You go. though. I was just going to say in actual Nazi servers, they still do it, but that's because they, in Nazi servers, they just whistle at each other for fun constantly. That's like all they fucking do. Well, there's nothing to talk about because they're all fucking stupid. Like, what are they going to say? What, 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 what idea of intellectual interest are they ever going to, going to share with each other? They got, they got fucking nothing. Jesus. Uh, you need to change your fucking name on. All right, hang on. I'll 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 fucking do it. What are you What are you now? Fucking. Um, I've already forgotten your fucking new name, Lexi. Lexi two eyes. There we go. If I'm looking at your fucking name and it says Kez, I'm gonna just keep calling you Kez. So I gotta I change your fucking nickname on the server. Um, Kez, what are your preferred pronouns again? He him. Sometimes you gotta ask when there's an update over the name. He, they. All right. Well, too bad. You're getting he, him. They were the store. I went to the store. They were all out of they, them. So we have we have he, him at home. Um, the he, him at home, it's like a McDonald's wrapper. <laughs> um. Anyway, what were you, what were you gonna say, Chew Toy? Oh, I can't remember. It's like one Fair in enough. the morning here on, on, on Saturday morning. Oh, it's your, yeah, because you live in the future. Fucking. Yeah. Uh, future's all right. It's not too bad. Nothing's blown up yet. So, so you can look forward to that. That's, <laughs> so we, 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 we in the U.S. have to, have to dial up the uh, New Zealanders and the Australians from time to time. Does it still exist? <laughs> it gives you an advantage in the stock market too, you know, because you're always like, Twelve hours ahead, so you can see the future. It's really good. Yep. I'm gonna be honest. I think that is some of my favorite fucking jokes out there. Which is like, why didn't you warn us about dot dot dot? Yep. Fucking, you could have warned us about Donald Trump. God damn it. Oh uh, Jesus. No, there was no stopping him, man. There's no stopping that tight as stupid. Dude, we just sat back and chortled. I fucking dude. 2024 is gonna be a goddamn nightmare. The Democrats are going to fucking lose this shit again. They're going to lose this shit again. My fear is that they put somebody actually, they put a competent version of Trump in place. That's the most terrifying prospect to me. Somebody with their thumb on the nuclear button who is actually as that demented as Trump, but actually has a brain between his ears. I'm going to tell you something and it might make you cringe. That was Trump. Trump actually was that specifically catered perfect person for that role he like on the surface was stupid enough behind the desk just just smart enough but still really stupid like it it's the exact same thing as hitler he was a really good puppet and a really good showman and that's what yeah, he fifa said they, i'm gonna say something that FIFA said they really could have warned you about 9 11 and didn't <laughs> That's always the joke. That's always the fucking joke. Why did you warn us about 9 11? Anyway, what? What's your toy? Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to say something that might be contentious to the chat, but please take it charitably that I'm not praising anybody in this. I'm giving an analysis of character. But in terms of the Aristotelian virtues, not meaning moral virtues, but as in virtues as in, like, you know, um, work ethic and, and how, things like that how dare you bring nuanced Hit- discussion into this house <laughs> hitler was in that sense more virtuous than trump that is he was more driven he had more of a coherent plan more evil or as evil 
um, probably more evil actually. Um, but like my point is that Hitler was a much more driven individual, right? Like, so my point to bring that up is not just to obey that Godwin's law you were talking about before, but also because I think if we get a figure, that's what I mean by having someone worse than Trump is, is he could be just as stupid, but more driven. Trump wasn't driven. He sat inside and he played golf and he right. yeah. watched TV. That's all he fucking did. Whereas Hitler was at least invested in, controlling things i'm you know? not sure if republicans would get behind someone more driven though what what do you what do you guys keep your weed in i've got two separate jars one for sativa and one for indica uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a black sheep here beautiful box yeah it's, it's beautiful uh it's it is it is like sheep completely straight edge i don't i don't do any it is comp it is actually a a bes it is a handmade furniture demonstration model from the before times right when my mom was a kid furniture like salesmen would go door to door and this is a model representation of a larger floor uh, uh, floor cabinet sort of deal, right? It's it goes this goes at the foot of your bed, right? This is what this is, and so the the salesman would go around with these sort of models that were handmade models of the larger version of the furniture they were selling. This was passed down to my mom when her parents bought a piece of bought this piece of furniture they included the model in the sale and so they gave it to their uh their at the time youngest daughter she wasn't going to remain the youngest daughter and she passed it down to me when i started collecting rocks as a fucking kid right as a little kid i'd kept a rock collection in here well i've had it this entire time and years ago now um, I stopped the rock collecting and started putting weed in it instead. It's got like two decades worth of weed residue in that box. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> so, they would only go to bougie people. You bougie shit says people. <laughs> uh, my mom was actually not bougie. She was poor as fuck. Um, I'm sure her folks saved up away a while for that piece of furniture um but the door salesmen weren't always scam artists back then they no. used to be the only means of selling yeah especially in the country right like that was mm -hmm. yeah like sears Rob was, sears roebuck catalogs and fucking door-to-door -door country salesmen specifically the reason they always say vacuum salesmen was because they were the notorious scam artists that's why you always hear the jokes about vacuum salesmen, because even back then, they were fully aware the vacuum salesman was probably hucking shit and putting garbage on your floor to make it look pretty a moment later, and it didn't usually suck up all the shit he put on the floor. Yep. <coughs> anyway, it's reached that stage. Guy's getting high on stream. Um, <laughs> so... <clears throat> let's see hitler hitler cocaine hitler um dude my favorite my favorite video of hitler is um the the, the one of him tweaking like where he's like fucking he's like shaking of course he can't stop himself. Yeah. it is it is the best fucking video ever um of him like he, meth and opiates and god knows what else but here let's fucking start this over Fucking <laughs> grah did the grah the jaw grinding fucking. Oh, right. is he at a racetrack or something? He's at the Olympics. Oh, he okay. needs to be on a fucking racetrack. Jesus Christ! And and if you catch the end where it's very quick, but look at his fucking fingers too, right? Like this is watch his hand. Fucking. Oh, it's curling. Oh, no, he's doing this. Like, he's literally fucking, he's drumming the shit out of his knee. He's fucking rocking back and forth. He's grinding the fuck out of his jaw. Um, He's well, I would tweaking say like a motherfucker. As a dictator, they would always think I'm on fucking crack then. But <laughs> I yeah. just can't stop bouncing my leg. Yeah, he, he, he was, dude, he was on a cocktail. Fucking, yeah, no, he was 
He was drugged to high hell and back. Um, Nova, oh my, he was tweaking. Yes, anybody who's ever done meth or been around anybody who's done meth knows exactly what tweaking looks like. That motherfucker was tweaking. Like, he was high as a motherfucker. Um, 80 drugs... Not a high either. It, at, at the height of it, the the records, because they have the physician personal physician's records, right? Um, his personal physician fed him 80 drugs a day at the height of the cocktail, right? Um, including such highlights as, of course, amphetamines and morphine, right? In the same cocktail, mind you, right? Amphetamines, morphine, rat poison, and bull semen. He like the Rick the source or Yeah, not touring. Get it straight from the source. Um the fool was lit. Um he snorted powdered cocaine to clear his sinuses and soothe his throat. So when he got a rough throat from yelling at fucking Nuremberg for too long, he'd snort some cocaine to numb it up. That that sounds like putting a problem on a problem. <laughs> Oh, you just described Nazism. That's right. <laughs> you've, you've done it. Um, yes. He had... He, <laughs> this is... Okay, so this is... Uh, and strict... Oh, that was the rat poison, I do believe. Um, oh, well, see, that's the thing. Okay. So, no, Um. It, it, well, I'll have to look it up. I'll double check that. But he had... Um. He had chronic eczema, so that's an autoimmune condition. We know that now, right? Like, but he had chronic eczema, persistent stomach cramps, and wait for it, wait for it, as if being around Hitler wasn't bad enough, quote, appalling flatulence. He sounds like the absolute model of the Ubermensch right there. Just, Hi, have just... you played Wolfenstein? Uh, which, oh, the second one. Wait, I was gonna say which one? I played. I played Wolfenstein. <laughs> okay, a newer series. Uh, Hitler. When you finally actually get to meet him, he's a petulant child. I mean, he was a petulant child. <laughs> like that's like they took every every considered accurate negative reading of him and turned it to eleven. Where at one point he's like, like jumping on the table like a child, like I run it, I run it, I run it, and he stops. He's like, I have soiled my. Um. Yeah. Okay. So like he just shits the, himself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Um. The the um. The active ingredient in one of the stomach medicines, the the anti gas pills that were being administered, was yes strychnine. Which double checked, yes, that's the um, that's the rat poison in the reference of rat poison in that headline. Um, but the other active ingredient, keep in mind, he's on amphetamines, he's on morphine, he's on a fucking rat poison. Which, by the way, will actually strychnine has been used as a performance enhancing drug. If y'all are wondering why the strict nine is included, there have been race par participants in the past before rules of, on this were made that were um, excluded from winnings because they were doping strict nine. There's a fine line. Strict nine's in that territory that like a little bit in the right way can actually increase performance, but do it in just the wrong way and you're dead. Um, it's a, it's a very weird thing. So it has something to do with like oxygen uptake in the red blood cells or something, but it is, it is in the category of a performance enhancing drug. You can get, you can get anti-doped out for strychnine in your blood. So he's on amphetamine, fucking morphine, strychnine, and the other active ingredient in this anti-gas pill is atropine. Fucking Atropine is the shit, like, you see in the Hollywood movies when somebody gets exposed to, like, nerve gas or something, and they take a fucking giant syringe with this big-ass fucking needle, and they just do the dramatic doof in their chest with the needle, and all of a sudden this motherfucker pops up going, <gasps> that's atropine. 
this is the kind of shit oh, yeah. that will keep your heart beating even if you're dying. So it's like an adrenaline shot specifically for your heart? Yeah, it will. It, it absolutely, um, it does, it will, uh, it will shut down the accommodation reflex. It acts as um, a myostimulant. It dilates everything, basically. Um, yeah, no, it is. It is a hell of a thing. It will, um, like, it will sort out unstable brachycardia. So it'll like stabilize your heart rhythm. Um, but it it is included in resuscitation guidelines. Um, this shit will kick your heart in gear. Um, so like, yeah, this, this motherfucker was on atropine, <laughs> amphetamine. As a daily Mo dose kind of thing? Yes. <laughs> you know, I take it back. It was a miracle he could fucking do anything at all. I would be so <laughs> spaced out then. I just, I wouldn't even do anything. I'd just be like, I, how did he, how did he, he just shot himself in that bunker? Cause his heart was killing him from the stress. Um, Did he even know it was a fucking gun at that point? Like here, here, um, no, nope, here we go. So now that we uh, we're all caught up and we all know all of those details, I want you to watch this video again. <laughs> Can we put some like uh, house music to this or something, like some dance, something like hey, that? Hey, you know what? I can make that happen. Hang on. <laughs> Uh, scroll down what you got. Um. Yeah. Let's get it down, man. It's great. There you go. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm not going to put too much work into it, Coda. Um, fucking 80s weird comedy music. Um, yeah, so now that we know about that, like that's that's what that's the face of the man who's on that cocktail. <laughs> right? He's high as a fucking kite, man. It's great. Oh, fucking Hitler. I wonder how many other of like history's great leaders were like that. You know what I mean? Like, like because Hitler, we got him on video, absolutely. and like Napoleon and Alexander and stuff. They were probably all like that too, just complete fucking nutcases. Um. Yeah. No. I I, Napoleon was one of the most like lied about kind of leaders in his time. I I so. My money, like my brain immediately went to um, six pairs. That's actually a good idea. Rotoscope that and put it on an overlay on stream as a replacement for Vibing Cat. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not, Crux. I, I, I'm not. No, I'm not on anything. Uh, sorry. Sorry if I, I spoke as if I am. I'm not. I'm not qualified to do anything. So just ignore me. Nice. Sorry about that. Um, my mind immediately went to Caesar. I was like, you know yeah, what? Man. That feels like some Roman shit that they do. Like, it probably, I mean, they're not going to have refined drugs like amphetamines, but you know that list is weird as fuck. Like, the like virgin bull urine or something. Like, I mean, that's what's that British tradition? The fucking one with the, no, that's Indian, I think. The young boy, virgin boy's urine is used as some sort of like ingredient. It's fucking weird as shit. Like, Stranger danger. At least with Caesar, he was a bit he was a bit candid about being a bit of a, a bit of an oddball. Like he he was really vain about his bald hair, but uh, was balding hair. But um, he, he seemed to he seemed to just not not give a shit about it. Like I can remember there was a story about one of them um, in in Rome where he was sitting there in the Senate or something like that, and and someone one of his rivals was chewing him out, and then. Uh, Caesar received a letter from somebody like it silently. And then this guy's like, ha, ah, see, he's colluding with the enemy. He got the letter. And then they actually intercepted the letter and he read it out. And it was actually a love letter from the guy's sister to Caesar. It's pretty balling like that. Um, I, you know, yeah. I mean, the pirate story is amazing. Of 
course. Fucking awesome. He's like a mega troll. I actually admire him for that. That was incredible. Dude, the, 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 okay, so so as an aside, the, the virgin boy urine shit is a Chinese thing. Fucking so sorry, Britain and India, but it's Chinese. There, there's a there's a town called Dongyang where I mean we don't even need to make the dong joke, do we? Um, but egg vendors from across the city, like literally, collect urine from the schools. It's like a culturally accepted thing. This isn't like some weird black market. We gotta go fucking hunt down virgin boy urine the schools participate in this young boys urine is contributed to this process and they cook the eggs in the v- young virgin boy urine and they sell they them cook it. yeah they they, oh, they boil them in that urine and then they <laughs> sell them <laughs> it, it, it's it's just it's so much dumb shit people do because they don't understand anything. Like it's just so and, crazy. Holy shit! And they go for each egg goes for about twenty four cents per egg, and it's a popular snack. This isn't some niche food. This is a popular street snack due to wait for it due to its fresh and salty taste. <laughs> Wow. All right. No, thank you. <laughs> I need an adult. I, 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 I just. There's a reason the fucking young boy you're in shit stuck in my head. It's like, dude, there's a there's some society out there that like uses virgin boy urine as an ingredient in 2021. That's fucked. Like, you know, yeah, it, it's purported to have magical effects, right? Like, God damn it, China. You, why do you still use magic medicine like so widely? It, it's it, it's it's one of those things that like, oh, it's it's yeah, it's a fresh and tasty snack. But exactly. all, I've seen videos like that, but they were Japanese videos. And I, I, I was very disturbed by them. Oh. Probably not what you're thinking about. Probably not. Fuck it. Um. Oh, and is there like? Do I need? Is we we Chuto and I shorthanded the Caesar pirate thing, but like, if anybody doesn't know, it's not that long of a story. Um. I don't. Do you know the 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 full and proper retelling? Like from a history yeah. nerd. Uh, I know the Cliff Notes version. If you want me to go, go for to, it. To, Okay, so so Caesar was basically like he was an up up and coming guy in the in the Roman Senate, and he kind of wanted to prove himself. And there was a massive pirate problem in the Mediterranean, like not Jack Sparrow pirate, like but actually like really really bad portrayed routes and all that kind of stuff. So um, they're asking who who could clean up the pirate problem in the Mediterranean, and kind of Caesar um, was kidnapped by them at one point. And while he was being kidnapped, he he was like a political prisoner, right? So they couldn't kill him or anything because they wanted to ransom him back. But like they set a ransom and then he complained to them that his ransom was too small. Um, and then he'd be like, he'd like recite poetry and sing to them in like the worst fucking way he possibly could just to get under their skin. And he'd joke with them about having them crucified and all this kind of shit. And he'd like kind of, you know, get just kind of take the piss out of them. And then eventually when he was ransomed back, he raised an army, defeated the pirates, and then crucified every last fucking one of them, just like he said he would. Complete boss. Took him like thirty-eight days, too. By the way, <laughs> this, this was, Caesar worked on a different timeline. He, uh, by all accounts, he behaved exactly like what you would expect Caesar t- to behave like, even though he was captured by pirates. Like legit. He was more important than them from you moment gotta, you gotta one. You've got to admire a bastard like that. Like, you've got to admire that, yeah. that they actually do what they said they would. Like, even if it was fucked up. I'm like, yeah, you were a cruel asshole, but i got to admire you. You were kind of an awesome asshole. Yeah. He, he by one of the accounts, told of him shushing them when he was attempting to sleep, and they'd shut up. Dude, Romans were the biggest fat shamers. Um, one of the... One of the um, <laughs> pharaohs, whether the Ptolemaic pharaohs of, of, of Egypt before it was like a 
specifically Roman Egypt, um, he was like stupidly, morbidly obese. He did like nothing. And a Roman diplomat, if you could call them that, was paying him a visit. And in order to have discussions with him, the diplomat went and jogged around the city and he had to jog to keep up with them like this big, fat, obese, supposed pharaoh king like you know absolutely lathered in sweat and then after the after the day it was done he's like well they at least their people know their king could walk now you know <laughs> well they had another another diplomat and they invited i think it was actually uh kato and he actually invited one of the uh uh foreigners to a diplomatic meeting but then he took a laxative sat on the shitter and demanded the guy hold the meeting with him while he was taking a dump <laughs> After taking that, you know, like just to flex on him, just like, yep, this is what you're gonna do now. This is what you have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Like that, that was like the ultimate flex. Dude, That's what the Romans were like. Pre- President Johnson did that. Did he? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. President Johnson was fucking notorious for that. Yeah, we had a dude that would. Dude, President Johnson was uh, uh fucking insane. Like he, he did the whole. I sit on the toilet. And you fucking, you have to be here for this meeting move all the time. Um, he would also um, pee on your shoe and he was notorious for whipping his dick out at random times because he had a giant dick. And so he'd whip his dick out and literally show you how big it fucking was to put you in your place. It's like, he's like what Trump wishes he was. Yeah. Like he, he did those sorts of weird, like alpha bro moves, like straight up animalistic from a different page of history. But yeah, no, if he had you in the bathroom in like a public bathroom and you, you guys were like, he'd write up on the urinal and make sure you saw how big it was and maybe piss on your shoe. Oh, like, Jesus. yeah, the guy was, it was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Uh, we have a recording of him with his, um, with his tailor. Um, and he, he goes on at length about how he needs extra room in the crotch because he has giant fucking balls and a big old dick that he needs accommodating. And he goes into explicit detail. Like he, he belabors the point with the tailor, right? Like, no, this in history class. <laughs> yeah, you know, we didn't quite get that 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 page in our history books. Can't imagine why. I like how they always make it out like history is all full of these dignified people and blah blah. But no, they weren't. They were fucking degenerates. They were, yeah. they were even more degenerate than we are. We think we're degenerate. Oh, they were nothing like them. They were fucking lunatics. It was great. The rich and powerful get up to some crazy ass shit. They really do. Again. Um, so like Caesar was a bottom. That is true facts, and he got ridiculed for it for being. I think it was like a, a, a being a boy in a at a pederastic relationship to kind of get ahead, um, get ahead. <laughs> um, but no, you're right, Kaiser. Yeah, he was. Um, I mean, we all know who has the real power. Anyway, um, <laughs> at least the universe has a sense of irony. It Johnson and his Johnson. Yeah. Like it's I here, let me see if I can find it really quickly. It's fairly common audio. Um President Johnson um f- phone call. It's the number one search. <laughs> President Johnson phone call. <laughs> it's the number one fucking search. Um All right, I'm gonna switch back to chat before I pass out here. Yep. Take it easy. Night. Oh, let's see if this is... Uh, Mr. Hager? Yes, this is Joe Hager. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, is your father the one that uh, makes uh, clothes? Yes, sir. We're all together. Uh, you all made me some real lightweight slacks uh, uh, that he just made up on his own, sent to me three or four months ago. It's a kind of a light brown and a light green, rather soft green. See if I can get him to the point. Pairs, uh, we're around the center, but once you have the measurements there, tied in the waist. Now, do you recall the exact size? I just wanted to be sure we get them right for you. No, I don't know. You, you all just guessed out of my thing, son, but once you have the measurements there, I can send you a pair. I want them a half an inch larger in the waist than they were before, except I want two or three inches of stuff left. Back oh, this is there, the, so I, I bet this is the bunghole call. 10 or 15 pounds. Hold on, this may not be the fucking. So, uh, I like how these multiple calls and they have different inches. Hands. In the back where I can let them out or take them up. And put, make yeah. these a half inch bigger in the waist. Make the pockets at least an inch longer. 
money, uh, my money and my knife, everything fall out. Wait just a minute. You God knows. I mean, imagine, like, what was happening you know, in that gap. Now, the pockets, when you sit down in a chair, the knife and your money comes out. So I needed at least another inch in the pockets. Uh, yeah. Now, another thing, the crotch down where your nuts hang is always a little too tight. So when you make them up, give me an inch that I can let out there uh, because they cut me. It's just like riding a... Uh, wire fence. These are almost these are the best that I've had anywhere in the United States. But uh, uh, when I gain a little weight, they cut me under there. So leave me. Uh, you never do have much margin there. But see if you can't leave me about an inch from the, where the zipper ends uh, around uh, under my back to my bunghole. <laughs> this is the bunghole so guy. I can let it out there if I need to. Now, be sure you got the best zippers in them. These are good that I have. And uh, if you get those to me, I would sure be grateful. Uh, where would you like to spend, please? White House. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, I don't guess there's any chance of getting a very lightweight shirt, sports shirt, to go with that slack. President Johnson. He, he was, you know, he was real. He was fucking real. Such a dignified man. Um, yeah. That's... Who's the, um... What's the other one that uh, I'm thinking of? Oh, it was, um... It was Sinatra, isn't it? Um... Sin Frank Sinatra was notoriously skinny. Um... Like everybody has a sort of older version of him in their their head, but Frank Sinatra was like he was a twink, right? He was a little dude, and one of his wives has a quote about she was famous in her own right, and somebody asked her why you were with um why are you with the uh, with that hundred and fifteen pound Frank Sinatra, and she. She said something along the lines of like, well, 15 of that is dick. <laughs> yeah, like Frank was packing too, apparently, like that, like monster dong. <laughs> Let's see. Wouldn't he show his dick to other senators? Dude, he showed Johnson showed his dick to everybody. Um, like that was, that was a fucking thing. Uh, Ava Gardner. Um, it was okay. So Frank, um, Gardner herself once quipped that Frank being, uh, being all of 120 pounds says, but 10 pounds of, uh, there's 10 pounds of Frank and 110 pounds of cock. There you go. Even even more of a holy shit. Dude needs a, a land permit to turn right or in case he knocks over a building, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, like Frank Sinatra had like some freak monster dick. <laughs> For real. Uh, real time big dick energy. <laughs> like yeah. <clears throat> um be careful what you do online at some point. The cyborg kids of 3021 might laugh at their shiny metal asses off. Um, now, there's an interesting approach to foreign policy. Here, see my dick. It worked by all accounts. Like, Johnson got shit done. <laughs> like, it, it was it was apparently a, a viable uh, stratagem. Um, we see somebody mentioned Steve Jobs being a huge asshole, too. Like, oh, it was Cupcake. Um, yeah, like that's, that's sort of like that weird look. There's a couple of different, mm, let's say schools of thought to diplomatic action. And a couple of the schools of thought basically say that there are a whole host of times where that sort of, I mean, it's bullshit in the like wolf bull crap we all know about, but like there is there are times where being an alpha is called for like 
if you want to get this shit done, there are ways to manipulate certain people. And getting I that... Think, uh, Go for it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of people underestimate the uh, importance people place, even subconsciously, on status and on showing like sort of comporting yourself in a certain way. Yep. I think that's probably why Trump was so obsessed with Obama's legacy because Obama just had that. You know what I mean? Say what you will about his policies or whatever. The dude just was, he was smooth. He could just go into a conversation and he owned it every time. Yeah. You know, he, he had a gravitas about him. And as you're saying, like there's a certain technique to that. And, and I would have a sneaking, I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of wars and shit uh, have a lot of their cause wrapped up in somebody's pain, somebody's status, somebody, mm -hmm. somebody's machismo, you know, trying to, trying to flex on someone else or, or show that they have, you know, honor or territory or something like that, rather than, yeah. you know, people will say resources and stuff, maybe, but I think overall more like, it's, know, it's, it's almost, it's always a factor. Right. Like it's, you know, especially in those ancient, like European fucking feuds and shit. Jesus Christ. I, um, but like, it's a factor. It's a factor. The ego of the fir the person at the negotiation table is a factor, right? Like there's national pride, there's resources on the line, there's, you know, pr political cred, there's, there's something that you're expending by being at that table. It's, it's come into play, right? Like, we can talk as like, especially me as like an anarchist, none of this shit should exist. None of this should be operating this way, but this is how it operates, right? Like I'm not fucking delusional folks look around. Like there are systems of power at play and there are, there are people who are very important in that decision-making. Um, and yep. they oftentimes they sit at a boardroom these days. <laughs> um, but like somebody like Jamie Diamond, Right? Fucking Bank of America shit. Like, like th these people matter. And if they're on a, if they're negotiating something and you insult their ego, well, they react. Yeah. Well, that's, that's sort of, it's um, not, not a kid, not a kid, kitty in a hoodie. That's the one. Jesus. Sorry. I haven't had time reading that one. Uh, no, we're talking about saber rattling. That's exactly right. No. It's, it's about, Kind of, uh, it's almost as I said. I always wind back to game theory. It's like saber rattling is a game theoretic strategy. It's like the it's like the deer who kind of go up to each other's flanks and size each other up before they start to actually lock horns. Because it's like, well, if we can decide who's bigger than the other one, at least it's not going to cost us too much. You know, one will decide and one will run away. Well, in this case, it's like with countries. You know, you you kind of jo jockey for position, size each other up, and that literally happens on an interpersonal level, um, with with like world leaders and stuff like that. So yeah, it does actually matter. It does influence the course of events, how somebody comports themselves with those sorts of things. And things like Johnson's um, methodology of rattling someone do come into play. Like, I mean, imagine you were trying to, it doesn't really matter, right? Like it, you, you have to go to the president of the United States and you're going to, and this motherfucker's in the bathroom, right? Like he's sitting on the jaw and taking a shit. Look, you don't even warrant me getting off of this toilet, right? Like that's it's a, like two levels. It's like a, a complete flex. And, uh, and also like, it's not only a flex, it was also discompobulation because mm -hmm. you're taught to have, to have all these skills in a diplom diplomatic meeting with like a nice table or something or a meal in front of you, but like, it's literally a shit house. You're completely disarmed. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's it, dude. It works. It works. Like there's, dude, I think Richard Dawkins has gone fucking senile. He used to be a feminist back in the day. He seems to have changed. Sorry. Just reading chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, interesting. Karina. Nice. Um, Rich people go into red houses to build trust. <laughs> Einstein didn't wear socks as he visited Roosevelt. For Do we know that's for a particular reason? I'd love to know that. Or if that's just an anecdote of Einstein was like, eh, you know what, I had, I had more important things to think about. <laughs> Dude, Einstein could do whatever the fuck he wanted, man. Dude was like a brain with skin wrapped around it. 
he and I mean he did gain a certain level of rock star status too. I good on him. He, he solved part of reality or near to. So you know, if anybody was going to get that, at least he'd get it. I often find like at least it's better than that than fucking Trump or someone like that. You know, completely but, undeserving. But he's he's a very stable genius who's MIT, uh, whose uh, uncle uh, was a professor at MIT. I think. Uh, I think that's the full yeah. fucking quote bullshit. Um, no, it's it's scary to me when like even even with like George Bush when I was when I was a kid, even George W. Bush didn't he seemed stupid but it was like the kind of stupid where he would stumble over a word not the kind of stupid where he actually didn't understand basic concepts but trump was the kind of stupid where you're like oh my god i'm actually smarter than the president of the united states that's a real thing that was um dude that was um bill burr's bit about george w bush back in the day he said you know what i like him it's like, yeah, I don't give a shit about any of that other stuff. He's the first president that makes me actually feel like I could be president. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, shit. He, he's doing it. You know what? I could do it. <laughs> yeah. GW was the first one for our country, really, that came along in a while. Like, say what you want about fucking Clinton or the first Bush or even, I mean, fuck, even Reagan. Right. Nixon was hugely charismatic and popular when he was coming in. Right. Like, dude, most of the presidents are smooth fucking operators. Right. Like you, you don't have to be because the popularity contest. Yeah. Like these, these are the cream of the crop sociopaths. Usually <laughs> like these, these motherfuckers are smooth. Um, they're usually highly intelligent, whether you agree with them or not, whether you think that what they did was stupid or not, like they're usually highly intelligent and very smooth operators. Um, and so, yeah, GW was the first one to come along in my lifetime that like, yeah, even Bill Burr was like, yeah, I could do that job. Then if he's doing it, I could do it. Yeah. F- fucking, um, Clinton, uh, Clinton was Jesus Christ. He was smooth, but yeah, Trump fucking reset that bar, dude. That's insane. That Trump redeemed George W. Bush's legacy. And it's like, how could it get worse? And that's what that's what, I'm, as you said, you're terrified about 2024. I'm scared about what we have next. If Trump was like the stepping stone, yeah. what's the one down? Have we even been there? Is this is like Challenger Deep? We're like, we're like you know, James Cameron going down into the abyssal trench and we just don't know what the fuck's there, but we know it's going to be some kind of weird fucking transparent fish with like giant teeth and bulbous eyes and like a little dingly doopy thing in the front of its head. And you don't know what the fuck it's doing there. And it's just scary. And I don't like it. And can we go back please? There's a, there's some Russian old Russian saying some idiom about strike, uh, digging a hole and striking bedrock and hearing voices beneath you. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've long, I've long since learned there's no there's no bottom of the barrel. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. It's more like a well with more mud to dig, uh, um, and it never stops. Tucker Carlson or Lauren Boebert. That's how it gets worse. Tucker Carlson is not dumb enough to actually want to run for any significant positions. He, dude, he's got it figured out. Right. Like hate him. And you should, you should hate him. Like if anybody's worthy of your spite and ire in this world, Tucker Carlson's on the list. Um, but he is, he's not stupid. He's rich. (laughs) That's, he's like, I don't, you know, I can puppet these idiots. I can, I can be the, the, the mouthpiece dude. There's a, um, there's, yeah, he's doing the grift. Um, there's an argue, uh, there's a phone call recording of Tucker that got released, uh, that got leaked a while back where he's talking about how he is like, he literally says, yeah, I'm the elite. Like I'm one of the elite and you have to keep the masses divided so they don't storm the castle gates. About right. At he, least he's honest. Yeah. Like he knows what he's doing. Well, you got to remember like all these, all these like higher ranking neocons and shit like that and paleo conservatives they come from really really rich families they get really good educations and they're not stupid people they're often in the upper echelons in terms of intelligence that doesn't mean they're not stupid in other ways but a lot of them know what they're doing and they're doing it because they have absolutely zero moral compunctions about it and they just they just love being a big fish in a small pond yeah so yeah 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's Tucker Carl's uh, Tucker Carlson Swan uh, Tucker Swanson Carlson, I think, is the order, or maybe it's Carlson Swanson. Either way, he's the heir to the Swanson Frozen Foods fortune. Jesus. Yeah, that's if you ever see Swanson Foods, congratulations. That's like Grandpappy or some shit like that. Never yeah. seen Swanson Foods. Tell you that. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolute bottom of the barrel. (laughs) Like it's, it doesn't, it doesn't get worse than that. Usually. Um, yeah, exactly. DJ Che. If you had access to daddy's millions, you can be smart too. That's, that's absolutely, it's like the same shit with like fucking, what is it? Elon Musk or something. uh Like he just never talks about the fact that he came from like a diamond fortune or some shit. The South African apartheid gem mine. That's the one. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's worse than that. He's married in Jesus Christ. Um, oh, and yeah, this is this is this is an example of Swanson Foods. And by the way, if you look at that top where it looks like there's just a shit ton, that's all the ingredients. All right, that thing on the top of uh, of that fucking box that just is filled with fucking dots. That's that's text. That is the ingredients list for this godforsaken thing. Yeah. Why is it exactly 338 grams? This is a suspicious number. Like, wouldn't it be 350? Why is it 338? Okay. So, yeah. Seasoned turkey, 17.2% meat protein, chopped and formed. Okay? So that means that turkey is a a turkey-like product, right? It is It is meat. It isn't muscle that has been sliced. It is processed, quote, meat protein <laughs> chopped and anywhere. formed into those slices of turkey <laughs> oh jeez oh that's just depressing <laughs> this is swanson foods but they make millions off of it oh swanson's is not a small fucking company um let's see who are they owned by these days? Are they, they're owned by Campbell's these days. Um, Campbell's. Now we got Campbell's here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Sold. Let's see. They are, are they really the originators of the fucking TV dinner? Like they might actually be the, the TV dinner. We don't get TV dinners here. Um, I feel like a fucking hillbilly just living out in the warps. <laughs> when, all right. Yeah. They, it looks like then. Um, I wonder how much they sold for. Oh, 8.1 billion. Something along those lines. So, you know. Yeah. I think I saw a, a comment earlier in the chat. Uh, let me see. Ah. Uh, Nemesis wrote, uh, considering his ilk stormed the gates and failed spectacularly, I remain highly skeptical. Got to remember, Tucker Carlson isn't Trump's ilk. Tucker Carlson leached onto Trump. Trump appeared in all the Republicans. If you remember pre-Trump's run, before he got really popular, they were all like, nah, he's never going to win. He sucks. I hate him. He'll never do anything. And as soon as he started getting popular, they did the authoritarian follower thing and flipped and just backed him no matter what. Tucker Carlson was the same fucking thing. He he's he 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 attached himself to Trump like a fucking barnacle, and then he detached once Trump sank. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's he's not part of his ilk. I think he's part of his he's part of the propaganda machine that's just generally wanting more authoritarianism in order to promote their interests. Yeah. Um, and Trump just happened to be an opportunity for him. Tr- Trump, At least that's my take. Trump is a symptom of a system. Tucker is a part of that system. Yeah. Like that's, that's Trump was created for all intents and purposes. Right. Like, especially if you go back to it, a lot of us, Oh, and Carpe, I'm so sorry. You had to, you, you had to eat that. Um, Dude, the Mercers in combination with Steve Bannon and a whole host of fucking conservative operatives and business and moneyed interests, created the trump campaign 
like we know this now like this all came out along that process like the more and more we found out about the fucking trump campaign like this is one of those details that came out was steve bannon in coordination with the mercers who ponied up and basically created cambridge analytica for the purposes of doing this um who went on to gain their own level of infamy basically created the trump campaign because he was a useful idiot Trump brought his own brand of narcissistic playboy ne'er do well trust fund kid to it. Don't get me wrong, he he definitely but go back to that night that he won. There's a very specific telling moment where like you saw it. He didn't think he was going to win. And he won. That machine pushed him through. Like he, I don't think even he grasped at that time exactly what was happening, quite frankly. And there's yeah, that. Yeah, he was kind of shocked, wasn't he? Like I can kind of remember, like he, he acted like he, he was like, he knew it was going to happen, but he, it was just out of, it was out of nowhere for fucking everyone, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's an interesting, um, it's just a weird moment. Um, in time, but I don't know if I can find a fucking, because there's so many, the keywords I'd have to fucking narrow down, like, you know, the Trump victory shocked video, like they're all that way. Um, no, he, he, he wasn't, that's not why he was in it. I really don't think. And so like it was a, it was a weird fucking moment, but yeah, no, he's, he's Tucker's. <sighs> Tucker is higher up on the food chain than Donald Trump, right? Like in, in just the grand scheme of the system, right? Tucker's a part of the media apparatus. Trump was a fucking pony that they ran at the race. Yeah. I think, I think the, the sad truth is that they are all expendable in one way or another. If all the others decide that they are, um, Trump was much more expendable than Tucker, but Tucker's just as expendable. And I think he knows it, and that's why they always toe the line as well. They never step out because if they step out once, they're fucked. They're well, done. Doesn't well, matter how rich they are. He's smart done. enough to know what he's supposed to know, right? Like Tucker's not stupid. Donald Trump is functionally stupid. Like oh, he, <laughs> he's not bright. He's putting it yeah, like his his professor at Wharton has gone on the record saying he was the dumbest, quote, dumbest goddamn student I ever had. All right? Former professor of Donald Trump at the Wharton School of Business. It's a direct fucking quote. Quote, dumbest goddamn student I ever had. Okay? He he was not bright. Everybody who's met him who who will speak frankly about him has said he's he's not fucking bright. Howard Stern has spent more hours interviewing that man than any other human alive has hundreds of hours of recordings of him talking with Donald Trump over the years. Um, and he's like, yeah, he's not, he's not bright. Right. Candace Bergen went on a date with him one night back when she was in college way back in the day. And she's like, you know, he's, oh, he's boring and detestable. And I never spoke to him again. Right. Like, yeah, he's, Tucker's at least smart enough to know, well-educated enough to know that like, yeah, no, they'll burn me in a second. So these are the lines I stay in and I'm going to fucking cash in on this cow. Um, I was just, I, I was thinking like, as you said, Trump's a symptom of the system. It's not just the propaganda as well. It's also the shape of the American political election cycle. Mm -hmm. Like, cause like, you know, the electoral college was the only reason Trump got in the popular vote. He lost, right? Hillary won that. Um, so the most Americans wanted Hillary to be president. It reminds me, um, I always meant to ask you this question. I'm really curious from your perspective. What do you think of the national popular vote interstate compact? I just get a couple more. Like I I'm for it. Like I'm for it. It's it, look, it's not what we, we need to get, fit, get rid of this first past the post bullshit too. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of fucking reforms that need to happen, but to, the f there's three off the top of my head, right? Like popular vote. We that's achievable with the, the interstate compact. 
uh, if we just get a few more on board. Um, but the ones we need, I don't think they're going to get them. So, but um, and fe- first past the post for that popular vote, and then this is my dream. This ain't this ain't happening. This ain't fucking happening. But this is my dream: uh, the abolition of the Senate. Yeah. Why the Senate in particular? Because the House of Representatives is the voice of the people and the Senate is traditionally the landed gentry. This is their function. They are the stopgap that was put in place very clearly and intentionally by the founders of this country in order to control the popular the, the popular vote. The Senate is the stopgap of learned men. Ah, so it's a bit like the House of Lords versus the House of Commons in yes. the UK. Yes, it is, it is a one-to-one comparison, yes. Because we, we don't have anything like that here. <laughs> just yes. to, Like I said, I'm not saying we're, we're doing greatly better, but I think I think it's just interesting to compare. Yeah, 100% the Senate needs to go. Um, the Electoral College needs to go. And then there needs to be a, you know, I would go for approval, but if we could just get ranked choice, that's fine. I would go for approval voting. Um, but rank cho- just end first past the post um, and get a popular vote in and eliminate that electoral college. And yeah, you would see, you'd see th- ship shift pretty fast. Um, uh, t- Taco Marx, you'd still need, even with proportional representation, you would still need to draw up maps. New Zealand does it by... I think we we have a mathematical system that a third party administers so that we have less gerrymandering or no gerrymandering at all as, as little as possible obviously but even with proportional representation you still need to district things out or otherwise uh or, well depending but if you if you're having um localized representation for anything you definitely need to um just just as a thought oh. So, um, so everybody knows, by the way, I always, yeah, Che, I knew it was going to get asked. I, I fucking mention it from time to time and people sometimes ask, they sometimes don't. Approval voting is basically a, a methodology where you uh, get to vote for as many people as you want to vote for. And the person who gets the most votes wins. Wouldn't that encourage strategic voting um it's the it's the it's the system that um minimizes the strategic voting the most and there's a primer video on youtube about uh the various voting methodologies and they use like some cg and some just some basic like graphs and uh, and like people to like map it for you to show you how the strategic voting works in a variety of systems and approval is going to be the one that minimizes it the most, but it, though it, like all other mecha, uh, methods, can't eliminate it entirely. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with that. Like, it's a mathematical issue as much as a political issue. But uh, I, we can all agree, I think, that a uh, first past the post is just dog shit. Yeah, it is. Um. So, yeah, I, I but we need... Um. So a lack of vote equals not that person. Yeah, basically. Um, you can pick one, you can pick two, you can pick three, you can pick whatever. Um, but it's, yeah, like you can eliminate people that way too. Um, yeah, we... Single transferable vote seems pretty good as well. Um, dude, I mean, within anarchist circles, we use a delegative process rather than a representative process for our voting. So, like, the, the distinction being you can recall your vote and you can vote for yourself. So, like, you can have delegates that can conduct business on your behalf and vote on your behalf, but you can recall that vote if you want. You can reassign it if you want, but you can also recall it and use it for yourself for a direct, uh, direct democratic vote. Uh, so it's essentially, it's like you can hold an election at any time in, in, a, in a functional sense. Yeah, functionally, you are constantly you. You're. It's just like being at work, right? You. You could be fired tomorrow, right? Like you're. You're constantly being oh, evaluated. <laughs> yeah, you are constantly being evaluated on the job. That's. Yep. 
it's how it works is and functionally that's that's the end result is i can recall my vote and vote on my own behalf or reassign it to an, another delegate it's direct democracy it it's direct democracy but you address the scope and scale issue with people not being able to vote on every single thing for themselves all the time but if there's something that comes up that matters to them or they differ on their delegates opinion they're not stuck with that delegates vote you can just or not x number of years yeah yeah. Um, so. How would you uh, uh, accommodate for that, like logistically speaking? I guess through like something electronic. Or? Yeah, we would nowadays. Like, yeah, we we just use an elect. Oh, we just use a computerized methodology for that, right? Like, come on, we already have a computer system in the in the House of Representatives and the Senate that you know tallies their votes, right? You're telling yeah. you te you're telling we don't have voting systems online that can't look. I'm I'm over. I know the Tom Scott video about how you don't want vo electronic voting because of the various problems associated with it still from a security standpoint. And the fact that like a piece of paper is something that the base under uh, a, the, the lowest common denominator in the system can understand and you have traceability and the modifiability of that vote is if practically minimized, if not eliminated, and you have transferability and you have authenticity you can track. Rick, we 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 pointed at a big rock in the sky that people had been like making myths up about for you know all of human history and said we're going to that and a decade later we were on it don't don't at me we can fix we can solve this problem we well, can possibly though, though the the nature of those two problems might be qualitatively different um so if we're going to the moon it was a physical problem we had to put chemicals in a rocket and point it in the right direction. Also a lot of math um, and physics. Correct. Um, whereas it may actually be a fundamental, uh, like like problems with, again, I'm just speculating here, but things like about um, the, the nature of the way cryptography works and mathematics and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, that his... Might actually make it it's actually like i mean we have um we have like we have public key encryption which works uh with works with a public and private uh, key system we've got write only database technologies we've got like it, the the thing that the uncomfortable thing that nobody's going to want to fucking do right um is that we all need some sort of thing from the government some sort of card with a chip in it that would allow us to securely authenticate ourselves. And then we need an anonymized system behind that. Look, I2P and Tor style technologies with like onion routing and packet anonymization it pr can do this, right? We can we can bridge this gap. There's too many authoritarians and corporate dickheads standing in the middle of any of this for this ever to be truly flawlessly executed. Um, so this would all have to be open source and done by the by the world, by the community, so we can look in these sort of black box territories. But you're gonna need to be able to like authenticate somehow, and it's gonna have to be unique to you and given to you securely somehow and that's going to make a lot of fucking people uncomfortable um, yeah good, good, the public trust would be a problem with that and also yes. finding the competent people to do it because I, there are a whole host of really incompetent people who build these systems i i i believe in the tech community coming from it i i i, I believe in the tech community i i truly believe the job could get done the problem is is that like out of Tom Scott's list of problems, I don't think the technological ones are any of the hurdles. I think we could bang that out in a few years probably. I think it comes down to the trust. That's the mm. issue. And a voting system needs trust, right? Like I, I, people can understand paper. They can understand a ballot of process, right? I can't get every single person in the street to understand public private key encryption methodologies and how we could securely identify you without identifying you individually for to your vote so we are anonymizing that but we are tracking it and securing it using you know like a hashing method so mathematically we know it's secure but i can't show you the piece of paper right like yeah. that's a that's a that's a trust issue 
So it's sort of like there's sort of two, a two a two pronged issue with the, with the voting system. And there's the technical issues, as you're saying, they are tractable. We could find problem, uh, could yeah. find solutions. But the, the other issue is that voting itself as an institution is an institution, as you said, based on trust, based on comprehension, and also based upon cultural norms. I would say. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, like there's nothing theoretically stopping a group of people going to any individual voting ballot and intimidating people into voting one way or another in fact you see what teams you saw attempts at that at the last mm -hmm. american election you know but the culture and the norms are in the way of stopping that so uh i'm not sure how that would translate into into the system we're considering well i mean that's the thing is if it, it is it's difficult to rig a ballot of a, a rig an election of a million ballots it's easy to rig an election of a million electronic votes. Yeah. And so like that system has to be secured. Now, I do believe that the IT community, the open source community, not the proprietary community, I do not think in any way, I wouldn't trust them to do it, but I don't think they're capable of doing it, to be quite frank. These are the sorts of solutions that are truly revolutionary and they come out of the open source community. Um, this is why the internet's built on open source technology, right? Like this is, this is what they do. Um, so like I would expect it to come from that arena and I would expect it to use some sort of, you know, write only database. I'm, 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 I'm avoiding a specific term, um, just for the sake of avoiding that term. <laughs> um, but this is, this is sort of blockchain territory. Um, it is, it is a, it is a right it's a right only database that's that's what that is it's a public right only ledger so like we have that though without having to do the bullshit that blockchain fucking does we have public right only ledger technology we had it before blockchain <laughs> Fuck it. But perhaps the, the campaign would be to get people to understand. I think maybe maybe that's a more tractable problem than you might assume because think of it like online banking. That took ages to come online, right? We could have been online banking in like the early 2000s, but it took longer than that for most people to actually transfer over to it I would, or something like that. But my point is that a lot, most people use online banking and have no clue how online banking works on a computational level. Um, so like... You made it look like an old bank account where here's your money, here's what you do with it. And then, you know, people get used to that because it's almost like a segue from the familiar. Maybe there could be a way from doing that from regular voting onto that. I don't know. I, maybe. Um, and Amaris, I hate you. You're right. I, 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 I know. I hate you. You're right, though. Amaris works in technology as well. Um, we've got, we've got a few tech heads in the community. Um, yeah, so and I'm a philosophy nerd, so I'm, I'm a bit of an outcast of this community. So it's, it's, <laughs> we got dude L rights philosophy. So you're, trust me, we got a bunch. Um, but you are, you, you are correct. Amorous. If we removed the idea of anonymous voting, the problem sorts itself instantaneously. The, 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 removing anonymous voting surely that would create its own problems anyways oh yes it opens a door to a host of nightmare scenarios <laughs> I was just, I was checking. it opens up the door to so many nightmare scenarios but it's a solution six pairs thanks for the follow it's a solution uh, but it's a solution yeah. yeah it's 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 in the territory of like You've got uh, melanoma on the back of like your index finger and your left hand, so we're like gonna take your entire arm at the shoulder. Uh, like it's it's in that territory, uh, but it's a solution. <laughs> um, taco, see, this is the thing. This is the thing. Not only is it like a solution on that level, Amaris is right. Like you could do it. I bet you could do it pretty easily. I know, like, Taco straight up said, I like that idea. A lot of people don't give a shit anymore anyway. I th th think of, like, online culture, right? Like, I legitimately th 
think that people would fucking be down for not like having an anonymized vote, but being able to brag about their vote. Like, oh, geez, could you imagine the Twitter shit storms? Yeah, fucking click the upvote on the federal official federal signed in website, and then at the next page, there's a fucking Facebook share link. Tweet this, Facebook this, fucking post it to whatever. Yeah, like they, one of those stupid fucking social media widget share uh, share things on the fucking next page after you vote. Yeah. I, it's, I was actually reading that, Comrade Karina. You see, this feels akin to the boss saying you don't share your wage. Um, I, I think that's a bit different, though, because sharing your wages is about empowering the workers, whereas protecting an anonymity of the vote is about the protecting the individual voter who's actually at the voting booth from being pressed into whatever else, especially by their boss. <laughs> Amorous. I'm thinking something along the lines... Um, Mythic, thanks for the follow. I'm thinking something along the lines of like an onion packet routing, but for a, a hash or a handshake verification, right? Because the packet has to come back to you over an onion route. Um, but destination doesn't know origin, but origin knows the packet that comes to it from destination. Right. So I'm thinking something along those lines where person a, a, a voter can be aware of vote if vote is sent back but where the vote is being sent to and from they're never aware of origin point so i think there's probably already a fair amount of math and like packet packet coding that has been done that could be repurposed or at least the methodology the mathematics behind it could be repurposed um i don't worry method um, everyone who votes to dismantle capitalism gets 20 euros. Oh God, that might work. <laughs> um, fucking zippy over my head. Yeah. Um, working class doesn't give a fuck. It's all the bourgeois and white collars and yuppies and libs and the burbs that want their civility intact. I don't want people to know they voted for X candidate. There is the concept of uh, like the uh, like dissolution of privacy. Like this is this is the thing. There there, there is a literal literal like sort of philosophical interpretation or avenue of approach for the concept of privacy and the complete abolition of it. That sounds really really wack. How how does that work? Basically, the the thought process behind it is that if your entire life were up to uh, scrutiny that you had no such things as behind closed doors that within like a generation or two when that becomes the normative value shit behavior as deemed by society would be basically very quickly rooted out uh, it's a, uh, the, the caveat there is as deemed by society do uh -huh. we really want that no, well, that's that's again, again. I don't like any of these ideas, <laughs> um, but like de, de anonymizing a vote, the elim absolute elimination of privacy. I've specialized in fucking some of the black hat, gray hat shit in my life, right? Like, this is counter to everything I believe, um, but it's it's a thought. <laughs> Oh, Zippy. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just imagining the logistics of that. That would be a fucking nightmare. It would... I mean, we had we had a dude come through one time who argued that the solution... <laughs> The solution to all of the U.S.'s problems, like the, how you... how you, This is the, the catalyst for change, is that all government employees need to have a camera on them transmitting to the internet 24-7 
and just just government employees. I was like, well, what about the DOD and like generals and shit like that? Do they need to be transmitting the internet? Do the do the cops count? As government employees, will they be transmitting to the internet? Who's coordinating this data? And also, how about lobbyists and the corporatists who make so many of these decisions for us at this point? Like, are we monitoring them too, seeing as they're like a vestigial sort of like ad hoc version of the government anyway? But no, if we just, if we put GoPros on the president, everything would be fixed. Honestly, GoPros on the president sounds really fucking funny. I'm, I, I would be in favor of that. I'd watch that live stream. Um, later, Deirdre. Um, Viva, I remember that guy. Yes. Um, no, oh, Jesus Christ, mythic. Um, was that Neat Sauce? I don't remember if that was Neat Sauce or not. Um... Yeah, cupcake. I don't remember uh, if that was neat or not. Uh, body cams on every congressperson. I mean, that was I. I. I was I. You know, I had to, f logistics questions. I was like, what about bathrooms? And what like what about fucking their partner? By the way, they came down on it. They just they they the dude rendered a fucking decision. He was um he was anti bathroom. They could it could like switch off in the bathroom, but uh, only for a short period of time or something like that. And also, as far as fucking the spouses and shit, fair game, fair game. He he threw the like the spouses and the family completely under the bus. He's like, yeah, no, you sign up for it as well. Um, I'm like, I. It's the exhibitionist sorting algorithm. Well, I'll read the one of me above. When I win, I'll use the vote Facebook post to determine who deserves Gulag. This guy's Viva. Bathrooms disable video, but audio should stay on, says, says Carpe. Uh, Cupcake says, I'm pretty sure it was Neat Sauce because this is the same conversation where you questioned his sexuality. Was that neat that I was like, you're bi? If that was, if it was the dude that, yeah, that's, then that's Neat Sauce. Um, he, he, this dude attempted to argue that basically like everybody's a, a little bisexual. Like, and I'm like, dude, no. And like we got into it and I started asking him questions and I'm like, dude, I think you're bi. <laughs> like, like I, I think you just like kind of came out without realizing it. Like you're describing behavior that isn't a thing. <laughs> like he was adamant that there was no such thing basically at a fundamental level as heterosexuality or homosexuality that like a Kinsey one or a six didn't exist basically. And that everybody was one degree or another bisexual. I'm like, I think you're bi bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. A thousand percent call themselves out. Like, yeah, it was, it was like, dude, like, that's not how it works. I, I, I tried to do the, like the typical gay rec retort of, um, when did you choose to be straight right when do you when do you choose to not be attracted to, to men and it didn't go the way i expected it to go <laughs> i'm like you're not straight bro <laughs> like that's that's not what that means oh let's see I'd imagine sexuality is really more of a description than a commitment, right? Like, because you just you're attracted to who you're attracted to. You just you don't decide that it just happens. Well, some of us have have decent track records. <laughs> There's right with uh, enough uh, enough points in a statistical model, and you can start to begin to make predictions. Um, you know, some of us have enough statistical points. <laughs> you're like, yeah, probably not going to happen. <laughs> Your gay slider is all the way to the right. Yeah, basically. Um. Yeah. Um. We have a small canton of six hundred souls. They still vote by hand raising. No vote secrecy here. Uh, there says Amaris. Um, I have been a participant. Um. <laughs> if, 
Eva. Um, enough statistical points equals slaying thoughts. Um, I have been a participant in a town hall meeting before, right? Like that's, it is, uh, it's also the one that didn't let women vote until 1991. <laughs> I love that. Um, that's amazing. Um, yeah, like it's still a thing in New England. Uh, up in the smaller like villages and shit in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, um, we still have town hall meetings. Like literally, you go down to the town hall and you fucking vote. You hold your hand up and vote, like Amherst is describing. Uh, oh, Amherst is uh, thanking both you and I. Well, thank you too. Um, it's been good to be on. So hopefully, I've contributed more than I've detracted. <laughs> No, it's been a good conversation. And thanks for hanging out. Um, for yeah. for for answering the call, as it were. Um, oh, good. I, I, I usually go on a tangent into some nerdy space that has absolutely fucking nothing to do with the subject at hand. Yeah, who gives a so shit? I moved. Been... It, I moved as soon as I started smoking weed. I moved us over to just chatting. Yeah. <laughs> that was fucking. I'm um, peace out politics. I ain't. I ain't. Uh, I ain't gonna be help my have my feet held to the fire on that one. Um. So, yeah, no, it's been fun. And uh, we're going to raid out to Public Loser, even though I'm violating my, my primary rule of only raiding out to, like, people in single digits and Public's almost at 20. We're going to raid out to Public Loser um, because... Yeah, I better head out. I'm pretty pretty late. I'm pretty tired. So yep. thanks for having me on. Sleep. And uh, thanks for the chat. Later. Yeah, likewise. And thanks for hanging out and sleep well. Take it easy. Um, Everybody else, tomorrow is bad movie night. Or tonight is bad movie night. <laughs> tonight is bad movie night. Um, I have no idea what we're going to watch, but it'll be good. Um, so. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Link in chat for Discord. That's where we do it. Either way. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Five seconds. Tech. We're raiding out. Bye.